But 20 Champions Cup kicks off in Atlanta. What's up, ATO? What's up, Atlanta? 64 of the world's most elite players will duke it out on the pitch. Oh, yeah. big chance here. Oh, no. Just as we expected, we are in for a thriller. 32 Xbox and 32 PlayStation players battle to see who's the best on their console before clashing to see who walks away as the champion. Ball across the box. Oh, my God. Look at the reaction from him. Smashes it right into the back of the net. Acres of space. And to sorry again. This has been fun. All the action starts right now. League Foot 20 Champions Cup Stage 3 is powered by Truth. There were 64 hopefuls when we kicked off on Friday, and now on this Championship Sunday, we're down to the final eight, six of which have never won a major. So will it be a fresh face claiming glory? Can Enrasic go back to back? Or will the legend MS Dasari reign supreme again? Let the drama begin, live from our E-League studios in Atlanta. Hello there, folks. Happy Sunday. Welcome in. My name is Kevin Egan. Thrilled to be alongside Shoe Boy and Mike LaBelle again. Gentlemen, you are looking dapper. Yeah, I mean, I thought you got the turtleneck memo. I guess you did. So, uh, <laughs> we got, uh, we'll got. we definitely do a Twitch vote on that later. I got the carrier pigeon that you sent. Oh, yeah, Mike, yeah. you didn't get the carrier pigeon? I definitely didn't. I I'm just noticing he's got the pocket check, too. All right, Shoe. I see Guys, you. It's 2020. The boy's on a different level this year. What, you think you're in Miami in the summer? Or something? I was going to say, what's up with that? I want to feel comfortable on the desk. I'm comfortable in the Miami unit. All right. Watch the buttons, folks. As the arrows go, boy, <laughs> the buttons are going to go lower and lower and lower before Mike is running around the studio with his top off. Again, early We're foreshadowing. Now. What an epic season it's turning out to be. Early doors here in Atlanta. This is stage three of the Foot Champions Cups. There's six in total. 64 players come in here. Just eight remaining. And of course, everybody wants to be part of the FIFA E-World Cup later on in this summer. As for the prizes here today, wow, $50,000 dollar, dollar bills for the grand winner in the cross console final, as well as 2,000 Global Series points. The same amount of points goes to the runner-up, as well as $30,000. And a reminder, congratulations to all eight guys that have made it this far, already through to stage four due to the foot champions. But if you missed any of yesterday, make sure you take a quick look back right now. The second day of the 2020 Foot Champions Cup took the competition to new heights with no second chances for the remaining 32 players. We've got Foot Champions Cup Stage 1 winner in Tex, Stage 2 winner in Razek, but one of them has to go home today. Defending champion Enrasek was back in form on Xbox, fighting top-ranked Tex all the way to a nail-biting finish. Cristiano Ronaldo, will he be sending Tex home? Yes, he will, as Enrasek takes the victory against Tex here. What a game between these two. But NR7 wasn't done, continuing to land penalty kicks when it mattered most. Ronaldo, his penalties have been good. Oh, what a save by Alisson, and then Razek goes through. The penalty streak continues. Heartbreak for Janos, the German keeps on rolling. In a victory for the European nation, Sweden took the FIFA stage in a big way with two semi-finalists. Suddenly I'm feeling good. Before the game I didn't feel so good, but now I'm feeling <laughs> so good. Like, I don't know what to say, I'm so happy. I had expectations like to go out of Swiss, but just to go top four is, I can't describe it. After a perfect 5-0 record in PS4 groups, Tom kept up the momentum. Big kick here for Harry, tries to go down the middle, it's turned away, and Tom is gonna be the winner. Showing no mercy to his fellow Englishmen and advancing to Championship Sunday. Former world champion MS Dasari kept dialed in throughout the bracket stage, dropping challengers and setting up a showdown with Diogo in the semifinals. I'm usually a calm guy, uh, but the game was so intense. We're going for tomorrow, just to win. Eight players remain. Only one can win the FUT champion's crown. More FIFA kicks off now. 
It was a long day yesterday, but it was incredibly thrilling. Six penalty shootouts. We certainly weren't able to predict that. What was the reason for that, Chu? Anything? I was talking to a lot of the pro players behind the scenes, and it's really because of the Team of the Year players, especially Team of the Year Van Dyke. I mean, he is just so overpowered. He's just so good. The AI on him is so incredible that people can't seem to get by him. So when you have so many good defenders, and the defensive meta is so strong already. You're not going to get past them. And I'm worried because in the future, we've got prime moments coming. So we could see even more penalties in the future. And to build from what Chu's saying, in previous events, we didn't have Footmasters, which means the top four competitors on each console automatically qualify for the next event. And the reason I bring that up is because in those events, after the Swiss stage, it would open up. Players would maybe be a little less KG back and forth. They'd loosen up. They got out of the Swiss stage. However... Day number two now matters so much for these guys getting that qualification. I feel like it's super cagey, very tight affairs. And something we, we saw, and we, we all noticed this, when players got to extra time, they were so careful. They didn't go for it. We didn't see additional pressure most of the time. It was side to side, trying to limit their mistakes. Whoever made less mistakes was going to win the match. Nobody wanted to give it away, and that's why we saw so many penalty kicks. Xbox side of things today has some of the bigger names, but the PlayStation side is arguably more exciting because we could see a fresh face, Mike, win it all this evening. None of these four competitors that are left have ever won a Foot Champions Cup on the, on the PlayStation end. So we are going to see a fresh face. It's just a matter of who it's going to be. We've seen Tom compete a lot. We've seen Zazinho. And then we have the likes of Ali Bali and Yumut that we don't know much about. Brand new, really, this year. This is the first run. And Omut, something I have to say about him, he's, he's turning into, for me, he looks like one of those players like Nicholas in the past where he's a very serious guy and he just doesn't seem to make a lot of mistakes. There are very few players that you see that just don't make mistakes and Omut looks like one of those and it's always good to see a freshman face. Six and one record for Umut so far. He's up against Zazinho, who, who you see in your picture right now. He enjoys himself here in Atlanta. He impressed us last May. Yeah, and Chu and I were talking about this. When he went up against Maestro, we were saying... I think Maestro's going to win this. I think it's going to be back and forth, lots of goals. And that wasn't the case. Zazinho shut him out for the <laughs> most part, gave a goal late, but scored a lot of goals, had that flair, had those Brazilian mix-ups that we love to see, and he was able to progress. And he's got to be feeling pretty confident, only South American left in the competition. We're seeing some Oli Bali in action here, scintillating going forward, all action, difficult to track. And he's got that precise, crisp movement, one touch. Uh, that's often difficult to track. And he's up against Tom, someone who was all smiles yesterday after taking down his buddy Harry. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely an interesting match. You see two friends go at it. But Tom, this is his time to step up. You know, he's never won a Champions Cup. I believe he's won an LQE in the past, but a Champions Cup is going to be something that could elevate his career into the stratosphere. We've also never seen two Swedish players in the final eight. Yeah. Period. Just on a percentage play here, they've got a chance. We could see a Swedish versus Swedish finale here. Sweden, yeah. Mike Sweden. Bell. The Ollie, the Ollie Darby. The, I like that. The Mike Ollie Darby. Ollie Lee. Gonna be, Mike's going to be singing ABBA later on. <laughs> Over on Xbox, two huge <laughs> names left in the final four. From world champ from 2018, MS Dasari. You could hear him speaking to Jillian in that clip. And he doesn't usually get too nervous, but he was yesterday. He'll face Diogo and Oli Lito to take on Enrasic. Diogo here getting by PH Zin. Again, another player who's finding form at the right time. Yeah, I mean, Diogo, he is definitely one to watch in the future. Very young player representing a Sporting Club de Portugal. And there you go. Oh, there you go. I got it. I did not call them the Sporting uh, <laughs> Lisbon. <laughs> Lisbon. I know a lot of guys in Portugal do not like that, but this is important for him to keep his calm here because the Sari has been here before. Diogo might be unfamiliar with this moment, so he always seems to lose concentration when he feels like the game's going against him, and Desari has seen it all before, so he's going to be poised in this matchup. And the Xbox side might look a little more predictable. We have familiar faces there in Rastic, MS Desari, and Diogo this year has had all the hype. If you talk to the pro players, they're saying he's going to win an event. I don't know if it's going to be today. And then we have the Ollies just making runs. Yeah, and Rastic's here, though, but it's been a rocky road at times. Three separate penalty shootouts. He was one and two in the group stage. He's just about got over the line. The drama just seems to follow in Rastic in this tournament. Whatever he's paying, Goal Machine, also <laughs> known as Goat Machine, if you if you talk to Chew here, maybe there's a Toronto connection there. Oh, yeah, Whatever he's paying, Goal Machine, he should get a race because Goal Machine <laughs> has been the key to winning the penalty kick disputes, at least according to Enrasic. I don't know what's going on back there, but they figured out a system. Jillian's interviews have been really entertaining, haven't they, over the past few days? It's time to speak your truth, powered by truth, and it is Jillian Sakovic standing by with the gents about to do battle. And Rasek, you are three wins away from repeating. How much confidence do you have coming in here today? I mean, I'm pretty confident now because um, 
Friday I didn't play good. Yesterday it was a bit better, so hopefully it, it will be even better today. I mean, I'm in the top four now, so it's just three more wins and I'm close to it. And you mentioned the past two days, and they've been a nail-biter for you to get here, including three going to Pens. Did that help you prepare for today? Not really, because it was really stressful to go three times into penalties. I mean, hopefully no more Pens today. All right, before I let you go, day one you told me the pressure was off a bit. Yesterday you told me it was coming back in. Where is it at today? Uh, not that much pressure, because I won the top four, and now I got it, so everything now is like bonus. Well, when you win three games in pens, the pressure, you're obviously a pressure guy. Yeah. All right, good luck. Thanks. Alalito, I have to talk to you different than Enrasic. He's the defending champ. This is your first major, and here you are in the top four. How do you feel? Uh, I'm feeling very happy. Uh, my, my main goal for the tournament was to get top four and be in order qualified for the FCC four. So I'm very happy now. All right. And Rasik, the defending champ, what concerns you most about his game? Uh, like, I, I wouldn't say something particular because he's like good at everything. So it will be a tough game for sure. Now, I know you spoke to Ivan back home. What did he tell you? Uh, he just told me like the simple things, be calm, uh, be happy because you got top four and like, yeah, like just be happy and enjoy the moment on the stage. And yesterday when you were waiting for your interview, you looked at me before we went live and you said, I still can't believe it. Do you believe it now? Uh, I don't think so, to be honest. <laughs> like, I, I don't know what to say. Like, I'm still in shock to get top four. Um, but looking forward to the game now and hopefully it will be a good one. I think so. Best of luck. Kev? I'm telling you, Oli Lido has to be related to Frankie Dion. It's possible. So similar. I think hey. He, he kind of looks like, uh, remember Gujan Daniel? Oh, that's yeah, a good shout, too. Like Gujan Daniel. We're going to have Kev's DNA okay. test for <laughs> Ali Lito. You Maybe. folks can get active on social media already. You can always follow at E-League TV. Here we go, coming through. And Rasik and Ali Lito. And Rasik knocked out Tex, so I think he will win. Not sure that's how the FIFA gods allow things play out, Billy, but I like your style. Make sure you do follow us at E-League TV. Get your tweets coming in, your photos from wherever you're watching around the world. I'm going to give you guys a little trivia. I gave you a question yesterday uh -oh. and you failed miserably, both okay, of you. Okay, thank you. I don't think we failed so. miserably. Hold on, hold on. You had a, one with Barcelona, one with Ajax. Those are very fair uh, did you get, guesses. Did you, get, did you get it right? Like, oh, sorry, we don't have Wikipedia with Kev. All right, Google well, I'm going to play again. And this one's for you guys at home, mm -hmm. you guys on the chat, wherever you're watching from. See if you can get it right. Ready? At E-League TV, get your answer in. I'm going to play a little Who Am I? Listen okay. carefully. I'm from a legendary football country, but we've only ever won one major tournament. And guess what? I was the captain. I was once a player manager in the Premier League. In fact, I guided the team, which was a massive club, to their first title in 27 years, becoming the first foreign manager to win one of England's main trophies. But let's be honest, I was a terrible manager. Definitely a better player, both on the real grass and on the virtual pitch. Who am I? Hold that thought. Uh, Think about it. We are going to take a quick commercial break. Let us know if you guys get it at home as well. When we come back, we'll have the answer as well as the first match of the day, which is Enrasic looking to go back to back against Oli Lito.
This is Listen Up, presented by Turtle Beach. Found that ball into our nine. Fake shot into the finish. When the wrestle blow, I was just super happy and super relieved because uh, it was my first ever tournament win. Nicholas Razek, congratulations. You are the Foot Champions Cup champion here in Bucharest. At this point, I was just super happy and could stop smiling because it was so important for me. I worked so hard to finally get a trophy. It motivates me even more because now I won my first trophy and it puts off some pressure. But of course, I want to win uh, more cups and it gives me a big motivation boost. I oh, love hearing from Nicholas Razek there. Very humble as he gets ready to take on Oli Lito in the semi-final from Xbox. Welcome back in, Kev Egan alongside Chewboy and Mike LaBelle. We'll get to that match in just a second, but before we went to the break, I threw out a little Who Am I trivia question. I want to know, did any of you guys get it at home as I give the answer? I might have get the answer. Will I get the answer from you guys? I gave the clue. Uh, a legendary player that captained this country to a major tournament final and won. Uh, former player manager in the Premier League that brought that club, a big club at that, to their first trophy in 27 years. Was a terrible manager. An all-time failure as a manager. <laughs> and is really good in FIFA as well as, I'll say this now, winning, winning a Ballon d'Or gentleman. You well, both know it. You both got it. Yeah, because you said, you know, a legendary football country has only won one title. So that's got to be Holland, who won the 1988 Euros. Uh, and then he went to Chelsea, brought them the first title in 27 years. Don't like say FA Cup. I yeah, say. FA Cup. Don't yeah. say it. Yeah, Mike LaBelle. I'll I, say had, this. I had a follow up question off camera. He, he, where he I, was was like, I was like, is he in FIFA? <laughs> is he, are, we, are we currently, are they currently I, using him in FIFA? And you got, when I said to Mike, he managed in Major League Soccer, let everybody know. It is. Rude, Rude Hullet. Hullet. Rude Hullet. Managed Good the trivia. LA Galaxy. For a season under David Beckham, wah, wah, wah. didn't go very well for Root Hood. Obviously, class in FIFA. Very class in FIFA. Actually, you know what? One of my favorite moments in FIFA esports was uh, when Gorilla did win the FEWC 2017. Root Hullet was in the audience. Gorilla scores a goal to Root Hullet, points to Root Hullet. Gives an old tap so, and Rude I, I hope we find this clip. It's great. It was it's so great. Good. He's like, it I appreciate like, <laughs> you. I appreciate you. It was like Rude. the two worlds just coming together. I was just like, hey, so what, why am I bringing this up? I always do these with segues. Team Hullet, Oli Lido playing ah. for Team Hullet today, uh, taking on Enrasic. That match is next. Wait for your prediction, but how do you see this one playing out? Will either be aggressive from the start? I mean, Rasic will want to set the tone, I would say. That's something he does very well. And then he's going to want to use his experience. I think these Xbox semifinals come down to experience. It's going to be Rasic and Desari knowing that they've been there before and two guys who are new to the scene in terms of being in the Final Four. And it's all about setting the tempo, and Rask is going to do that from the start. My only concern with Ali Lido here is if he's too happy to be in this moment. You don't want to put your opposition on a pedestal. And that's my only, I guess, I'm playing a little bit devil's advocate here. He's never been in this position before. You know a lot about Enrasic, and I like Enrasic's attitude as well, saying, look, I've already gone through three penalty kicks. Yeah. <laughs> Surely I'm not going to go through any more of those. It's time for me to get wins. I think what it comes down to is how many goals we're going to see. Higher scoring, I think, will benefit Olilito. Lower scoring, I think, is going to benefit Enrasic. How many goals will we see? Let us know. You should twist extension. Get your vote in as quick as possible. Will it be this man, Olilito, taking on the champ from stage two, Enrasic? Predict gentlemen. LaBelle, you go first. I think it's going to be low scoring. I think we're going to see a 3-1 in Rasic victory. Okay. Chew? 4-2 uh, in Rasic. Both going in Rasic as we bring in the casters for the first match of the day. That is, of course, Chris Tone, Dan Gaskin. I'm guessing Tone being from Newcastle, you would have got that trivia, right? I got it straight away, and I'm going to throw my gun to the bus. He was definitely Googling it, wasn't no, it? No, he wasn't. Yes, no, he, he was. was. All over it, all over my phone. That's what I heard. No, I got it. I turned and said to Dan straight away, I think it's Rude Hollett, and he said I was correct. So I started panicking. I thought he was going to ask me a question, and I was going to Google it, to be honest. Oh, God. Hey, Credibility. Be this. You've got to be legitimate with these answers, but we have a fantastic game to kick things off here, of course. Enrazic going up against Oli Lito. Enrazic has struggled through, if you like. It's been penalties, it's been close games constantly. He's never really seemed to get things going quite yet. However, you guys watching on Twitch on the extension have voted for him 75 to 25% against Oli Lito. I don't know which way I'm leaning on this one. I think, you know, you would go with what the Twitch chat is saying there, Dan. You wouldn't, if you were betting, go with Enrazic, you feel. 
Razek has the experience. Uh, you can just look at his historic results. I mean, he is the current champion. He did win in Bucharest. He got to the quarterfinals in stage one. He got to the semifinals of the E-World Cup. He got to the semifinals of the Xbox playoffs. He just oozes experience. For Oli Lito, this is uncharted territory for him. He got Swiss in Bucharest. Before that, I think we saw him in FIFA 18. We saw him at Amsterdam, where he also got grouped there as well. So now he's made it to this far in the knockouts. Can it keep going? The dream is still alive for him and I think once you've got to this point you've already achieved what you wanted you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain and I don't even think what they were discussing on the desk there with the whole Masters thing you finish top four in your relative console and you will qualify for the next event well now that that's out the way you feel as if maybe people will start opening up a little bit maybe we'll see a little bit more expressive football a little bit more expressive FIFA and it's going to be Nicholas Razek left to right in the red, Oli Lido in the yellow. That one's going to go out for a goal kick, but the balls over the top are something that we have seen quite a lot towards Cristiano Ronaldo starting in that same vein there. And even though the master spots have been secured, there's still Global Series ranking points to be competing for between these two players and prize money. They've already secured $7,500 themselves, but they can double their money if they get a victory here. They'll have $15,000 in their back pocket and still playing for more if they can go further in the tournament. It'll be 1,400 Global Series ranking points for the winner here to put that into some sort of relevance for you. Last year when we got to the E-World Cup, 1,400 would get you around top 20. So if you can secure that many Global Series ranking points, you'd like to think you're going to be at playoffs. So let's start from both these two here, just feeling each other out. And it, these two guys uh, played each other recently, Dan. Um, they haven't played each other recently, no. Oli Lito, even though he did make stage one and got Swiss, they didn't go up against one another. So they will have known each other, I'm sure, and they probably would yeah. have watched each other yesterday. However, no recent results to go off. Carlos Alberto down this right-hand side, just powering on through. Robertson will get in the way of that one, though, and will clear this one away. Once again, Cristiano Ronaldo seemingly... The guy that everyone's going to, to be the catalyst for these attacks. Through the centre, though. Yeah, now is in Razik. Kante starting for him. That's a good ball to Messi. And a good ball to Ronaldo. That's the post straight away from R9. First big opportunity comes to end Razik, and it just seemed to open up so, so easily for him there, Dan. And we saw the games from Nicholas Razik yesterday as well, where he did have these closely contested, grindy games, and I really feel like if he can take a lead and start to show what he's made of, open up a bit, we could see the best of Nicholas Razik, but colliding with the post is not what you want to see in the early stages of the game, because then that's when you start to think, oh, it's just going to be another one of those. Maybe I'm not going to be able to get that ball in the back of the net. Oli Lito survives the first onslaught. It was just so easily picked apart through the middle. It was just a pass to Kante, a pass to Messi, a pass to Ronaldo, and suddenly he's through on goal, and then just to hits the post there. It wasn't the easiest of angles to score from, but, I mean, realistically, that 96 Ronaldo, you expect him to put them away. And whilst we have one Swede on this side of the bracket, of course, there's Oli Bolly, who is on the other side, on the other console as well. And they were teammates in the E-Club World Cup qualifiers. Unfortunately, they didn't actually qualify for the finals in a couple of weeks' time. He did very well indeed, but imagine a cross-console final of the two Swedes. Boras Legend would just be <laughs> in his pants at home with a beer in hand, I'm sure, just enjoying and watching his two protégés. I mean, are we both thinking about Boras in his pants with a beer I mean, right I, now? I kind of am. I mean, it's Boras Legend. He's... How can you not? Can't say here. Two on nine, trying to turn. Not going to be happening with Virgil in the way. This one will now get played out. A lot of it going through the centre here. Both these guys not uh, expressing themselves down the wings. It seems to all be very much through the middle of the park here. Kante now out to Carlos Alberto. Messi starting again, and that's something that we didn't see too much of yesterday, Dan. Any particular reason you think for that? I mean, do you think it's maybe the strength? Maybe he's just been put up by trying to get past all these defenders, especially the team of the air ones who are just so, so strong. Uh, I'm going to put it down to chemistry reasons. I just think the starting formation that people are going out with is kind of the 4 triple 2 or the 4 2 3 one As R9 gets us off the mark here on Championship Sunday. And it's Nicholas Razek, the champion from Stage 2, who will be the one to deliver. Left-footed shot straight into the top corner. You're not stopping that one. It's just a nice little layoff, a little bit of luck to get there, but then Razek will be more than happy with that one. He breaks the deadlock here. And if you... Oli Lito here, not the best way to start, it really has been mostly all Enrazic. Razek. Needs to get in this game, needs to get 
comfortable on the ball. But that's just far too easy. It just seems as if they're opening up far too easily in the centre of the park for Enrasic. But you've got to give him credit where credit is due. He's finding those passes. You need to create them. Here's our night looking for Hullet. He will be able to retrieve this ball once again, though. Look for the pass inside to Eusebio. Which way is he going? He's going to nearly squeeze it through to R9. And that's going to be a penalty. The strength of Virgil van Dijk getting the better of him this time round. And Oli Lido will have a chance to redeem himself immediately. R9 straight down the middle and that'll make it one apiece between these two. In the first Xbox semi-final here in Atlanta. A strange, strange penalty to give away. But it was a well-created chance in the end. I mean, I know Liverpool are currently playing Man United and there were some questionable penalty shouts in that game. And I tell you, well, that one was a bit of a soft one for me. We didn't get to see the replay, but I didn't feel like Nicholas Razak did anything particularly bad. Maybe we'll get a slow-mo a little bit later. Mike LaBelle can take a look at it. But either way, Oli Lito will 100% take that and take a ticket back into this game. Just going back to a previous conversation as well, Chris, you were talking about Messi and why he wasn't used maybe as much as we thought. A lot of these new players that have been added to the team of the years and the, the prime icons, they are more central items. And it has been that left wing position that some players have really struggled to find someone they're comfortable with. Of course, yeah. team so, of the year Mane does make sense, but then it's who you link him with, etc., etc. Uh, so it just all comes down to personal preference and how you want yeah. to start your chemistry. It's not directly to do with Messi, it's more so to start in the wingers and yeah. finding a good left sided option. Messi now into Hollett. And that's the thing, I think, you know, so many of these items are so viable, though. Especially with the Prime Icons coming in. We've seen quite the variation. The strangest one for me was Schmeichel on Nets for Tex, of course. We didn't get to see much more of that as he did crash out to Enrazic yesterday. And that's going to be a misplaced pass by Lionel Messi, and this one will now be pulled away. Kante and Eusebio playing here for Oli Lito, and that is a wonderfully whispered ball out towards Mbappe. Look for the pass inside. Just waiting for that little bit of room. Hull it now to Kante. Just building up here. That long ball just really just alleviated that pressure so quickly, Dan. And Nicholas Razak very firmly staying with 10, 11 men behind the ball here, respecting the opponent of Oli Lito. We know it's been all about slow build-up. It's a bit about patience, but now you've got to drive. Now you've got to take advantage of this little small man advantage that you have. But Messi was the pass. Well defended by Oli Lito. Well, that's a good ball by R9. This is Eusebio now causing problems, and it just seems as if when we get to the final third, things are a little bit rushed by Oli Lito. Maybe the pressure getting to him. Somebody who will not be suffering from that, though, is Zen Razak. He's been here plenty of times this year already. And he has really had the better of things you feel throughout this game. Of course, the scoreline, one apiece. But you, for me, it feels like Enrazic looks a little bit more comfortable up there. As he should. And um, having more experience than the two. When we spoke to him on Friday after he scraped through Swiss, if I'm honest, he went three and two, although he did do the same in Bucharest uh, when he went on to become the champion. He said he wasn't turning defense into attack quick enough. So he was winning the ball back, but he wasn't winning it back in a position where he could actually make an attack out of it. So he'd win it back, but then he would have to just play it around and go for the normal slow build-up. He found more success when he was able to apply a little bit more pressure in his opponent's half, win those ball back in those dangerous areas, and then play those quick through balls down the wing or the over-the-top through ball like this one that might help get a good chance on goal. And Bappe is on his bike. Pass it inside now to Messi in a dangerous position inside the box, well positioned with Hullet, though. Good defensive work by Oli Lito. Shutting down those channels, and that's what it's about. It's about positioning yourself in an area where you think the ball's going to come to. And somebody like Rude Hullet is always going to be in the way. And Mbappe now down this right-hand side, trying to get past Robertson so hard with that jockey to even make it past. And the lick is just going to come on through, and that's our nine bundled out the way. And an opportunity here for Enrazic to counter-attack, maybe. Can't say no. Inside to Hullet, and this one will be recycled. But Kante is somebody we haven't seen too much either. Do you think that's maybe a chemistry issue as well? Or do you think people are just preferring De Bruyne, preferring yeah, Vieira, et cetera? I think it is down to preference again. You've also got to look at the stature of Kante. Even though he's a phenomenal player and an incredible item, he honestly, he'll chase after everything. He's got great speed. He's got good shot power. He's got a little bit of everything. <laughs> However, he's like, what, five foot seven? And that does make a difference sometimes, just yeah. jumping up, trying to win those headers. I know that heading isn't anything too important in FIFA 20 at the moment, although we did see a couple of goals yesterday from headers. It's still just having that physicality in the middle of the pitch. And, and you get a little bit more, I feel, from the likes of De Bruyne, from the likes of Vieira, from the likes of De Jong. De Jong's teammate in the national side. 
Virgil van Dijk getting in the way of that one. Well, it now down, out wide to Carlos Alberto, and it has been a bit of a cage game, but I don't think either of these players are sitting back too much here. It's just been a case of struggling to create chances. It's been difficult for them to break each other down. Looking at my notes, I actually gave him an extra inch. It's five foot six, is Kante. <laughs> Messi now down this left hand side. Into Kante. A little bit of room opening up in the middle here for Hollett. Nobody in front of him, though. No. Everybody already a little bit far forward. That gap just a little bit too much to find that pass. Well worked by Oli Lito, though. Oh, he's going to give it away there, though. Messi now back to Hollett. Another chance for Enrazic. I think if you're either one of those two gentlemen up on the stage, you're probably a little bit more happy if you are in Razik with how you've been playing so far. Oli lit up a couple of little mistakes, but he will take the caveat that it is still just one apiece, and there's plenty of time left to go. Hullet will just about retrieve that ball, and this will be cleared away. The benefit of having Kante, though, is how he just is able to dance in front of those centre-backs, and you can just jockey back and forth. It's Him quick. and Hullet just jockeying together, it's so difficult to pass across. You could say the same with De Jong and De Bruyne, they can do the same thing as well. But Kante is like a little terrier, and he just kind of chases after every single ball. It's, it's the agility, terrifying. isn't it? The, yeah. the agility of him just really does help defensive-wise. And Right now, speaking of players with agility, you see up. One of those with bundles of it, Mbappé now with bundles of pace. That's a good ball to R9 as well. Dangerous position here, back to Mbappé. Maybe rushes the pass just that little bit. It is that final pass from Oli Lido that is lacking right now. But he is starting to get back into this game a little bit more, you feel. That's a mistake from Enrazic as we say that. Mbappé now down the right into R9. A little pass off to Hullet as well. Feeling a bit more confident, waiting for the run of Eusebio, who will be playing play on the side by Andrew Robertson on the left-hand side. He's not going to choose to play it. Can't say now. Into R9, looking for the turn if he can. A lot of pressure building here for Oli Lito. Eusebio to Mbappe! Oh, you... It was so well worked, all until the finish. And that's a letter for Enrazic. Even the team of the year, Mbappe, still has that four-star weak foot, though. And turning on the left, there's always going to be that percentage chance that it does go wide. You would have thought he'd be able to put it away, but it was a well-worked opportunity, especially after the chances before you were saying it was quite rushed. And I'm okay with rushing it in the final third sometimes because otherwise you can just kind of get sucked into that constant back and forth of just yeah. being on the edge of the box and playing a pass. It's a and fine then... line between rushing and hesitating. Exactly. Yeah. But that was a really worked, well-worked move. I feel like it deserved the goal. Um, but at least Olilito can build off that now and say, look, OK, I am actually being able to make these chances. I just need to do more of the same. If, oh. he, can, if he can find any sort of pattern there and say, all right, what have I done which Nicholas Razak has struggled with? Was it just a simple triangle? Was it a one-two? Was it the drag back that he wasn't able to defend necessarily? Well, Oli Lito has dragged Mbappe off the pitch after that one. <laughs> has he actually? <laughs> he has. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Pull it now on this left-hand side. Look for the run of Mane. Will be straying offside. Back onside, though, as he receives this ball. Back now to Robertson. Hull it with a little bit of room here. A lot more being created from these two now, Eusebio. Into CR7, the drag back to Mane. It's well worked. He just takes his time with the shot and it nearly pays off. Cruyff on the pitch now for Oli Lito. Will play this ball forward to R9 and CR7 on as well. He's, he's literally gone, all right, I don't want a four star weak foot anymore. I want Cruyff. I want the five star weak foot instead. You're, you're a big advocate of the five star weak foot. I think it it's so said. important. Uh, it was important in FIFA 19, but I think in FIFA 20, I would like to have all of my strikers, if possible, having a five star weak foot. Just makes it so difficult to defend against especially with how powerful the drag back can be. Cruyff now with that five-star weak foot on the edge of the box. Look at this little bit of space. It's unfortunately, it's Kante that's in it. CR7 trying to get away. Continues to keep a hold of the ball, though. Cruyff, which way will he turn? He'll actually pass it inside. It was a good ball to R9, but can't quite escape the clutches of the Ligt. As Kante will help this one be played out within Razik. By Virgil van Dijk and the Ligt. Really well played by Oli Lito once again who is growing into this game. You know, we've said, and, and Razik, he hasn't made things easy for himself all weekend. It, it, it's been a constant struggle. And, I mean, I think if you're playing not to your best ability, but you're still winning games, it is positive. But he would probably like to make things a little bit easier, just on the old blood pressure, if anything. Yeah, I mean, he could quite easily not be in this position if he had just lost a penalty shootout. Like, yeah. that's all it has come down to. He's had two of the penalty shootouts in knockout stages. Tech's hitting the bar in, like, the last minute of extra time as well. It's all these fine margins that yeah. could have really made a difference, but Nicholas Razak is here now. He's got his spot in foot Champions Cup stage four. 
and he just needs to show us why he is a champion because he is a freak of nature. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest, and I will say the same about Tex. They are incredible at this game. However, the skill gap is closing and closing, and Oli Lito has shown so much positivity in this second half going forward, and it has set us up nicely, I feel, for another 90 minutes. It may just be 1-1, but it hasn't been a boring game by any stretch of the imagination. There has been chances. May there be one more for Oli Lido. That's a good ball towards Hullet. I was thinking about maybe taking the free kick. You feel it's a bad pass in turn, and that should be it. One apiece after leg number one of semi-final number one on the Xbox side. We are going to get a replay of the penalty as well, because I didn't get to have a look at this one properly when it went down. So Yosebio on the ball, who actually made the challenge. So quick. Ah, it's the secondary, that is, yeah. That's soft. That it's is the very secondary soft. challenge, though, isn't it? He may have pressed it a little bit late, and then, it, you know. So VVD's obviously just got, got in the way of his shoulder, and then it's just because he's brought him down, even though the ball was already going towards Allison. Um, might feel like Nicholas Razzik's going to be feeling a little bit hard done by, yeah. but if you look at the other side, Mbappe missing through on goal. Uh, it was a really good first leg, though, with two competitors who, who seem pretty evenly matched, considering the experience from Nicholas Razek. And he hit the post as well early on, Nicholas Razek, and a very, very tight game. Really could have been either way. It could have been 2-0 either way, realistically. Close game between these two to kick things off, and I hope we stay in the same sort of vein of form. I, I would like to see it continue, these close games. Maybe a few more goals, though. We heard Aaron and Scott asking for more goals. We, we are we have the same opinion. More Everyone goals. always we, wants more we goals. We always want more goals. I mean, some of the games have been dry and we don't need to beat around the bush. But this yeah. one, I feel like, has actually been quite a good game to watch and certainly analyse and see what they've been trying to attempt. Uh, there's been a couple of times that both players have gone down the wing and then they've realised that the runs have been tracked too easily by the opposition player. So they then try to loft it through ball, but that one hasn't worked. Then they're trying to focus on the middle of the park, see if they can bring players across and open up space elsewhere, just manipulate the pitch a little bit. Um, I, I'm excited for the second half. I, I can't call it either. At first, I was thinking, yeah, Nicholas Razek looks in his element. He's comfortable here, but then that penalty just changed everything, and Oli yep. Lito is now oozing confidence. And I'm excited to see how it's going to affect his attack. So the second leg we go then. And I, I, I think, honestly, you know, you were saying it's hard to make a decision on who's going to win this game. I think it's a hard decision to make a... It, it's hard to make a decision on who's going to win the tournament. We oh, were saying sure. in, the, in the bus and on the way through this morning that we just really can't call it quite yet. I mean, look, you'll have your favourites, such as your Nicholas Razek's and your Mr. Saris, etc., with the experience. But there's so many guys here who have not won a championship, and I think that's what makes it so difficult to predict. Only Lito, though, down this right-hand side with CR7. And again, I, I think he's been the standout for me as being CR7 this weekend. He's been, he's been great, and this is actually his counterpart, R9, on the edge of the box. Oh, and the pass was there. He looked for it. He might get a second stab at it here as well. Ronaldo to Kante can't quite fight and see. Oh, seven, that one will be cleared away by N. Razik. But Oli Lito starting in the same form as we've seen in the previous game. Yeah, just trying a couple of different things on the edge of the box. Bringing out a few skill moves. Elastico's flip-flaps, whatever he feels like, might just be able to help him beat that man. Because if you can beat that first man, if you can get that just sight on goal, when you have these foot items available to you, they can shoot from distance. We haven't seen too many long-range shots. Honestly, I thought we might see a little bit more uh, I, when I, the tournament started, yeah. but I think we can also put that down to just how good the defensive items have been that have been added to the game recently. Yeah, they've been throwing themselves in front of everything, haven't they? Specifically, Virgil van Dijk. Been fantastic at centre-back for everybody. Uh, as, uh, him and Hullet have been the mainstays, really, haven't they? I mean, of course, R9, etc. And CR7's been on here and there as well. Mainstays for absolutely everybody, though, being in every single team. Virgil van Dijk and Ruud Hullet in the middle of the park, the two Dutchmen. You can see the pressure that Oli Lito is trying to apply now as well. A couple of yellow shirts just chasing after the ball here, and he's done well with Mbappe. This is where it's good to utilise the pace of Mbappe defensively, not just offensively as well. Make sure he is tracking back because you can nip the ball away from opponents. Oh, Hullet, speaking of the ball being nipped away, will lose out to R9. Mbappe back now to Carlos Alberto. He'll get on his bike down this right-hand side. Choose not to go with that option, though. Back to Hullet, recycling this play. Slow and methodical by N. Razek. Waiting for an opportunity just to find that killer ball. And I think that's another another reason as to why these long shots haven't been coming through. I think everyone wants these guilt-edged chances, don't they? Rather than maybe snap it in a potential 
shot that may go into the top corner, but then after everything, you've got to get past Allison as well. So, you know, we know how how strong these Team of the Year foot items are. Kante to Mbappe, both Team of the Year. Combining there together, can't quite get past this defensive Ali Lito. Really, really well worked there, Kante all over it. Uh, I said it yesterday, and I will say it most tournaments, all pro players will play on percentage bases. They know that that extra pass, if they can get through on goal, they are more likely to score whether, rather than just trying to hit a lucky shot from distance. Run was in there from Eusebio, he just escaped past for one second. Here comes R9. Tried to get the shot off, but just inches away. Oh, you lead up a lot better start than we've seen in the first leg. Dan, does this have penalties written all over it? Well, Nicholas Razak has had three penalty shootouts. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Out and, of and his the way seven this games. one's going. Nicholas Razak has also, if I'm completely honest, looked like he lacks imagination going forward throughout this tournament. He does have the worst goal scoring record in the Xbox bracket at the moment. He also has a negative goal difference as well. The only player in the Xbox bracket that has a negative goal difference, which is crazy if you think he's the current champion. He just hasn't been able to necessarily find as many chances as he did at the previous tournament. He may find a chance now. R9 into Messi. It's on left foot as well. Delict will get in the way. There's one of those long shots that we talked about. Nullified. Oh, Nyan is going to beat him there. Virgil just shields him off. And Allison will easily collect this one. Oli Lito will survive. 30 minutes into the second leg here. First day. First game, I should say, of the final day of Foot Champs Cup number three here in Atlanta. And if this one does go to penalties, I think that we know what we're set up for the rest of the day. Kevin Egan was mentioning it on the desk that this is the most we've ever seen penalty shootouts within knockout stages at any tournament uh, in FIFA 20. And... We can put that down to these really strong defensive items, but it's also down to overload ball side as well. It really makes it so difficult to try and break through the defense when you've got everyone shifting across the pitch and everyone squeezing you and then two players pressuring you at all times. You've got to be so innovative in trying to come up with ideas of how you're actually going to get through these defenses. And sometimes you just don't have it in you. If you haven't got that extra skill move in your locker or you don't have that extra idea, then you are just going to be going up against a brick wall and then you get into this stalemate where it can come down to penalties. And if when you do get through to that chance like Olilito had and then suddenly your Mbappe lets you down on his left foot because maybe you've shot just a second too quickly. I'm not saying Olilito did, but in some situations maybe you could have shot a little bit too quickly because you panic and you hit it. Then you have to wait for penalties. But no one wants to go there unless you're maybe Fnatic Tom. <laughs> R9 now inside the box where he is so dangerous. Can't say though, doing his job on the outside. Will intercept that one. Look at Messi sprinting back against CR7, just trying to get in the way, trying to slow things down. That's all you need to do. He doesn't need to stick in a big slide and tackle or anything. Just distract, just slow down. As Ali Lito now will get his chance. And I guess move forward. that is the issue, or the problem is you don't need to commit to a, a challenge. You don't need to go for a sliding tackle or dive in because the turning capabilities of all these defenders are so incredible now. Even a drag back won't sell Van Dijk. He can just turn on a dime and then suddenly he's going to be there and he's going to be in your face again. Ball was won back by Rasik and recycled back round. No quick passes going forward. You feel as if the nerves are maybe sitting in here. Playing it around the back, very slow this time round, and look at the pressure though. You're pointing it out, Dan. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the pressure from Olilito. However, you know, there's always that downside. If he doesn't win the ball back, he is going to leave himself exposed, but he's going for this one. He's not scared of the occasion. R9 trying to turn, and Razik may be a little bit guilty of not going forward enough here in this second leg. It is going to be CR7. He's going to try and square it across to Licht in the way once again, though. If anyone's knocking on the door, it is Oli Lito as we end the first half there, Dan. Headed your hands, you expected a score there. I just saw Kante making that run and I thought it was there. I thought it was on. Perhaps if it wasn't Kante, if it was anyone else, they might have just been able to dart in front of the defender. But again, it's just these defensive items, they're so strong, so difficult to get that ball past. But Oli Lito, he does not look uncomfortable whatsoever with the situation that he has been put in. Because he's put himself here. He has played phenomenal this tournament. He's played a lot yeah. of attacking football. 19 goals from him. Uh, comparatively, only 15 goals from Nicholas Razak this tournament. Still relatively low if we look at the other side of the Xbox bracket. Diogo has scored 24. Dasari scored 26. Uh, so Dasari has been banging in a few goals. So both of these players haven't scored too many. 
So I think that's probably why we have ended up with a, a pretty low scoring game. It's about who is going to be able to get that crucial goal and whether they can hold on to that lead, because I'm sure Nicholas Razek was probably feeling in good stead when he did take a relatively early one. But it was that penalty given away by VVD. Even though we were talking about how soft the penalty was, I think, you know, 1-1's one, probably a fair scoreline line at this Absolutely. point in time. Absolutely. I think Oli Lito has been uh, good value for his goal, in all fairness. Ronaldo, though, on the edge of the box now. Back to Kante, options in front of him as well. Mbappe can't quite get away. Look at the force of bodies, if you like, for Oli Lito at the back here. Just trying to get in the way, and they will continue to get in the way. Van Dijk with a simple pass out. See how seven will recycle this one back, of course, but good defending by Oli Lito. And you say simple pass out, but actually it's a, a lot of people uh, yeah, wouldn't I, do that. They just yeah. kind of just hit A, and then suddenly you're struggling, you've given the ball away. Just being able to have that awareness, just to be constantly checking your radar. It, it is simple, and it is simple to a very good FIFA player, but it's all these little things that they constantly have to be aware of. See, that's why I one little mistake. That's why I said it was simple. Yeah, because you're a good FIFA player. See, it was hard to say it. But I play I said FIFA. It. <laughs> Hold it now. Trying to get something going here for Oli Lito. It's been a bit of a quieter second leg than the first one was. It has to be said. Offside. I'm not quite sure why the referee brought that back, in all fairness, but it will now be played out. By Enrazic, can he get anything going here? And I think, you know, we, we touched on it there before. He probably has been the more defensive of the two. Do you think that's maybe, I don't want to say a reliance on his penalty record so far, or do you think, you know, he's just maybe feeling a bit nervous first game of the day, just trying to get warmed up? It's, he, it's, 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 it's a hard one. how to play FIFA 20. Um, I mean, I, I know Aaron were, and Scott were discussing, like, what's the cheese, or however the, the, the term they were using. In FIFA 20, it's just about playing defensive and about that slow build-up and waiting for your opponent to make the mistake. And I've used this analogy before. It's Nicholas Razek just hitting it down the centre of a court in tennis and waiting for the opponent to make the mistakes, so and then he can smash it home. Mbappe into the late. This is a well-worked move, though, and unfortunately it's Virgil van Dijk on the edge of the box, but he does have a pass on him. Eusebio's left foot. Wayward by some distance there. That was an opportunity, Dan. He's had a shot, at least. And I respect the long shots. Oh, be careful. Mbappe is going to be able to get that one. Laid it off at R9, and suddenly it is in Razik. In control here. Yeah. Possession of the ball in a dangerous area. Oh, no. Oh, there's a play down on the floor as well. That's actually going to give him a small opportunity. Hits the post. CR7 from close distance. That front post shot just not creeping in for in Razik at all. I have a rule in my ultimate team that if someone hits the post three times, they're out. So CR7's on my watch list. But what a chance that was for Nicholas Razek. It did come from a mistake from Olilito as well. As I was talking about, Razek just waiting to pounce, waiting for that mistake to come through, and then suddenly he just bursts into life. He punishes you, or tries to punish you at least. That's twice he's hit the post now. And it's come from mistakes from Olilito. If he can tighten up ship, he should be all right. But it's just that brutality, if you like, for from N. Razek. He will just wait for you to slip up just that little bit, and he will try to take the chance. Hasn't had much luck doing so, has to be said. But the mistakes are creeping in. Oli Lito now trying to get on the attack, trying to relieve some of this pressure. R9, is he going to get there? Mbappe, not quite. Virgil, too fast, too strong. It's only going to get even more tense and even more cagey as we get to the latter stages of this second leg as well. That's a fantastic ball over the top. Allison should get there. It always makes me so nervous when the game has to come out like that. And the ball bouncing as well. Have you seen the I clip? Panic. One of the I pro players, one of the pro players, put it up on Twitter. Uh, Van der Sar comes out, heads the ball, but it doesn't go out. It just goes <laughs> short uh, of the byline, and then suddenly uh, they cross it in, and it's just an easy goal because Van der Sar is just in in no man's land. Uh, yeah, that, that's yeah, always my panic it. as well. But yeah, if you do, so if you add the option of sweeper keeper on the on your goalkeeper in the tactic screen, it does help. They do come out a lot quicker. And then, of course, I you've got the, the risk. Yeah, the, well. the risk you're, you're willing to take, though, yes. isn't it? That's the thing. Well, because the alternative is suddenly you've got an Mbappe or a Mane through potentially yeah. on goal. So I think you have to take those risks. And the the one in one hundred chance that your your keeper heads it and doesn't go out of play, uh, I think you will take it. A couple of changes coming through. Only Lito making, I think, one more there. Mane now on for Razik down this left-hand side. He seems to be the one ascending here. Can we have a grandstand finish? 15 minutes to go. I think game time of this second leg. Mane, though, will get in the way for Oli Lito. He will try and play this one out. He has been under the cosh the past uh, 
half I saw here, Dan, you feel? Being hard for him to get out of his own half, but he is going to have that opportunity now. Here goes R9 striding forward. Oh, that's a heavy, 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 heavy touch. Oh, is he actually going to keep hold this ball? It is going to be Robertson eventually getting rid of it. It's a heavy touch, but against anyone else other than Van Dijk and Robertson that he's going up against, he probably is all right. He's probably through on goal. It's all these little things with muscle memory that at home, that probably would have worked in your normal game or in a qualifier game. But it's all these players now adjusting to this slightly different meta because you've got these stronger players, these stronger defensive items that you're having to go up against. Carlos Alberto now. Looking for a pass forward if he can. It's not much on offer. And the more that Enrazic deals with this ball in and around his own half, the more the teams will just squeeze upon him. Robertson deals with that fairly easily. Can anything materialize here? But only Lito. He's had not much of the ball, not any chances, as far as my memory serves me anyway, in this leg that looked like a foul to me but we'll, we'll continue as Kante gets shoved off maybe that's one of the reasons you, you talked about his stature etc not the best and that has hurt him in that chance a lot of pressure coming in from Oli Lito when Enrazic is dealing with the ball in his own half there's plenty of players pushing here Dan I tell you well that's a nice run from CR7 he is gonna have to come back from an offside position not quite back in time and that was a good ball inside as well there was room being created positives for Oli Lito though is only five minutes left before reaction oh my that's that's it's harsh, but you get it. It is offside. The positives are he's got Nicholas Razek, the current champion from stage two, all tied up and potentially going to extra time here. We only have two current winners of any Foot Champions Cup still in the tournament in Nicholas Razek and MS Dasari. So if Razek were to go out here, that would mean it would just be left on Dasari to try and keep it being just five names on the Foot Champions Cup. Otherwise, maybe we'll see a new one. Final minute of the second leg here. Could there be a dagger to the heart of Oli Lito? Eusebio. Back to Robertson now. Nicholas Razek looking for the next goal, which feels as if will probably be the final one. And if he can find it here in the next minute, waiting for this time to take down. Now he moves forward, has to try and find something from it. Eusebio, edge of the box, heel to heel. He's going to find himself in a dangerous position. If you're Oli Lito, you have to hold on. You have to hold on, but it just seems if Enrazic, he just needs to maybe take a risk with it here. Still got the ball with Mane. It will collect it, though. This will be put out of play, and that will be the end of regular time between these two. One apiece as we head into extra time. Even I was nervous then. It's yeah. so horrible when it's the final <laughs> minute. You can see the time is gone. The game's over, and you've got someone coming towards you, and you're just desperately trying to hold on. But it, it was a second leg dominated by Nicholas Razak. You briefly saw the statistics there. I think it was only 35% possession for Rolly Lito. No shots on goal whatsoever. Just really wasn't able to get enough of the ball. Wasn't able to create any chances whatsoever. And I don't feel like he played super defensively. I just feel like he couldn't get a hold of the ball more than anything. Nicholas Razak just kept him out of the game. He restricted his chances and, and, and really kind of just strangled him and said, I'm not going to allow you to have the same opportunities you had in that first leg. Yes, OK, I can see you're pressing me quite heavily, but I'm just going to keep the ball away from you by utilising ball rolls every single time you get close to me. Can Oli Lito find a way through, find a way to even just get a hold of the ball right now? He really has been pinned back in this second leg, but it just takes one chance, one opportunity to seal the deal here. And Mbappe's probably going to send Eusebio here. Has he got the right side of Delict? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you're the right side or the wrong side of Delict. He's still yeah. winning that one every day of the week. And that's the trouble. And, that, and those kind of balls scream to me, I've run out of ideas as well. Which, But at the same time, I'm OK with taking the risk, because I feel like you have to. You've got to try something new, because what you've tried so far hasn't worked whatsoever. For Oli Lito, maybe just start praying to the god of Boras legend and hope that you can get something from that. Oh, a little bit of room here. He committed Van Dijk in the middle, which has actually allowed Eusebio to get the wrong side of his man, but I mean, we know that, that sometimes it doesn't matter. Hullet will get this one away. By a Cruyff and back to Hullet. Oli Lito now with a little bit of breathing room to get this ball. Finally out of his own half. Robertson will play the ball forward to CR7. Let's see what you've got. R9 now. Trying to get away from Kante, he's just nipping at the heels of the Brazilian. Kante, though, waiting for some runs. You've seen Hollett threaten it. Ronaldo, Kante now. 
A bit of an assault here. Cruyff is going to find Hullet in a bit of room. Back to Cruyff. He wanted the pass back to Hullet. But Hullet on the other side of the things for Enrazic just about gets in the way. And it's so draining as a player as well to go through this kind of game where you attack and nothing comes of it. And then you have to defend for what feels like forever before you actually get possession again. Are you still going to have that focus when you win the ball back? Because you put so much effort into defending and ensuring that your opponent's not going to be able to make anything of their possession. When you finally get it back, suddenly you're like, oh, wait, it's my turn. I need to now try and break down mine. A little bit of skill by Enrazic down this left-hand side, but Hullet will not get him very far. We'll get him a throw in. Hullet back inside to Andy Robertson now. All he wants is big Dutch fella friend in the middle with him. Pull it there, coming back into the picture now. Can't hit. Looking for a pass in. I tell you what, there's a lot of room. Hold it. Going to stride into that space now. The drag back, the pass, not good enough. End of first half of extra time. Not much to write home about, has to be said. Only Lito did have a small opportunity. But as I said, looking at the stats, 36% possession for Oli Lito. No shots, no shots on target, of course, and only three shots in total in this game, all coming from Enrazic. But this is the same player in Olito who took down Gorilla 4-1. And Gorilla, phenomenal player, previous world champion in his own right. But Gorilla is also a player who likes to play attacking football, likes to play attacking FIFA. He's not the type who's going to sit back and try and play this defensive style that FIFA 20 has presented us with. Um, so Olito was able to thrive in that kind of environment. However, here, he is really not able to get through Nicolas Razek's defence, but the Good thing is, Nicholas Razek's also not able to get through his at the moment. I think you talked about the concentration. You talked about how draining it must be having to not misstep once. Can Oli Lito continue to do that? Cruyff in a little bit of room, he's seen the run from CR7. The opportunity was there. Can't say it now. Back to Robertson. And it does come down to mistakes sometimes. Yeah, and it can. It, and it, it may it, well still. If that concentration slips in the next nine minutes in game, suddenly you present your opponent with an opportunity, they take it, and you go home. And therefore, you're even more cagey because you're like, well, I don't want to make a mistake, so I'm not going to make those risky passes. I'm not going to shoot from distance. However, if you do try one of those shots from distance, maybe it collides with a player and it goes out for a corner, and then you've created a new opportunity in itself, because sometimes from corners, you can find your way into the box a little bit easier than in normal play. That's a direct ball forward from Hullet to CR7. Back to Hullet, there's room in the middle here. Oh, Anderlich just about gets in the way. And now an opportunity for Oli Lito to get running down this right-hand side. Can he find one more opportunity here, Dan? I don't want to say it, but Oli Lito should just keep the ball here and he should close out this game with the final attack. You want to play penalties with potentially against Enrazic? I think you, you have a riskless attack at this point. Yep. Even, if, even if you go forward and you have an attack and you lose it here, you give an opportunity to Nicholas Razek and you're not getting one more attack. So at least ensure that you have the last one. Look at the pressure coming in. Delict with the ball forward. Who's going to win that? It is actually going to be CR7. I tell you what, there's a little bit of room here. Hullet is going to send Cruyff on his way. It's a one-on-one -on -one against Virgil van Dijk, which usually only goes one of two ways. Cruyff, though, really good movement on the edge. Can't quite get the rebound. That will be it. We will go to penalties in the first game of the day. It's not even a surprise at this point, Dan. Let's be honest. His third penalty shootout in a row, Nicholas Razek. Mane to take the first one for Nicholas Razek. He will put it away. Ali Lito now wants to follow up with Cruyff. Can he do so? Oh, straight down the middle, Allison saves it. Advantage, Nicholas Razek already. Can he double up with his lead? Yes, he can. Keeper was on the right side of the goal, but just didn't dive. As Ali Lito needs to score here to try and give himself a chance, but Razek saved too. Huge save. He needs to save this, really, Ali Lito. He can't quite save it. The disappointment on his face. He needs to score this goal straight down the middle and gets it. Can Enrazic put this one to bed? Oh, he can't. It's a good save by Allison. Ronaldo now for Oli Lito. Scores. Again, Enrazic. Another opportunity to send himself. Oh, he oh, saved, saved it. it again. Oli Lito must score. He sends it the right way. What a penalty shootout. We're going to sudden death. After taking an early lead, Razek couldn't close it out. Can he put this one away with Ronaldo? He does, and it's a 4-3 lead. 
But it's down to Oli Lito. It's a must score again. It's Hullet, the legend, and it goes in. And we're still going. Robertson now, the Scotsman, to take one for Enrazic. Which way does he go? He goes the right way. Top left corner. Oli Lito must score with Robertson as well. It's a really good penalty. And the nerves must be kicking in now, and the defenders are taking the penalties. VVD's done so much, but it's saved! An advantage, Oli Lito. Can he put this one away? No, he can! Alisson saved it again! Delict to take one now. Enrazic. Oh, straight down the middle. Alisson saves again. Can Oli Lito do it? He wins it! What a penalty shootout! Enrazic is out! We will have a new champion this year. How on earth did he go from missing three to scoring three and saving three while he's at it? What a penalty shootout. The penalty master, Nicholas Razak, has only won with penalty shootouts in the knockout stages. But that streak had to come to an end. And after being on the positive side of winning those penalties, he finally gets a taste of the negative. But it's Oli Lito, the young Swede, who will be marching on. Wow, wow, wow. Go take a breather, I need one. Good Lord. We'll be back after this quick break with a breakdown from the desk.
just can't script this stuff. That is the truth. Watch the biggest matches from every stage of the EA Sports FIFA 20 Global Series Friday nights on TBS. Broadcast premiere of Stage 1 will air next Friday, January 24th at midnight. Some folks on Twitter getting involved. Yes, Oli Lito, says Matthias. Watching on the official Rebel. That was something else between Oli Lito and Inrasic. Oli Lito, the GOAT, says Luke. And Oli Lito, GOAT! <laughs> Oli Lito. Building his fan base here. Daniel all over the <laughs> I love to see it. Brilliant. The heart rates are up all around the studio. And for you guys at home as well. Welcome back into studio. Kev alongside Shoe Boy, Mike LaBelle. We finally had a chance to breathe. It took a while. Two early goals. Then a late penalty shootout. Let's roll the action. Let's show you how this one played out between Oli Lido and Enrasic. Enrasic, the winner from stage two over in Bucharest. And it got off to a flying start, gents. Yeah, you know. minutes, first goal. First goal there. And I won't lie to you. Throughout these two legs, Enrasic will feel that he just got FIFA 20 because the only goal he conceded was a mistake there with Van Dyke, the late tackle. I don't know if that was an AI tackle. I don't know if that was him. But that happens to you on the weekend league a lot. It happens to me. I give away a penalty because it was a late AI challenge. And so that is the penalty that he concedes there. And then he hits the post twice, too, on a straightforward weak foot shot from Ronaldo. I mean, that's got to be frustrating. And Rasik has to feel hard done. Uh, and the only goals that only Leeds have scored was actually penalty kicks. I mean, they both made a couple chances in between. Uh, I think this game looks a little more defensive than it actually was. They were definitely trying to go forward. They just could not get through Virgil, could not get through Rude Holland. And during penalties, I was strained. I was shaky. I was agitated. I was uneasy. I was tense trying to follow these patterns. So I don't even know how they felt on stage. Whether on the real pitch or the virtual pitch, it's so rare to see someone take a 2-0 lead after two rounds of penalties and then lose the game. Yeah, I mean, it was just destiny for Oli Lito to make a name for himself in Sweden. I'm sure the Swedish fans do not care about the stats, about the chances, about the penalties. But we are seeing a new star in the making. Well said. Oli Lito, congratulations. Advancing past in Rasik. Six shots to two in favor of in Rasik. Fairly sure the shots on target. <laughs> don't count those ones to hit the post either. Possession, Oli Lito was not in favor on that side either yet he gets it done in the most dramatic way on penalty kicks and Rasik had won three penalty kick shootouts before this match fourth time couldn't get it done and when Rasik watches that back it's not going to get better for him because he made the chances that, that that was needed during regular time and then even in penalties having that lead and kind of giving it back to him so congrats then to Oli Lido in the final of the Xbox bracket up next Diogo or MS sorry who will face the young man from Sweden Time to trust the boy. This time we're going to focus in on the main men up front. Yes, we are going to talk about the strikers that the pro players are using here in Atlanta. Of course, these guys are very high ticket items. I mean, so far, everybody's going with the prime R9 or the team leader of Ronaldo. And I mean, look at those prices. EA, we need to bring those prices down somehow. I don't know how we can do this, but that R9 is absolutely expensive. 13 million on PlayStation, 11 million on Xbox. But let's see some guys that you guys can use at home if you do not have the coinage. Now that Scream Insignia is amazing. We've got the new headliners, Mertens. I definitely recommend that Insignia because you want strikers who are able to turn quickly with agility and bounce and get that shot off. Mane is great as well. He's so OP in my opinion and the regular Mbappe is good, but his finishing can uh, be a bit... Uh, you, you might be a bit left wanting with that finishing in my opinion. Under 500k, that Ben Yedder 86 striker is unbelievable with agility. Mertens 88 under 250k with the 85 Ben Yedder as well under 100k you got to try that Gabriel Jesus if you did not get that famous Gabby Jesus Griezmann Aguero those are the guys that you want to go with love it you absolutely brilliant Diogo had himself an absolute day yesterday scoring nine goals in two wins his next test though is a stiff one the young man from Portugal will be taking on the 2018 world champion MS Tassari we'll discuss that and get you to the game next
Roma Dami bounced at the round of 16, having his say on Twitter. Not sure who's going to win today, but I'd love to see hashtag Tom and Diogo in the final. Wouldn't that be something? Diogo in action next against a legend in the FIFA community. MS Dossari of Saudi Arabia. Huge following, all tuning in to see if he can advance to the final, the Xbox. He's got to get by this guy, though. I mentioned he had himself a day. Nine goals yesterday en route to advancing to the last four in Xbox. He's one to watch. And I agree with Dammy. This is a very unpredictable tournament in general. It's the third one of the year. And some players start slower when you're getting into the competitive season. So starting to build. We're also going to see separation after this tournament when you're adding up all the Global Series points. We're going to have more favorites. Because right now we have big names. Yeah. And most of those big names are based on previous results throughout the years. And that's what we're talking about, experience and going to all these events. And maybe they have the potential to win this event as well. But in FIFA 20, they haven't necessarily won a bunch of events. We've only had two prior. MS Tassari made some uncharacteristic mistakes yesterday. He'll hope to fix them today to advance. Uh, yeah, you know, I think that's the only thing that can um, get to Tassari is uh, himself. You know, like you said, mistakes. I remember back in when he won the FEWC 18, he didn't look very good on the first day. He did not look like himself. Second day, all right, still a lot of mistakes. And then all of a sudden, the third day, he just absolutely blew away the competition. Could we see that again? I mean, that's the way Dasari does win tournaments. Again, form goes out the window, right? Let us know who you think will get the win in this one. MS Dasari or Diogo repping Sporting Club do Portugal. I'm going to keep saying it. Follow us over on E-League TV, too. Get your comments and questions into us over on Twitter. Gentlemen, predictions. I need a score, Chew. Um, I would. It would be nice to see Diogo win, but I think here it's the experience factor. And talking about Dasari again, one, two, three days. He just keeps getting better every day. So I think he'll take this three to two. Okay. And I look at Diogo as an attacking player, and I actually look at uh, MS Dasari as being one of the best balance players of all time. And I always am a strong believer, and it's definitely supported in FIFA 20, that defense wins championships. I don't want to sound like a cliche, but I think yeah, MS Desari is going to get the victory with the combination of having the experience and being defense first. I'm going to go low scoring again, man. I think this is going to be a 3-1. Same scoreline I went with Enrasic. Obviously, they didn't go well for Enrasic. It ended up being one all. But uh, I, I think MS Desari will... will carry the torch and continue on. What are you going to say? What are you going to say? No, Tell I was going to say, what, the, what they like about Diogo is that he always takes his headphone off to listen to who we're going to say because he <laughs> wants to prove us wrong. I swear he always does that. He cannot wait to prove people wrong. I see that look in his eye and, you know, it'll be nice to have a surprise here and see something interesting in the FIFA scene. Good stuff. Best of luck to you, Diogo. Mike says he's so well balanced, MS Desari. The Chu's been giving compliments as well, saying getting better every day. To me, it sounded like they were describing Dan Gaskin and Chris Tun. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe Listen. ton. Maybe ton. I don't know about gas. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the compliments coming out on day three. You can clap back. I'll, I'll allow it. Go no, on. it's okay. Mike's had enough. He was crying yesterday. Like, <laughs> there was complaints of bullying. So we'll leave him to it. We'll leave him to it. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys, though. But let's have a look at the fan results as said from the Twitch extension. I expect this to go one way. Let's have a look. Who do you think from the chat? I'm going to say it's probably going to be Dasari. I'm not saying it's just because he has trillions of fans. Uh, it's not that bad, actually. I was expecting that to be well and truly one-sided. Yeah, I, I mean, as a previous world champion, you'd expect more people to be on his side. But at the same time, Diogo and how he's been playing at this tournament and previous tournaments, he Very definitely true. deserves the support as well. Uh, the predictions from the desk, they're expecting another low scoring, but these are two very high scoring players in this tournament. 24 goals so far for Diogo, an average of 3.4 per series. Uh, for Dasari, 26 goals, an average of 3.7 per series. We'd like to see goals, 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 or we could just skip to penalties and save <laughs> save the, 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 all the minutes that we're going to have to watch. Yeah, let's just not with waste the, our with, time. With the way that things have been going so far. But anyway, we are underway. We do have to take Dasari's goals with a pinch of salt, though. He did beat Hazard Heath 9-0 in his first Swiss game, which definitely helps. The law of averages, though. He's still scoring plenty of goals. We know that both these guys are. And that is positive news for all you in the chat. And for us as casters, of course, something I did, uh, I was actually trying to point out to you at the beginning. I think it's Diogo using Schmeichel in nets. Well, last time we saw Schmeichel in goal, it didn't go down too well. Well, I tell you what, it's a big opportunity straight away here for Diogo. He will be shooting in red from left to right. And Mr. Sarr, obviously, from right to left in the yellow and black. That was a big opportunity, that though. Straight away, and we've seen Diogo's intent. And that gives me hope for this game. 
not much of a huge history between these two players in terms of when they've played, but they did face each other recently at stage two in Bucharest. It was a 4-0 victory for MS Dasari. It was just in the Swiss phase, but he certainly had his number there, and I'm sure Diogo will want to be getting his revenge here. Well, I always often wonder how much players remember those results when they go up against a player like the tournament after. They probably don't think about it too much. I think the thing is with a result like a 4-0, like, once it's a 2, you have to start attacking, etc. You know, you get counter-attack. I think there's only so much stock you can put in how many it is. But obviously, beating him comfortably is the story of it. But it's a good question. Do they ruin that? Do they think about it? Do they go back and watch it and see what they did wrong? Or was it just a bad game? It, there's so many different variables in it. Messi now, look, a croquette to get to the left-hand side. Zambrano now into De Bruyne. A little bit of room here for Kevin De Bruyne. The five-star week for the tell you what, though, Messi's left is solid. The time shot came through from Diogo, didn't quite hit the mark. Actually, that's a great ball into Virgil oh. van Dijk. Nearly catches him off guard, he the header. He turned it green. I have so much respect for that. It's so unnecessary, but he still did it anyway. Come on, Diogo. That's Get it. in the face of a previous world champion. Love to see it. He might have another chance here. Ronaldo down the left to Mbappe. Hold it now, looking for the pass. Diogo has been nope. trying. <laughs> I mean, that's not a good way to go about it. A little smile from Diogo as that one goes through these players' legs. Obviously, the dummy not working out that time around. But a really good start from the youngster, has to be said. Yep, just 17 years of age, of course, representing Portugal, but living in England. It did catch me off guard because I, I I don't know him personally. I haven't really chatted to him before and he started doing his interview. I was like, wow, <laughs> it's really good English he's, for somebody from Portugal. <laughs> he's like my Andy Murray on the Xbox side. I'm, I'm taking him as one of our own. He's, he, he's English for me oh, if yeah. he keeps on winning. Yeah. God save the Queen. Hold it now in the middle of the park too. He's actually going to give the ball away to De Bruyne. It's very direct, isn't it? Look at the speed of which Diogo attacks with Ronaldo into Messi, the oh, left foot. He's going for it. these time shots a lot. Yeah. He's going for them a lot. That time round doesn't work out for him. I think because it was a first time shot, it probably was going to go wayward anyway, but he does need to be a little bit careful with those. Oof. That's a good ball, Demarne, from a Mr. Sorry. He's been pinned into his own half this whole time. 22 minutes in, he gets his first opportunity. It was not necessarily a huge one. He's testing the defense of Diogo for the first time. It took a ball in. See how seven will get in the way. And this one will be played out via Hullet. Can we expect a fast counter-attacking play here from Diogo? He will slow it down to the left-hand side to Zambrada. Slows it down slightly, but you can already see the pace of this game is entirely different from the one prior. Diogo really going at Dasari here. Wants an early goal, wants to take this lead. Both players will know how much that first goal, how important it can be. Messi, edge of the box, the drag back. Oh, he was looking for Mbappe. And that could have been the key to finally unlock the defense of MS Dasari. Couldn't quite get through, though. Playing with intent here is Diogo. Good news for Diogo fans is Dasari has conceded more than Diogo in this tournament. Dasari has conceded 19 goals so far. Just the 15 for Diogo, and that includes for Dasari a 5-0 loss to uh, Gorilla as well in the Swiss stage. That one was a surprise to me. Yeah. I thought that this tournament was going to be the return of Gorilla, and I guess you could say, I mean, he got to the quarterfinals, an absolutely incredible result for him. I just thought that he was going to go that little bit further. It's well worked, this. Mbappe down this left-hand side. Zambrada is just about going to get there. Both players using Zambrada, obviously different variations, of course. Oh, I actually, I presume he actually may have switched them over on the sides. One Probably just switched them. Yeah, yeah, I presume so. That's maybe an oversight from myself, but Messi now. A little bit of room for Mbappe uh, down this left-hand side. He may go via Hollett. Well, I like the use of Zambrotta. Five-star yeah. weak foot, four-star skills. Uh, quick. Phenomenal fullback. And, of course, being an icon and being able to connect him chemistry-wise always helps as well. Available in the icon swaps as well. If you guys want to get amongst that one, he's one of the ones I've here marked. Checked out Mike LaBelle's video. Can't quite remember where he put him, though. Mike LaBelle's very clever, though, with where he puts things. Some, he'll always add one player just in the wrong category, just to generate that extra little bit of conversation. He's a sneaky devil. I love it. Mane now down this left-hand side for MS to Sorry. Hullet to Messi, a little bit of room here. Looking to create Mbappe, edge of the box is going to be tackled by Zambrotta. It's a really important one as well. 
De Bruyne now away to R9. A little bit of room for Messi to get going here, but once again, that ever-present anchor in the middle of the park is Ruud Hullet. And this game really is screaming out for that first goal just to open up things a little bit more. Diogo is flowing forward very quickly. Tassari is slightly, slightly more methodical in his attack and his approach. He's tightened it up as well, you feel, Tassari. Yeah, maybe feels that Diogo is actually getting quite aggressive here, so wants to slow things down. Ooh, a little bit of room into that run forward from Hullet. He has to send somebody there. Kevin De Bruyne trips over and opens up an opportunity for Mr. Tassari, but here we go. Hullet on the counter-attack, potentially. You would love to see the run from Mbappe down this left-hand side. He engages that now. Knocking it ahead here as well, fancying himself. Going up against Zambrada. Oh. The skill to try and get past as well. Back now to Zambrada. Mbappe now looking for the pass inside. De Bruyne was on, also was Hullet. De Bruyne looking to carve out the final. First big chance of the game, CR7. Trying to create room, just can't do it. He's wiggled his way through, though. Here's our nine. Now to Messi, under with the right foot and rifles it into the top corner of the net. It's a great goal by Diogo. We're ending the first half here in the first leg, but first blood to the man from Portugal. That's a bloody incredible goal from Diogo, I'll tell you what. One of the best I've seen this weekend. So many skill moves just injected into that attack as well, just to try and beat the man on the wing, trying to make some space with Cristiano Ronaldo, and it's just that one extra pass and one extra pass, waiting for that right moment. He was reluctant to hit it with Messi on his right foot, but there was enough space that he was able to drive it home just before the halftime whistle goes. And Diogo, the young man, He's going to take the lead against a previous world champion here. Emma's Tassari being the only current winner of an FCC left in the tournament. Five winners of an FCC in the history since it started in FIFA 17. Four of them were at this tournament, three of them have been knocked out. And well, it would be nice to see a new name on that trophy yet again. Of course, Razek was the newest addition when he won it in Foot Champions Cup Stage 2. Made those names go from four to five. Of course, it's only been 45 minutes, and you can never count Emma Stasari out. Even last season when he struggled at times and there was always the kind of who's the goat and who's better, him or Tex, when it came to crunch time, when it came to the World Cup, Dasari still there, dominating, being the Xbox champion, only losing out, of course, to Mo Alba. And so the second half we got. And I think you're right, Dan. Emes Tassari's resume is just endless, isn't it? He has so much experience, so many titles to his name. Last year, he took a little bit of time to get going. It's been the same story this year. Maybe he just doesn't catch on to how to play the game in the best way as quickly as some others, but this tournament, he has looked as best as he has done in FIFA 20, and this is an opportunity for him with Mbappe. The drag back, it's too easy, look at the ball, he carved them open. But Schmeichel, well aware of that one, jumps on top of it, and well saved Diogo this first time round that we are actually seeing Mr. Tassari start to finally get something going. If Tassari were to go all the way and take the title here in Atlanta, it would be a very special one because it would be an yet another iteration of FIFA where he's won a major. This is a really good attack from Diogo, combining the skills well. Look at Ruud Hullet in loads of room. I would have liked to see him hit it, you know. And maybe that first time shot was what put him off. But an opportunity there, the space opened up, but the defense closed quickly. Tassari starting to speed up his attacks ever so slightly now, which will be good news for Diogo. I think Diogo wants this fast-paced gameplay. He wants to be winning the ball back yep. in these areas where he's not going up against 11 men. Will switch the field because he didn't feel like he had enough available for him on the left-hand side, but instantly Ronaldo sprinting into space, and he really has done a job on the wing. I know we saw a lot of him yep. just in that striker role, but I really enjoy him seeing him as an RAM or an LAM. I think he would probably do a job at centre-back, the way that, that CR7 card has been created. Phenomenal, phenomenal item. De Bruyne now. Pass inside to R9, a little bit of room. Look for the run of De Bruyne. You feel waiting for a toilet there. Ever, ever present. And the opportunity now here for Mr. Tassari. Spreads it to Hullet. He doesn't seem to be sending as many forward as quickly as Diogo does. Every time Diogo attacks, it's like literally throwing the kitchen sink. Well, I think when you're going up against someone who is attacking so quickly, though, it's a risk for you to do the same thing. Oh, messy little bit of room. Schmeichel is there. And again, we talked about the long shots that time, not working out 
Fair enough. That's Dasari. Keep an eye on Dasari trying to utilize the offside trap function as well. If Diogo can keep an eye on it himself, might be able to take advantage of it. Very diff difficult to try and read it and then try and play one of those through balls, but if it goes wrong for Dasari at any point. No, oh, this is a lot of room for CR7. He's got R9 in the box as well. Can he get past Van Dijk? He can. It's Messi at the front post. He's carving him open. Diogo, two to the good now after 66 minutes. Oh. And it's that little Argentine that's doing for him every single time. Some people didn't know whether to have him in their team or not. 99 rated Messi. But he has done such a good job for Diogo. And the build-up play again. So fluid. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. He knew exactly where all players were at all times. And he found a gap. And he was just able to pick the pocket of Dasari. Oh. Mistakes may be creeping into Dasari's game now. De Bruyne. Could Diogo add a third? No count now, MS Dasari yet, though. Two down. He has had a couple of opportunities here and there, but he will have to start flexing his attacking muscles very, very soon. One thing to bear in mind is Diogo does have a history of throwing a couple of games away. <laughs> Remember our game yesterday? Yeah, against PH Zin, he took a 4-0 lead. Oh, we might find a 3-0 lead here oh. with Lionel Messi. There is three. It's another fantastic goal, like a knife through butter. Diogo is finding himself walking through MS Desari here. That's 3-0. to zero. This is a phenomenal performance. Desari just keeps stepping up with his defenders like Maldini, like Van Dijk, but it's just opening up that little pocket of space where Diogo is constantly able to find that extra pass. And a hat-trick for Messi. And what a start to this semi-final it is for Diogo as well. $15,000 on the line for the winner. 1,400 Global Series ranking points. And at the moment, Diogo is looking like he'd be the one taking it. But the point I was making before that goal, we have seen him throw away leads in the past, and he did look very nervous yesterday when he went even 4-0 up against PH Zin, who has nowhere near the experience um, as MS Dasari does across the stage from him. So we're really going to have to see something from Dasari now, see if he can bring out those nerves from Diogo, or whether now Diogo has learned from those lessons, and maybe we're going to see him march on. We might see a fourth, a fifth. And we could see the annihilation of MS Dasari here. We said before today that we were struggling to come up with a, a name of who's going to win this tournament. I think the one that would have been on most people's lips is or two of the ones that would have been on most people's lips would have been in Razik, would have been MS Desari. And Razik has already fallen. MS Desari battered and bruised right now as well against Diogo, who just seems to be free-flowing now. Here goes Messi, can he find a fourth, potentially? Edge of the box, step-overs there to create the bit of room that he may need. Oh. There's the fourth, it's just beautiful, beautiful FIFA. Every time he goes forward, he looks like he's going to score. And that man there, Messi, as Ray Hudson would say, magisterial here for Diogo. Unbelievable stuff from Diogo. Not only are you 4-0 up in a semi-final, you're doing it in a game which has been filled with just defensive players of people struggling to score, but you're also doing it against a previous world champion. With how the Foot Champions Cups have worked, it's always been Tex, it's always been Dasari as winners. We had the blips where Dullan Mike won it. We had the blip where Razik has won it. But before that, it's always Dasari, always Tex. Can Dasari come back from a 4-0 deficit? Or are we going to be having a new winner? It would be some comeback. I think of some of the ones that Tex made last year. This isn't FIFA 19, though. Diogo, the question is, does he shut up shop? He could, in all honesty, but a goal here for Hemes Dasari. Would make things maybe a little bit more interesting. Kevin De Bruyne here, and Mbappe onside. Just a little bit too much. I would have liked to see him maybe pull the trigger. He needs to start taking some risks, Dan. Make this five before the second leg, and I'd say you've got that spot in the console final. Only because of history and only because of the nerves yesterday, I would say there is still a chance for Dasari, and only because it is Dasari. But Diogo has looked absolutely incredible. So good going forward, playing such beautiful FIFA as well. On the ball, he looks phenomenal. In the final third, he looks good, and defensively as well. Uh, just a little bit of everything. He's basically a Powerpuff girl. We'll come back to that. <laughs> no, we, no, we won't. Just let it be. <laughs> I'll let it be. I'll let it be.
<laughs> Mbappe and Ronaldo now trying to combine. There is just no way through for MS Tessaria there. Diogo is making this look easy. MS Tessaria needs to go back here. If you can find one at the end here, four to one. It's achievable, it's unlikely. That looked like a foul, he will not get it, and that just really has been the story of MS Tessari's game. Nothing going his way. Everything going in the opposite direction towards Diogo as the time does tick down in the first leg. Could he find a fifth in the final minute? Yeah, that really, truly would be the end, you feel, as Messi now finds a bit of room. Can he find a fifth for himself? He doesn't need to, because Ronaldo is potentially going to stab that in. That is the end of the first leg, and that is a drubbing. If I've ever seen one, as Diogo takes a 4-0 to zero lead into the second leg. What a commanding position to find yourself in in the semi-final against MS Tassari. As I mentioned right before they started, the previous time they matched up, it was Tassari winning 4-0 across two legs against Diogo. But he's responded and in one leg has four goals. What does Tassari have in him? Can we see that, that champion that we've seen so many times through all of these different iterations of FIFA come through and make a miraculous comeback here? We would have to see the very best of MS Tassari. And I don't even think that would be enough. Even if Emma Tassari came out and played the best FIFA he possibly could, Diogo would have to play the worst FIFA he possibly could. And right now, I don't think that's possible. And keeping an eye on MS Tassari's screen, we do have it underneath us here. Yeah? So you can see on your screen as well, changes a foot, as you can imagine. I mean, what else do you do? You literally need to take the kitchen sink put the oven inside the sink, oh, the sink inside the oven will make more sense, and then put them two inside of your fridge freezer and then throw it at Diogo. Just throw the whole kitchen. Oh, the whole kitchen. I mean, I'd, I'd like to think... Go into could, your local can... tile and bathroom centre, yeah. pick up a removable kitchen, easier said than done, yeah. and then lob it out the window towards Diogo in hope that it gets you at least one goal. And I don't think it will. Diogo's defending has looked second to none. His attacking presence has been second to none. He looks the best player in this tournament right now. Can he remain composed, though? We did see yesterday. I'm just theory crafting here, Dan. Okay. Against PH Zinn, mm -hmm. a player without even an iota of experience. He went up against him, and PH Zinn caused him problems in this second leg. I think it was it was 4-0, if yep. I remember correctly. Yes, it was. So, I mean, we're grasping at straws here. MS Tassari, though, if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be him. Other person that you say could do this sort of task would be Tex. But again, this is FIFA 20. It's very, very difficult to do anything like this. MS Tassari has such a task in front of him. Even if Tassari gets a goal here, I don't think it'll be enough to, to make Diogo get nervous. But if Diogo makes a mistake, or if the game gifts a goal to Tassari, I feel like that's when Diogo might start to think, oh, well, well, what happens if I don't manage to uh, take this? Foot? You know, like he's going to get a little bit nervous. So he just needs to stay calm, play his own game. A fifth goal kills this off completely. And he has scored five goals twice already in this tournament. He beat Jazz 5-0 in Swiss. He beat Palaco 5-1 in the knockout stages. He's up to 28 goals now in this tournament. Will we see more? Because someone has to score goals in this tournament. And thank God <laughs> Diogo has been. He's doing the scoring for everybody else. Well, here we go. And Mr. Sari now in the white kit, shooting from right to left. Diogo from left to right in the red once again. And we need to see an early goal. We need to see an early goal from... Some would say the consensus goat of FIFA. De Bruyne and Messi combining here on the edge of the box, and it is fast and frantic from Mr. Sari because it needs to be here as Marnie with a little bit of room. Not enough, not enough. The defensive work from Diogo is there. A big puff of the cheeks. It's quite some time to go yet, Diogo. Mane, edge of the box. This will be a fantastic opportunity if he can put it in. There was that mistake we talked about that can maybe come to fruition. It's the wrong side of the post for MS Tassari, though. Yeah, that could have been enough just to make Diogo start to second-guess himself, but you can already see he's taking a little bit more time over that goal kick, just calming himself down as well and just having a breather. Very important, I feel. Mbappe, stretching his legs down this left-hand side. Plays it back into De Bruyne. We have said a fifth would probably do it. It could come here. Van Dijk just about in the way, though. We'll bring it back there. All the offside either way. Well, may actually have been a free kick, but... 
Yeah, Mr. Sharp survives an attack for probably one of the first times we've seen during this game. It just felt like every single time Diogo went forward, it just resulted in a goal. And it was usually by the left foot of Messi. De Bruyne now moving forward, has skipped past one, just can't finally... He can't get that final pass off. And this is the situation he finds himself in. Look at the attackers flowing forward for Diogo. Misplaced pass, though, and De Bruyne will gather. And then Mr. Sarri comes once again. Diogo will soar up the Xbox rankings with a victory here. Securing himself an extra 1,400 Global Series ranking points. And, of course, 15,000 guaranteed as well. Well worked here, Robertson. Left-hand side of the box. That's a well-worked move, but he just can't find that final pass. I missed it, sorry. That's a bit of a mistake, though. Here goes Lionel Messi. Oh, no. It was a tight angle. He's going to hit the left-hand side of the post, and that one will go out for a goal kick, but he is knocking on the door here. But he needs to knock and bang and kick the door in four times. And you can <laughs> you can see Diogo's player cam as well. Just shakes of the head, puffs of the cheeks. He's, he's, he, he needs somebody next he's to him to calm him all, down. All of the emotions right now. He's 4-0 up against a previous world champion. He's about to find himself in a console final, all things going well in the remainder of this second leg. A coach would really help him. You are completely right. Just having someone just to say, look, everything is fine. Don't worry about it. Even if he gets one, you're still fine. You've still got a three-goal advantage. Yeah, Imagine my... if you're playing at home, and I said to you, someone's going to score three goals against you when you have a 3-0 lead. Oh, oh yeah. he's making mistakes. He has Hullet. Can I, Mr. Sorry, take this chance? It seemed guilt edged. He just can't find the back of the net. Diogo needs to settle this one down because he is allowing Emma Stasari to creep back into this one. The corner in is not solid enough. Zambrotta will clear this one away. Diogo, though, feels like, it feels like he's fighting for his life when he's 4-0 up. It's, it's crazy. It's weird. Anyone else, and I would say this game's over, but there was just something about the nervousness from we saw yesterday from Diogo. Pele. Emma Stasari needs a goal really, really soon. Oh, and he keeps giving it away, and he keeps holding on somehow. How many more opportunities is he going to give to Emma Stasari here? He could have scored two or three times already. This may be the first one. Pelle into Mbappé. It is going to be the first of four that Emes Dasari needs. Diogo is inviting this pressure, you feel, Dan? Dare I say game on? Because I think this could be game on. No disrespect to Diogo. As, as I said, at the end of that first leg, probably the best FIFA player we've seen at this tournament so far in terms of what we saw from that first leg. But also the hesitancy and the nervousness from yesterday and from previous tournaments as well. Bucharest when he was 4-0 up against Dallin Mike and he threw that lead away and it was 4-4 lost on penalties. There's just something there that I feel that he just gets a little bit nervous and a little bit shaky. He just needs one more goal just to settle himself down. Because as soon as that becomes 4-2, your brain is going to be thinking about all of the possibilities of what happens if I throw this game away. The creeping doubt. It's happened to us all as FIFA players. You're cruising in a game, suddenly they get a couple of goals back. You're like, oh God, what's happened? My players have fallen to pieces. I've fallen to pieces. Composure's in the bin. Because the downside is for Diogo now is that little creeping doubt, that little seed that's been planted in his brain. He's going to be thinking, well, maybe I should just hold on to the ball. Maybe I shouldn't play this pass. Maybe I shouldn't take this shot. And then suddenly he's not playing the FIFA that we know he can play and he's not at his best. And he's then making all these mistakes and inviting Dasari back into the game. Oh, Mbappe creating a bit of room. Wow. <laughs> a big, meaty challenge comes through from Diogo. That might settle the nerves a little bit. Ronaldo now is probably going to send Messi on his way or is he plays it back? Nice and simple, nothing too crazy. There's a couple of men in positions that can be created here. And there's going to be back to Messi. A little bit of ball here for Diogo. That's what he needs. He does. Oh, <laughs> then passes like that, though. And Zambrato's out of position, as are a couple of your central midfielders. Pelle back to Mbappe, the run from Lionel Messi. If this is the second fraud, Dasari, then maybe, maybe, maybe we could be talking about a comeback. Thankfully, Peter Schmeichel to the rescue. We shouldn't be talking about a goal, no. though. No, Why do absolutely I feel like not. it's going to happen? <laughs> it's just you can see it in his game. You can see it in his play style. You can sense that nervousness. I think MS Dasari can sense that nervousness. Oh, look at this ball into Messi. He's onside as well. Can't finally get that shot away. He's playing so deep here, Diogo. The pass back to Schmeichel. Take a breather. He needs to chill out. It is very difficult to hold on to the ball sometimes when your opponent and is it, playing very well, also not in his shoes, it has to be said. Oh, absolutely. I would have given this ball away a thousand more times. But Tassari very much in the face of Diogo right now. 
Mbappe, ah, he was just getting up off the floor and couldn't quite get the ball out of his feet. Virgil van Dijk. Look how high van Dijk was. <laughs> Halfway up the pitch. Oh, the slide tackle coming in once again. Desperation at times here from Diogo De Bruyne. Has options. One of them is Ruud Hullet. Looking for that final pass. Mbappe. Oh, trying to squeeze it through for Kevin De Bruyne, but he just keeps giving it away. Emma Sestari has had plenty of opportunities here. This, this could be 4-3. It could be 4-2. Diogo, I feel, is somewhat fortunate only to have conceded one. But the pressure is just so, so strong. And that's a slashing shot by Lionel Messi. It doesn't quite, quite creep under the bar. But Emma Stasari. Very, very, very much banging at the door now, Dan. I mean, for all I'm talking about Diogo and his nervousness, we also have to give credit for how Desari is playing and how much pressure he is applying. Oh, this could be an opportunity for a fifth goal here, though. There's not many defenders, but there is Cristiano Ronaldo at the back post. That'll alleviate some of the pressure. He's been taking it in and taking it in, but the men are over towards the back. This ain't FIFA 19, that's a header in FIFA 20. Said it before the tournament started, whip a couple of balls in. Now we've got that CR7 team of the year. Yellow timed as well. Wait, I wasn't going to mention it, Chris. <laughs> I think it might have been yellow timed. But at th this point, I think Diogo is going to take anything because he was so much under the cosh here. But he regains and reinstates that 4-0 advantage with only 45 minutes to play. And surely there's no sort of comeback available now. For all of the pressure that Desari's applied, for all of the chances he's had, for all the mistakes that we've seen from Diogo, it should all be for nothing. Because in 45 minutes, you should not be able to score four goals in FIFA 20 against a professional player. And I think MS Desari knows that. What's the master plan here? I'm looking towards their screens, we can see the tactics and I think MS Desari knows that I mean just keep doing what you're doing really but you need to put these chances away if you're Diogo do exactly the opposite of what you were doing there if anything <laughs> yes and no <laughs> he, he's very quickly trying to play the ball out from defense when he loses the ball when he's three or four times he's given the ball away um, trying to play it out to the right wing or to the left wing however if he does dally on the ball and he doesn't try and play that out, then there is also the possibility that Desari just nips it away from him. <laughs> that does not look like a man who has a full goal lead. <laughs> he looks so stressed. Oh, we continue. From right to left is now going to be Diogo in the red kit. And Mr. Desari shooting from left to right in the white, of course. It's a five to one lead. Insurmountable, some would say. And I think it might be. I think it might be. And the thing is, as time whittles on, I mean, Hemis Desari's already been throwing everything at it. He's going to need to continue to throw everything at it. And this is going to open up gaps for people like R9. Looking for a little bit of room. That should be cleared away. Zambroda will get it to Robertson, but the pressure coming in here from Diogo once again. It would have been nice just to see if he just played his game he played in the first game. You feel as if he would have been cruising. Keep it in Hemis Desari's half. He has struggled to play his own game, though. That's why I want to do. I do want to give credit to Hemis Desari and how he has approached this second leg. Arne down the left. The pace of him. Back into Hullet now. Needs a goal very, very, very quickly. Pelé to Messi, it's beautiful. It's fantastic FIFA by MS Tassari. And Diogo will take a sigh. A puff of the cheeks. Messi has been so good in this game. We were talking about at the beginning of the day. We were saying to ourselves, wow, Messi has not been in many people's teams. Chemistry issues, possibly. He has done nothing but score in this game. That's another goal for MS Tassari. However, it is still... A three-goal deficit now. I'm nervous for Diogo. I can just feel it. I can feel the energy across the room. He's probably going to be thinking now, all right, do I just play this as if this is the 90th minute now? Play keep ball, keep the ball away from Dasari. But I feel if he does that, he's going to be inviting pressure. I think he just has to play simple FIFA. Just don't do anything crazy. I mean, you should be sailing into that Xbox final. Kante to Hullet, to Messi, a little bit of room for CR7 out here. He's not offside, he's got runners inside the box there as well. Lionel Messi was looking for the header there. Vigil, of course, in the way. And Mr. Sari needs another goal very, very quickly. The pause has now been queued. 
Kante keeping a hold of this one. It's a ball into Messi once again. The left-footed shot. Not enough to beat Alisson this time or even the defences. This one is quickly taken to Zambrotta. A goal now for Emma Stasari makes this very, very interesting, I feel. Mbappe to hull it spread out wide to Sadio Mane. Look at the run coming inside there from Kylian Mbappe. Drawing defenders away, opening up this sort of room for Messi. Looking for the quick pass. Virgil van Dijk is there. Good defending though from Diogo. Very difficult to defend against Stasari when he's playing like this because it's just very quick passes, quick fire, making triangles in the middle of the park, making runs off one another. But Diogo's done pretty well to keep up. And there is going to be these counter-attack possibilities as well. That's a loose ball from Dasari. Oh, R9's going to get the wrong side of Virgil van Dijk. Can he finish it towards the back post? And Mbappe and Zambrotter is there. It's still in play for Messi. Back now to Kante to hull it. Look at the room and De Bruyne gets in the way. He needs to attack so quickly, MS Dasari. We're seeing some good football from him. Hull it now. He's going to send this down the middle. He's going to send it down the right-hand side. Pele in acres of space, finds the pass. Oh, oh! No! Oh, he's offside anyway. Oh, he was offside. <laughs> oh, what a crazy, crazy game. Have a breathe. He's three goals up. It shouldn't even matter. It, it just, it stays a story with how tense we are commentating over this, how tense the room feels, considering it's a three-goal deficit. I mean, body language says a lot, but Diogo physically shaking from head to toe as if he was about to get on a roller coaster. Someone get him a coach. Someone just set him, set somebody down next to him. Just say, "Come on, pal, chill out. <laughs> Get him a cup of tea." Oh, see, this is what he needs, and he, <laughs> he he is from England as well. Yeah, listen to the British casters. Come on. All right, this <laughs> I keep trying to say it. This should not be possible. There's 23 minutes of in-game time. As it does whittle on, oh, it just becomes less and less surmountable here for MS Desari. Robertson will get back though for. The man who has just done so much in his FIFA career. Can he pull off a miracle here? He may actually have to come back from a four-goal deficit. Oh, oh my Zambrotta. word. Zambrotta, phenomenal defending. That's going to be a corner, surely. 70 minutes gone. And if you're Diogo, just slow it down. MS Desari needs to get the ball. That is not, not, a, foul, not, not a foul. Not a foul. And <laughs> here comes Diogo flying in. He may have actually just found one of his defenders out of position. He knows, though, only 18 minutes to go. MS Desari still needs another three. That pass is wayward. That Aww. shot is wayward. MS Desari could not buy a goal here. I think if that had gone in, there was always that chance. It's that first time shot. Oh, oh you need to stop doing this. Hull it to R9, back to Hull it. Look at the run from De Bruyne, finds him. Can't quite beat Schmeichel. MS Desari has had his chances. He really, really oh. has. Diogo. Calm it down, hold on to the ball here. Oh, De Bruyne gets it back as well. It's like Diogo wants the dramatic finish. He wants to give MS Desari hope. Oh, Maldini's going to touch it onto Mbappe, though. Surely this should be it. Mbappe with the ball roll. Mbappe with a left-footed shot. That's done. That's dusted. Diogo makes it 2-2 in the second leg. 6-2 on aggregate. He's heading to an Xbox final, Dad. And the sheer relief from Diogo as he erupts in the E-League arena here in Atlanta. And we are going to have a new name on the Foot Champions Cup trophy. It started with Rocky, and we've got Tex, Dasari, Dolan Mike, and Nicholas Razek. But those names are not going to repeat themselves here in Atlanta. Diogo can breathe a sigh of relief, you feel. The four-goal lead is restored once more. And MS Desari, he's tried. He has really tried. You would argue some things haven't went his way. You would argue that Diogo's played a fantastic game of FIFA as well. Eusebio now to R9. And just there were some chances in the first half that needed to go into the back of the net. Some chances that they will sometimes go in. But for MS Desari, the rub of the green was just not there. Diogo is there once again on the attack now. MS Desari's players depleted. His defence leaving spaces all over the place. That would have been a phenomenal goal from Messi. Their green time comes through. And I just don't think you can... 
I, we, we've talked about how Diogo, the, the composure seemed to be flying out the window. But you've got to say the performance has been there. It's been an amazing one, especially in terms of going forward. And there have been moments of greatness defensively as well. There's been moments of madness. I feel like if Tosari could have made this a two-goal deficit at any point, maybe the nurse might have been able to play a bigger part in this one. But Diogo will march on. And honestly, I, I want to thank both players after this game for just a really entertaining game of FIFA. It has been a joy to watch, a joy to commentate. And it means that Diogo will set him up with a final against Oli Lito. The man from England representing the Portuguese in Diogo. A lot of people have said he's going to be one of the ones to watch. He will now be in the Xbox final. We will have a new name. Ex on the Foot Champs Cup trophy. MS Cesari goes over to congratulate Diogo. What a game between these two. A sigh of relief from Diogo in the end. MS Cesari will crash out. But as said, we will have a new winner. We will have a new name cemented in FIFA history this weekend. Yeah, four of them entered the arena. And now all four of them eliminated. And look at that. Diogo doesn't really quite know what to do with himself. Going oh. through all the emotions at the moment. <laughs> you need her again, my friend. There's so much more to go. Don't you guys go anywhere. FIFA 20 for Chumps Cup 3 here in Atlanta continues after this.
Monsters! Monsters! Vamos! Vamos! Monsters! Vamos! Vamos! Love the emotion, absolutely love it. Great stuff there from Diogo. This is going a little bit back now when he qualified for Bucharest. Qualified for the first foot Champions Cup in Bucharest. Let's go, said Diogo. And just to give a little boy here to my left some props, <laughs> watch out for this kid this year. This is last October, Chew. Yeah, this is uh, yeah, this is from October 2019. Mystic Chew. Yeah, because, I mean, he hadn't even played a match in FIFA 20. I haven't seen a, a match from him in FIFA 20, but just based on what I saw from E Premier League, I'm telling you, Go back and watch E Premier League and watch his game against Tex. He had the best goalkeeper movement I've ever seen. And it kind of shows in his defense against Dasari, where he was just able to second man press three steps ahead of Dasari. He was amazing. And I was like, you know what? He is the guy to watch. I should have trusted myself because I got Dasari on that game. Just so I got boy, it completely man. wrong. He was full of emotion. Yeah. And, so, and rightly so afterwards. I want to know has Diogo had a chance to breathe? Has he calmed down? We'll find out now. He's standing by with you. Diogo, the most popular guy in the room right now. I had to grab him over from a bunch of guys giving you congratulations. You take down a former world champion, an MS Dosari. How did you do it? Um, I don't know. To be honest, I just like going into the game, uh, I knew that the first goal would be very important because Dosari, you know, he's a possession player, really. He's like probably one of the best in the world at keeping the ball. So again, that first goal, obviously a big reaction for me. I was... You know, it was it was amazing to get the first goal. I didn't expect to score so many because he's like one of the best defenders in the world. But we did. And then second leg, I don't know. Like the, uh, when someone goes constant pressure against you, it's so hard to like keep the ball. So I thought, okay, this this is still not over. So, but when I got that second goal, with Mbappe, I borrowed the keeper to make it two two and six two on aggregate. I knew, yeah, I've done it. Now, MS Dosari is one of those guys that you really can't count out. You said it yourself. How did you keep your composure and keep your nerves relaxed? I. I didn't, to be honest. Like, I was, I was really nervous. Like when he scored the first goal, I was having Dilla Mike flashbacks. Like Dilla Mike's face just came up on my screen, and I, just, oh, I couldn't believe it. Two boys tweet went up on the screen, and you said to me, "I remember when he said that to me." What does it mean to have a guy like Chu Boy say, "Watch out for this guy"? No, obviously it's like it's amazing, especially because it was like only I think it was after the first qualification that he said that. So like you know, it's a big, big call, and um, I hope I'm making him proud. Now, you're very animated after that. You were shouting, you're excited, and you were trying to explain it to me. Why? Um, so, like, all the nerves that are inside me, when I score a goal, when the ball hits the back of the head, it all comes out. That's why I, like, I shout a lot. But I think it helps me, to be honest. And apparently, it did today. And you say shout. You told me of a shout-out. So now's your time. Yeah, I'd like to uh, give a shout-out to the, um, the group chat boys. They've helped me for, like, for three years. We help each other out. You know, they're always down for friendlies, and I love them. All right, Olalito's next. What do you think? Uh, very good player. I saw I saw his game against Razek. Obviously, he won on pens. Uh, he's been like taking some names down. So I don't know. It's going to be good. Well, you have been too. Sorry. You've been taking some names down too. Yeah. We'll see. You, we'll see you in that one. Thank you. He certainly has four yesterday against PH Sin, five against El Palaco. Now six goals against MS Dasari. Mike, that was a clinic. Uh, absolutely. You have to give him credit. We talked about it. I mean, myself and Chu, it's just hard to go against MS Dasari. Anytime he's got a matchup, he's always the favorite. Yeah. But I did say this is the best attacker that we really have on display, and I typically defense wins championships. Not today. Man, I did put on put in some work. It was a stunning display early on. When you look back at how ruthless Diogo was, certainly MS Dasari was stunned. Yeah, he must have been stunned with the attacking play style of... Diogo, I mean, just that extra touch. He seems to be a few steps ahead. He kind of feels like the Portuguese Tex in a way. This reminds me of how Tex was in Barcelona in FIFA 18, where you just weren't too sure what he was going to do next. And I don't think Desari was able to read Diogo in this matchup. There's two things that I'm sure of. Number one, I would not want to stand in line next to uh, <laughs> next to Diogo. I just feel like he'd be a vamos, vamos. <laughs> and number two, I would hate to be his neighbor. Could you imagine every weekend he's playing foot champs? And he's scoring. Think how many goals he scored. He's got to <laughs> yell. It's part of his nerves. He's got to unleash that. I'm just happy that these two scored goals. Again, Ronaldo seems like the only player, the team of the year, seems to be the only player that can score a header in this game so far. I mean, last year we saw Mbappe was the back post king of cheese on the El Tornado, but nice ball roll there with Mbappe for Diogo. And my man is popping off in Portuguese.
It definitely it's a big knows where the camera is. There's no doubt about it. Oh, yeah. He does. And look, massive credit. Emma Stasari, straight after that loss, he was the first one up out of the chair. The champion from 18 was exhilarating in this tournament. Put on a show yesterday, too, at times. But he was straight up to congratulate Diogo. He knows what it's like to be on the other end. And you know the funny thing is that Diogo might have just started a new chapter in the FIFA esports scene. I mean, now, like the commentators were saying, there will be a brand new Champions Cup champion. And with the way FIFA 20 is and the style, you know, maybe it seems like, you know, the guys who have won in previous Champions Cups aren't able to adapt to this new style. So this could be uh, a changing of guard. You know, I mean, Desari is very young, but people feel like he's been around for so yeah. long. He seems like a veteran, but he's still, I think he's still 19 or 20. And... It just It's crazy to see that there's a new batch of players who seem to want it even more than the guys who won in FIFA 18, 19, and you're going to see a lot of new players, I think, from here on. It's crazy. Watch out. They're getting better at an earlier age as well. It's time, Mike LaBelle, for our Get It Moment, presented by CDW. What are you focusing on? Well, we're trying to focus on his attack. You have to. And Chu mentioned earlier that he reminds him of maybe an early text. I actually think of more of a gorilla. He's the most gifted offensive maestro that we have left in the competition. Ooh. And he just combines. He's an expert at combination between passes when you're looking at the quick intricate passes, the turns, the skill moves, because the goal is always to resurface or to recycle. You want to get the ball back to the middle of the pitch. We keep talking about it, but you're not going to score crosses, even though he was able to convert one of those, but they're not going to be one of your main tactics. And with Ronaldo here, you see those combination play between the turns, between the skill moves, just looking for Ooh. any space. And you're seeing the defenders get shook, messy, and it's not done there. Beautiful sidestep. Allison can't do anything about it. It's just lovely. You have to just pat him on the back or... I guess I could pat you on the back. I can pat you, pat you on the back. Whoever needs to pat him on the back. <laughs> I needed uh, that. Thank you. And, and MS Desari, I'm sure when he watches that back, he's going to say, man, I made some mistakes in that game, and this guy is special. So what does it all mean? It means, and Rasik, gone. MS Desari, gone. We will have a new champion on this championship Sunday. Ole Lito to take on Diogo in the Xbox final. And we are looking forward to that. Gents, we could never have predicted this one. No, we couldn't have. It's going to be a very interesting um, matchup. Uh, and something I have to say for, you know, moving on, I think, in f future tournaments. I know the commentators touched on this, but definitely Diogo, I think maybe having a coach that would definitely help him out, yeah. especially when, you know, he is ahead and something goes wrong and, you know, he feels like his opponent's coming back. Just needs somebody to tell him, you know, yeah. chill out, take it easy. Maybe he needs someone, you know, who's uh, who's who certainly knows the game, someone who's handsome, someone who's tweeted him before in the past, someone that's here. You have to be here in Atlanta. <laughs> you know, someone who's over the age of 30, clearly you need that, oh, okay, that experience really? in life. Yeah. Anyone, have to drop anyone Mike, one. can you think of anyone? I don't Maybe. know. Hey, I look 26. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> sure, true. 26. Well, that means you're not qualified, though. You have to be. Yeah, post, no, no. I know. I don't think he wants me to be coaching. I mean, you know, you don't want a gold three guy. Gold one, actually. I don't know. You if know, you can calm his nerves, though. Yeah, just somebody to call. Even if it's just a friend. I know he's talking about his group chat boys. I think it's maybe Jonesy, uh, who represented Manchester United at the E Premier last year. I think that's maybe one of them. Just get a guy out, one of your buddies, just, you know, just to tell you to chill. Even hey. how I imagine the group chat is still. No, how are you guys doing today? Vamos! <laughs> like, just all caps, <laughs> exclamation point. Everything is on all caps. I, it, come That's on, are you kidding me? You guys watch the it. game? We've got a big one next. We are turning our attention to PS4, the semifinal. Fnatic Tom, Oli Bolly, next.
Welcome back to the E-League Foot 20 Champions Cup Stage 3, powered by Truth. A look at the PS4 bracket. What's to come next up? Fnatic Tom taking on Oli Bolly for a chance at the PS4 final. Two extremely talented players. Tom ran out in the group stages, winning five straight. In fact, he has not lost. The only player left with a 7-0 record. Oli Bolly came to fame in this tournament with that excellent game against Paolo Neto. This a tough one to call, but Tex is out there looking after you. Hashtag Tom. It's your time. Everyone get behind, or everyone's behind you. Hashtag Tom. That's very nice. With a photograph that's kind of creepy. <laughs> <distance>. <laughs> Next up, we've got hashtag Shari. Let's go, Tommy boy. <laughs> the reaction around the room is brilliant. And also, there's tweets out there for you, Ollie Bolly. Let's not forget. Chu's going to translate this one. Uh, ready for the semi-final? Come on. Hey, what's up, Ollie? Chu? Yeah. Good stuff out of Bjorn. Smart guy. Bjorn, I'm kind of jealous. Looks pretty good, Mike. Nice spread. You like that spread, Mike? I would Cheers. definitely get involved. And just to reiterate with what you're seeing with uh, hashtag uh, Tom or Fanatic Tom for this yeah. term, he's currently on loan, so he's Correct. still a hashtag player, but he's on loan for this event up to the E-Club World Cup, and that makes him and uh, Tex, they're both uh, partners. They're Usually you see, you see the nerves from the guys beforehand. Not the Tom case with guy. Tom at all. I have to call him out because I, I ran into him in the bathroom right before this, and he says, Chu, mm -hmm. I'll give you 48K FIFA points if you say I'm the best player in the world on stream. I'm like, bro. It's not happening. Well, you kind of just said time. that. You got it out there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. No. He owes me 48k people points then. Pack opening on Tom. Look at him. Hey, thumbs up. Uh, thumbs up. Yeah, look at him. He got, <laughs> by, he got by his buddy Harry. That was a massive relief. Oh. You could see that beforehand. Now, all of a sudden, it's it's, it's playing with house money, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I I do hope that he brings the, the PS4 scene for the UK on the map with a win here because, again, they're usually known for their Xbox antics, you know, a lot of the guys like Gorilla Tex always made the name, name for themselves on Xbox and this is a chance to make a statement for the UK on PlayStation. Oli Bolly winning his last two games to get here on an aggregate score of 8-1. to one. Don't discount this guy. All out attack. Chris play, Mike. Attractive stuff. Yeah, and if you watched his interview yesterday, he said, look, I'm, score I'm, I'm here to score goals. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to go forward as often as possible, not necessarily trying to have that additional possession play that we've seen as a theme in this competition. So a bit of a different style, and he did a really good job with some game management as well in terms of getting goals in the 45th minute, getting goals toward the end of matches, and it really disheartens your opponent, especially over two legs. Hey, Twitch extension, go and use it. Get your vote in right now. Mike LaBelle, you're up first. I need a score, please. These have all been unpredictable games. We, we took the favorites in the last <laughs> go around, and it, that didn't go for us. They're both out of the tournament. Tom is listening. There's a bit of a curse here, I would say, maybe on Tom as well. He's the only, <laughs> only undefeated competitor left. You know, sometimes it can, eh, Are you gonna we win? rarely see somebody go coast to coast without losing Are you gonna a game. Win? I still think Tom's going to get the win. Chu's asking here. He wants feedback. I, he's smiling. He seems like he's at home on the big stage. I think he's going to get a W. Uh, Ollie's listening as well here. They're, they're both listening. Yeah, this is, I know this you want to score awkward. a line. Yeah, it's tough so for us. I, I, I mean, I think it can go man. either way at this point. Nobody, you know, Everybody has reached their expectations or met their expectations to be in the top four now, so it's on to the next step. I got Tom. I think it's going to be – I'm hoping for goals okay. after seeing that. I'm going Chu, five you got to go Ollie Bolly then. Uh, yeah, because he actually, he actually, <laughs> Ollie Bolly looks like my buddy uh, Hirpseth, Marius Hirpseth, one of the first FIFA YouTubers. So I'll go with, I'll go with Ollie Bolly. Um, sorry, Tom. You, you, you didn't pay me my 48k FIFA points, so. All right. Um, We're getting ready for a good one here. <laughs> Extremely unpredictable, although all the games have been in this so far. Get ready to enjoy the action alongside these gentlemen. Scott Cole, Aaron West standing by. Take it away, guys. Appreciate it, gentlemen. And boy, what a championship Sunday it's been so far. We've kept the thread of just these giants just continuing to fall down. And will it continue to go on the PlayStation 4 with really four players that haven't had a chance to reach that top spot. They got a chance today. Yeah, and they've shown that they deserve to be here. They've played really, really exciting, proactive FIFA, and they, they, they deserve to be on this stage. Also, that was really awkward, them just talking about them and they're looking like off stage. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like you might change your answer a little bit with them just staring you down like that. But both of these guys seem really relaxed. They've played some really, really beautiful FIFA so far, so this is going to be a good one. Yeah, only on esports are usually there <laughs> an earshot from you when you're in the competition. Just staring booth. you down. <laughs> St. James Park or something like that. You're a little bit further away from the pitch as you see the results there. Tom, the favorite. Ali Bali, though, is going to bring a lot of pressure in this one as we kick things off on the PlayStation 4 side here in the semifinals. What a three days it's been here in Atlanta. Both of these guys are rocking to, a, obviously, a lot of the same players, but 
both have Vanderstar in goal, but one one's going with the 89 Vanderstar, one's going with the 91. Uh, both have Vieira, one's going with the 91 uh, Prime Icon Vieira, and one with the 88 Middle Icon. It's always interesting to me. It's those little quirks, there's a little bit di little differences. Everyone has their own preferences, and there are so many similar players. But this one, uh, this is gonna be fun. R9 already in the 18, and he's just a step off. I think between Virgil van Dijk and R9 Ronaldo, those have been the two standout players from this weekend. They've been absolutely absurd on both ends of the ball. Well, Dini will. Sides of the ball. Ends? Sides? I don't know. Who knows? All directions. Coming in from Aaron West, <laughs> a.k.a. Squeak. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I need every social media handle you have. <laughs> Going to Squeak West. A.k.a. Squeak. <laughs> Yeah, I just changed uh, to a West Day on Twitter, but I might just have to change it again. I have to get Twitter to let me get that squeak tag. Virgil. Certainly has been a staple in that back four for a majority of the players. Can't even say majority. All, all of the, the players. Every single player in this tournament has used Team of the Year Van Dyke, and if you didn't have him in your team, there would, we would have to, have to say there's probably an issue with you. No, you, you certainly wouldn't have made it out of Swiss, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Hullet able to fight through the foul. He's, and he's basically changed the meta. Like, these players can. Now, we've talked about this throughout the tournament. The goal scoring has been low because of how good this, play, this item is. Tom, of course, on loan to Fnatic from Hashtag. But since he's not playing Harry, here come those familiar Hashtag kits back out for Tom. Ali Bali in the red and blue kits. And the theme I'm looking for from Ali Bali here is, will he go direct like we've seen him go a few times, dumping into the corners? We've seen some really, really patient play from a lot of the players in this tournament, but Ali Bali has not been afraid to just dump it in the corner and put some pressure on that back four and see what he gets out of it. Very direct, very proactive. Frankie D. Young. See a little bit more patient approach from Tom, but he's not afraid to go forward either. So I don't think we're going to see a cagey, cagey match like we've seen. Dion gets it back, gets it back to Robertson. Here's the buildup. Seen a flurry of goals over the last few matches, including PKs of all PKs of the century. R9 puts it on the left boot. He's been there all weekend long. Let's just be honest, all year long. And he starts it off for Tom. And we just talked about that team of the year, Virgil van Dyke, but he got absolutely skinned by R9 Ronaldo. A little heel to heel. Uh, just kind of skirts around him. He thought Virgil might put a shoulder in there, but a great strike into the near post from Ronaldo, and we're we're open early. I like this. You and I were back there watching some R9 highlights oh, man. before we came out here to I, get energized. I am constantly preaching the gospel of O Phenomeno original Ronaldo to the world. Still my favorite ever player. I, I think he's the GOAT. Uh, obviously, Messi, CR7. <laughs> I'll have a shout. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little shout, but a for me, it's R9 Ronaldo. Here's where the chat explodes. It'll could be interesting. Call me an idiot. That <laughs> man that just had the ball, Mbappe, could he be in the conversation? It's. It, I don't think it's too early to say he'll be in that conversation. <laughs> as long as he can stay injury free, there's the sky is the limit for this man. He's certainly not on the same block now as those icons, but he's well on his way. Yeah. We're not going to get an Mbappe uh, icon item for like <laughs> 20 years, man. This kid's going to play forever. <laughs> We'd be in a situation kind of like Michael Jordan where he's got a statue outside while he's playing While inside. he's playing, man. <laughs> There's Rude Hollett. Another one of those mainstays. You haven't seen, you know, I think you can almost guarantee Cristiano Ronaldo, Hollett, and then Virgil van Dijk. Yeah, if you had to, if you had to put money, any sort of real money on it, and you had to bet a couple players are going to be there. Team of the Year, Van Dyke, obviously. Hull it 100%. Every single player has them in their team. And here is that Mbappe up the right wing. Been a little bit more patient uh, than we've seen a couple times from Ali Bali. Been keeping the ball on the ground, not really trying that deep ball into the corner, just trying to exploit the space, trying to move it side to side. Call it. Another build up incoming here for Fnatic Tom. 
Still without a blemish here in the tournament. Both of these guys have uh, the two most popular right backs. Tom going with uh, the Trent Alexander Arnold and Ali Bali going with the Carlos Alberto that we just have not not seen any faults with either of those guys this tournament. Pretty much whatever chemistry you want to pick your poison type thing. Yeah, what, who, who are you <laughs> trying to power up? Who are you trying to get on full Kim? That's usually the answer to that one is R9. Couldn't turn on Virgil this time. Yeah, I think you might get one on him over on Verge once a match. I think I've seen it twice, once with uh, Mbappe's shoulder and uh, here with Ronaldo skinning him. But it, I, don't, I don't think we'll get more than a handful of those. <laughs> the first 99-rated defender. Here's Ronaldo. Gets it off to R9. It was looking for the offside. They said he was on, and then a point-blank shot. Terms Literally. of FIFA terms. Seven seconds after I said he wasn't going to get beaten again. <laughs> Raised his hand for offside and then got nutmeg. And that should have been a goal for Tom. <laughs> I'm just going to stop talking, Scott. Maybe maybe I'll be more accurate with my words if I don't say anything. If your predictions are sure to go wrong, then <laughs> I welcome them. <laughs> All it gets into R9 this time. It's a right boot. But he is off the pace, offside. Was going to say that's a beautiful goal from Tom. Really good strength from Hullet, holding off the defender and then finding Ronaldo. But he's a half step, maybe even a quarter step offside there. Halftime here in leg one. It's Tom with a 1 0 lead over Ali Bali. Here in the semifinal matchup, they're trying to make it for the first time, their first appearance in that final. See if they can have the opportunity to be the champion of stage three when it comes to the PlayStation 4. You've heard over the last couple of days, I'm a big body language person, and Tom's body language has been great. I, I love it. The entire tournament, he's so relaxed. He's so chill. He's enjoying himself. Like, this is, again, this is professional, but this is video games. You're supposed to be having a good time, and Tom, I mean, he's 7-0, so I would probably be having a good time if I was 7-0 as well, but his his just energy has been great, and I'm really enjoying watching him. He's, he's watching this right now. I can, you can hear me? Can you hear me, Tom? Can you hear me? Have a good time out there, but <laughs> <laughs> enjoy yourself. <laughs> Keep having a good time. We love it. Yeah, the guys at the main desk are a lot closer to the action than <laughs> we are over here on the side. It, it's a little weird because sometimes we'll turn around. I'm like, is he watching me as I speak? Is he going to come punch me in the back of the head real quick? <laughs> and Ali Bali, he's really been the aggressor over the last couple days. So for him to take an early shot on the chin, See if this wakes him up here in the next 45. I just don't want to see any 43-second knockouts. That's that's all I want. Just a <laughs> good match all around. I have no idea what you're referring to. <laughs> Log run for Mbappe. Gets to the end line. Wow. Really well done to get away from Robertson there. Still has it. Gets it back. There's Conte. We have seen over and over this weekend that the pace, the strength, the balance of this Mbappe item is just he's so hard to knock off the ball. He's so quick. He'll just slide around you if you try to put a shoulder into him. Just a problem all the way around. Can you get that key drag back that one ball roll to open it up for a chance to take a shot. We did see our second goal that came in the way of a header earlier today. So there's still I don't believe you. A little bit of aerial game still out there in the one percentile. Sabio. Is Ronaldo the only player to have scored a header this tournament? I this feel like is true. the only ones I've seen are Ronaldo. The CR7 variety. Speaking of, gives it up to Sadio Mane. Back the other way. Here comes Tom. Tom's been very, very calm and on both sides of the ball today. Not not making any mistakes. Patient buildup, intelligent buildup. A little double ball roll as he was trying to work his way to the byline. And here comes a corner on the other side of these changes. Almost got the better of Maldini there on the end line, but the line captain gets a little toe poke. What kind of changes are we going to see here, Scott Cole? What we got going on? Are we getting a sub already? Yeah, 
Lionel Messi. Yeah, actually, I said already, but it's the 59th minute. Like, <laughs> this game's yeah, gone usually so an quickly. hour gone yeah. by. There's a, there's <laughs> That's a... the perfect time to make a sub. I said that like it was 30 minutes in, and he's like changing everything up. Uh, yeah, again, I was wrong there, so he's fine. <laughs> so substitutions underway. Bappe also makes his way off. That's a little bit of a surprise for me. For Ali Bali, but when you have those options on the bench, you got to think, like, who's coming off? <laughs> Someone incredible is coming off the pitch. Somebody's got to make way for a Lionel Messi. And there is Messi for Tom Van der Sar. Able to get the mitts to it, conceding the corner, but... Big save from Van der Sar there. Very good save down to his left. It's on Messi's right. You got to think, even with that four-star weak foot, if it's on his left, that's almost automatic. R9, the finesse just wide. Fantastic feet again from R9 in the area. Frees himself up and just slides it by that far post. It's just coughed on the post as he's gone by. Ali Bali started the week, ranked 74. Fantastic opportunity for him to soar up those rankings. Tom also equal in the rankings. It's UK versus Sweden. Here on a Sunday for Milana, Georgia. Stage three, 200 grand. Prize pull up on the line. Messi shakes the woodwork. It's really great ball movement again from, from uh, Fnatic Tom. His buildup has been really, really good in this first match. Very patient, working these one-twos, ball rolls, simple moves to find space. And Sadio Mane just steps right into it. First time from Ronaldo, and the man from Liverpool gets it done in the 69th minute. I want to talk about ball rolls, simple combinations to find space. That was a beautiful, beautifully worked goal from Ali Bali there, and the man from Liverpool, whose team just uh, picked up a win today. Uh, and this 1-1. One, one. Yeah, Virgil van Dijk with the goal in that one. But here's Sadio Mane in the semifinal for Ali Bali. And he's been searching for it for a while, but he's finally found it. The equalizer. 20 minutes to go. It's been a good one so far. Relatively open. No one's sitting back too far. They both want to come out and play. Yeah, we've seen some passing around the back, but... We haven't seen it go both ways. Once they switch the pitch, they start to build up, start to advance. And I think those are the players that you've seen in the semifinals on both platforms, the ones that are trying to attack when they have an opportunity. Yeah, we're seeing players be rewarded for positive play, for open play, which is what you want to see. You don't want to see players uh, going through by sitting back and just defending, passing it around the back, keeping the entire 11 behind the ball. But we've seen some really, really good positives today and throughout this weekend. Robertson gets it up to Hullet. Over the top, Sadio Mane. We've seen this from Ali Bali throughout the tournament. First one we've seen from him today, though. Maybe a little ill-advised flick uh, Sadio Mane is not going to win that 50-50 battle with Patrick Vieira. He's going to body him every time. But that is probably the first time we've seen Ali Bali go direct into the corner. And we may see it a couple more times. He knows all he needs is a little opening. If he could have got that flick over Vieira, would have created it up. All Sadio Mane needs is an inch of space. He's got so much pace, so much quickness, and he's in behind. De Jong gets it to Ronaldo. Messi has it now. Heel to heel. And Root Hullet deep within his own area. And Robertson will be the one that ends up clearing it away. Some intricate dribbling there from Fnatic Tom. Good defending there to stay calm in the area from Ali Bali. Not give away a penalty. Not give away anything foolish. And both of these guys are defending well. They're, they're attacking really well, but defending well as well. <laughs> That's a lot of wells. Well, right now the score is... <laughs> All level at one apiece. Working our way toward full time. Scott Cole, Aaron West along with you. We've had a lot of fun over these last couple days. 
And here's another chance. It's beautiful from Alibaba. Ronaldo will try Vandesar. Beautiful movement on and off the ball from Alibaba. And then we see a rare croqueta from Ronaldo to open up that shot. Just couldn't sneak it past Vander Vandesar. Yeah, 19. The ball roll was more rare. La croqueta. Croqueta was the spam. <laughs> that was the cheese in, in 19. Chu has talked about the cheese. We haven't seen too much cheese in this game, but the croqueta was the cheese. And I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, I was very guilty of it because I loved Iniesta and I love the croqueta in real life. So I did it. Messi gets it off to Mbappe outside the 18, tries to go finesse to the far post, but Van der Sar is right there. At full time, we'll be level on aggregate as in between these matches, about to head to leg two, and you guys have been out there rocking, hoping for the drops. Make sure that you link your Twitch account, your EA account for that Cruyff. 91 overall, 91 pace. There's a lot of 90s. Throw a couple Kims on there. You're good to go if that drop comes your way. I, uh, Dulsta somehow got himself a drop yesterday. I, I think he might have gotten himself a, a N'Golo Conte out there, but I, uh, I was devastated, Scott Cole. I have been tuning in on my laptop <laughs> yesterday and the day before that and did not realize that I, I wasn't logged in. So I wasn't <laughs> eligible for any of the drops. Uh, EA, if you're out there listening to me, please deposit 100,000 FIFA points in my account. Thank you. It's not enough for you to work the event, <laughs> have as much fa as you've had. I just want better players in my team. Is it so much to ask? Is it? Feels like it might be. It's a little bit of a stretch. 1-1. One, one. <laughs> it was Tom striking first in the early goings, and then Ali Bali fought his way back inside the second 45, able to find that equalizer. And it comes down to this final 90 minutes to find out who's going to hold one of the two positions in the final for PlayStation 4. And Tom's been great at keeping possession. Had held the possession edge on that one. The shot's edge did hit the post. But I don't think either one of them will be. For sure, Ali Bali will not be aggrieved to see uh, them drawing. But I don't think Tom will be too upset to see that first one in 1-1. One, one, probably could have shaded it. But if he keeps, I think if he keeps playing the way he's playing, we'll see him go three on this one. Tom Ali Bali facing off here in leg two. Who's going to find the advantage? Is Ali Bali will start with it first. Be just a throw along the touchline. Good pressure there from Tom. Early going, but we'll see if he's trying to press up a little bit higher. Get. Get some pressure on the ball a little higher up the pitch. What a through ball. And just pops it up because Vandersar had come out. The fantastic through ball, but uh, Pele up against, or I'm sorry, Eusebio up against Virgil van Dijk and Rude Hullet in the air is probably not going to work out for a 5'8", five, 5'9", five, Eusebio. <laughs> Vandersar tries to roll it out, but ends up in Ali Bali possession, but Rude Hullet right there to close it down. A little bit of nervousness there from Tom coming out of the back, but he's cleaned it up. He can relax a little bit, keep the possession he's been keeping so well. And it's been positive possession. Yes, he's dominating the ball, but he's not just passing it back and forth in the back. He's trying to find, he's trying to probe and find openings, work those combinations, switch it back and forth. And now he's got Mane down the right. Sadio dancing along the 18. Is it Mbappe? Quick touch, quick passing, but maybe one too many. Again, fantastic combinations from Tom there. It's good defending from Ali to just stand firm, bend, don't break, like you said yesterday, Scott. Defending well at the last. Seems to be the trend. So still no score here in leg two. Here's another buildup. It's Tom. And as this match goes on, it seems like Ali's not too uncomfortable out of possession, which is, is going to be a, important against Tom because he's keeping the ball really, really well. And what it's going to take is just in that defensive third, in, the, in uh, Ali's own area. He's just got to be calm, maintain his composure, not make any foolish mistakes. And he's done that so far today. 
I told you someone from Fnatic had the opportunity to make a final. He would have sworn I was talking about Tex. Not the name we were expecting, but the name we deserve right now. Tom has played well over the last couple days. and You can't argue with the 7-0 record. <laughs> yeah, he's certainly been in form in this one. Ali Bali, though just one goal away from retaking the advantage. And then that's when he really plays well. When he gets a little glimpse, starts really stalling out some of those runs. Vieira switches the pitch. And again, it's patience from Tom. Yes, he's going side to side. Yes, he's going switching the play often. But anytime he can get a chance to go forward, he's looking forward. He's trying to take that advantage. He's trying to find those quick one twos on the edge of the area and to build in midfield. Just really intelligent possession play. Ronaldo trying to do a through ball to himself. Not recommended. <laughs> Had all kind of space. Maybe he was expecting a run. Alexander Arnold can't take it away from Cristiano Ronaldo. He's going to get it back up the left wing. And this time Trent gets the best of him. Good defending there from Tom. Just staying patient once again. Now he's off on a counter. De Jong will hold it up. Wait for the support. And it's Trent Alexander-Arnold on the overlap. But Maldini says, no, sir. Fantastic tackle from Maldini, who in real life knows all about Phenomeno Ronaldo. And this is a long one. Vandersar comes all the way off his line. Jumps on it inside the 18, and he'll just kick this away. Very, very alert from Vandersar off his line. Tom bringing him out to intercept that could have been a dangerous, very dangerous chance for CR7. You always love when the keeper has on the same color as the opposing kit. <laughs> I'm like, whose man is this? <laughs> <laughs> whose man? It's going to be a corner. Mbappe will be providing the service, and he'll actually whip it in. It was looking for the target man of... Virgil van Dijk trying to recreate that goal against Manchester United today. A little dunk off the corner. We haven't seen too many direct balls into the area from corners, from set pieces. Usually a lot of guys playing short, but every once in a while, if you sprinkle that in there, they have to respect it. There's Mbappe now for Tom. We'll roll it up to Robertson. And I did talk about Ali Bali doing really well to defend and He's been up against it the entire match, but you got to think Tom's possession has been more and more dangerous, more and more dangerous as this game is going on. Ollie's been dangerous on the counter, but one of these chances you got to feel Tom is going to take. Virgil work it over to Trent Alexander Arnold, and he'll bring it back the other way. Nothing going so far here in leg two. with our competitors have been really stingy as Ronaldo goes to ground. Big, strong team of the year. Virgil van Dijk just sticking a shoulder in there and bundling Ronaldo over. Not even a question of a foul, just great defending. Two minutes of added time. There's that long ball. I don't think Mbappe, well, he does run it down. That's don't, the end line. Don't ever doubt Mbappe's <laughs> pace, Scott Cole. Come on, man. You know better than that. He's earned his squad a corner. There is a short corner. Does he have time for that, though? If there was time to go direct, it was then. Felt like it should have been dumped into the box there. If you're going to do it, that's the time. <laughs> All level. You know how many shots we had in that first half? Settle. Zero. 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 Possession also sitting with Tom. 58% of it. Both these guys were... Very positive in the first match. A little bit, still still trying to go forward, still trying to create opportunities, but a little bit more reserved. Tom has not dominated possession quite as much as he did last game, but he has had the better of possession. Just haven't had any real quality chances created from either side. 
Haven't really had to make the keepers work too much at all. <laughs> Still equal at one. Could this be the 45 that decides it? I don't know if my heart can take another round of PKs. I don't PKs. know if I can do another <laughs> round of PKs again, man. My nerve's bad. Frankie de Young. Frankie's been uh, the choice of a few of these guys, but often we're seeing Kevin De Bruyne, Vieira. As the, the tournament's gone on, we've, we're seeing a lot of Contes. As the tournament's gone on, we ha I haven't seen any Zidans, if we're going to be honest. He's dropped out as we've gotten into the knockouts. But De Jong's still staying strong. I just think some of those work rates you just couldn't afford to have out there. Yeah, medium medium's not ideal. Really, anywhere on the pitch, that Zidane is medium medium, even though he has fantastic face stats. Frankie de Jong with the high medium, fantastic for a defensive midfielder, alongside that hullet that's always going to be there. He's, I believe, high high. Alberto. It took me a while to understand what those work rates and what Kim's really did and how much they actually do make a difference. It's, a, it's just really fascinating how much you can customize players and customize the game. Yeah, the chemistries match with the styles, getting everybody plussed up as much as you can. That's really the secret sauce when it comes to building your FIFA Ultimate Team. Yeah. And yet, there is a meta. There are play styles that are the most effective, that can be really effective, but so, so many guys can just make it their own. Infinitely customizable. Ronaldo still with possession. Here for Tom. Good little ball roll to open up space. Hour gone by. R9 trying to find some space. Root Hullet doing a nice job squeezing it down. Just stuck out that back leg to get it down and cut that one out. Could have been a really dangerous opportunity for Tom. Mbappe. Occupies Van Dyke for a moment. Couldn't find R9 on the run. And that's where it looks like Alibal is going to find his opportunity. Tom is so patient in possession. He's, he's been so good in possession, but he's looked a little bit susceptible to the counter with Mbappe running down that wing, picking on Robertson a little bit, with Ronaldo going down that other wing, picking on Trent Alexander on a little bit. And we've seen that over and over this entire weekend. Those two strong, incredibly pacey wingers, strikers, whatever you want to call them, but wide players just picking on fullbacks. Goes to Mbappe. Gets it to Frankie de Jong. Rare scoring situation for him. Yeah, it's and it's it's clearly one of those those opportunities where Tom thinks about it twice. It's Frankie de Jong on that three star weak foot on his left foot. Not a great shooter already, even though this team of the year has bumped that up, but you, you think twice about taking that opportunity, and then it's gone. You get so few of them. Is that the guy you want? Riding the lightning, so to speak. Yeah. Nil, nil. We had some open play in leg one, but that has certainly flown away as the pressure has continued to mount here in the second leg. Nobody wants to be the one to make that mistake. They don't want to open up too, too much. Let's we'll see if anyone can take a risk and make something pop off. So we are in the coming up on the 68th minute here. Vandersar has been big. It's also interesting that some of the Allisons have fallen away as we've. Yeah, I think uh, we've seen a couple of sh a Schmeichel. Uh, surprisingly, and I think it's only because of Kim, because he's a fantastic goalkeeper. No Ter Stegens at all this weekend. But again, I think that's solely because of Kim. Seen that Vandersar, seen a Schmeichel. That's because some German center backs need to get good. <laughs> need a, we need a flashback Jerome Boateng. That's what we need. Give me that 90 rated flashback Jerome Boateng. I think you can figure out how to make that work. And Ronaldo yeah, he flags very, up. Very clearly offside there. I don't know what he's mad about. <laughs> Still waiting to see who's going to crack the scoreboard here. The more we go on this one, I hate to say it, looks like we might get pens, but still plenty of time for someone to find a goal, find an opening, create that one chance. That's all it takes. It might be a first shot 
first goal type thing today. Will it be one of these super subs? R9 does find some room and more importantly finds the back of the net. Goodness gracious, Tom takes the lead. And that's just a big boy goal. Stands up to the challenge, shoulders off the defender. Little scoop turn and then a beautifully feathered finish in the top corner. And it's R9, or Phenomena Ronaldo, who has been actually absurd this entire weekend. I don't know if we have someone keeping stats for highest goal scores, but if he's not at the top, I would be extremely surprised. I think there's no question about it. I don't even think you have to keep the stats. 95 shot. And that's when you get really nervous about Conte being out there is when he gets marking R9. There is a big physical difference. Yeah, we talked. Uh, the guys on the desk talked about that earlier on the call. Just some people are opting to go with a different player than Conte because as tena tenacious as he is, as good of a tackler as he is, he's, he's a little guy. He's a little guy. He can get muscled off by the bigger boys like Ronaldo. Both Ronaldos. So 1-0 here in leg two. And more importantly, it's 2-1 on aggregate in favor of Tom. And now we're about to see the true Ali Bali. And we talked about Kim's. Tom's got that marksman on Ronaldo, which gives him a shooting boost that he probably doesn't need. A little physicality boost that he probably could use a little bit of. That, that might be the only weakness for this Ronaldo. He's a little bit weaker. Great job keeping it in. KDB almost found his shot getting through the traffic. There was a lot right in front of Vandasar, but it just couldn't find its way through. Now and that he, I like, a little dump ball, that direct ball from Vandersar, direct volley into the corner. Take a little 50-50 chance. With, you'll, you'll, you'll take that. You'll ride it out with Mbappe on the end of that. I don't hate it. Messi. And we are going to have a foul at about the 22-yard mark. Most interested to see if we see him go direct or if we see three guys around the ball, a couple fake runs, a little scoop up maybe. And Messi will lay it off to Sadio Mane. And the right mitt of Van der Sar gets a hand on it. Big, strong wrist from Van der Sar. Good save. Didn't have to do too much there, but we've seen him go in from there very easily. KDB runs into an Mbappe. Fantastic strength from Mbappe there. And that was a through ball that if it got through, it would have been night-night. Really good cover from Ali Bali. Uh, that's him bringing Carlos Alberto, the right fullback, over to cover in the center for the center backs for Robertson, who was beaten. It's good defending. Ronaldo now. Just kick it down there, waste some more time as Van der Sar has to come all the way out. Whee! That is a risky ball. A little Roman goalie time. Sheesh, sheesh. Here's the 90. The question is, is how much added time will be put on? It'll be two. Tom's just going to dump this in the corner to Ronaldo, who's just about always going to win that in the air. Really good one, too, with Messi. Ronaldo. Just had to cross it over, and it surely would have been a goal. And Tom, you can see the elation. He is moving on to the final of PlayStation 4, and he continues to be unbeat. That is pure emotion from Tom. That's the most hype I've seen him this entire weekend, and why wouldn't he be? That's 8-0 for him. He's looking like maybe the favorite for this entire thing right now, but uh, Fantastic good play. Some weekends you got it, some weekends you don't. Tom has got it, and we'll have him next here.
Welcome back. Remember to tune into TBS every Friday at midnight for the best in esports and gaming. Only on E League. A few tweets rolling in here, folks. Tom, big happy smile on him. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Yeah. Tory, my <laughs> hero. <laughs> He's got the goofiest smile. I love this guy. Oh my goodness, Biscuit Boy. Yeah, what's up with that? We'll ask him uh, in the interview. What's up with Biscuit Boy? I don't know if I want to know. Everybody likes biscuits. Maybe that's what it, I don't know. Um, Final, here we come, baby. From, from Biscuit, Biscuit <laughs> Boy to console finalists. All right, now, now it has to be asked. <laughs> now we got to figure out what's happening. Yeah. Oh, oh man. man. I think we'll try and find out, shall we? Yeah, I think we should. Hey, Jillian Sakovitz standing by with Tom. Jillian, <laughs> we want to know, what does Biscuit Boy mean? <laughs> Hashtag Tom saying he's got a whole crowd around here that his mom's probably passed out somewhere from excitement. But let's talk about this. This is your first PS4 final. What does it mean? Yeah, it means a lot, but like, I don't really feel like I got a job done. Um, Semi final, final. I think everyone just remembers a winner, really, don't they? So that's what I've got to try and do. That goal that was the difference maker there for you. Aaron West called it a big boy goal. Can you take me through it? Yeah, basically, um, lyrics, you know, foot with lyrics. He tells me I'm not allowed to do that, but I didn't listen to him. I didn't listen to him. I told him, the scoop's on the edge of the box. It works well, especially with R9. Wait, can I just watch his back? I don't actually remember scoring it. Go on, go on. Oh, 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 look at that. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, and yeah, lyrics told me, lyrics told me not to use it, but I keep ignoring him. So yeah, I'm just going to keep ignoring what lyrics says from now on. Two more games to ignore lyrics. Yeah, yeah, basically two more games. Uh, if my opponents are watching, I'm probably going to do a scoop, so... Try and defend it if you can. If you can't, then unlucky, do you know what I mean? You had a good group of guys watching you here. You had Harry, Tex. Uh, what does that mean when they were kind of watching you? But you're kind of giving them wait, wait, business I, back. I have to include Shory as well. Shory's oh, and Shory. Yeah, yeah, don't forget about Shory. Um, no, it feels really good, like, knowing people are supporting you, because I put my phone away, like, 20 minutes before kickoff. So, Mum, if I haven't read your message, I do apologise. Um, I put my phone away. So it's good to have people, like, actually in the arena um, celebrating and cheering for me, because, like, it's kind of lonely when you're just on your own and no one's really watching. But, yeah, I enjoy the support. I'm embracing it, really. Uma or Zizinho's next for you? What's the plan? Um... I'm just going to chill out. Whoever I play, I play. Like, I can't really... I have no say in what them two do on stage. So, yeah, I can just... I've played both of them in Swiss, so I've sort of got an idea of how they play. But I've just got to play my game. And, yeah, what Harry said, don't lose. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? Yeah. If I could just win, that would be good. Always listen to Harry, right? Yeah, yeah. Apart from rock, paper, scissors, because you've got the upper hand on it. Okay. Someone else you don't listen to is Mike LaBelle. He dug yeah. up some video on you yesterday, which we weren't yeah. happy about, no, the cramp yeah. video. It was, yeah. it was a little embarrassing, but very funny. Well, yeah. we got him but back. For everyone else. Uh, aside from preparing for today, you dug up some stuff on Mike LaBelle last night. Yeah, can we have a look at it now? Yep. Yep. Oh, Mike. <laughs> Looking good. <laughs> Looking good. Oh, oh, look at him. Steve Stifler, American Pie. <laughs> Yo, could you go back in time, Mike, and oh. give yourself... Oh. Is this one you... A true <laughs> gamer, look at that. Can Wait, we save the best for last? Oh, oh Mike, 14, don't man. be embarrassed. Oh. So he's... Yeah, it's some glow up, in it? Oh. Yeah, he's never going to find that cramp video again now. Oh, I'll be honest, no. I'd rather have the cramp video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, Tom, one. we'll talk to you after the next game, perhaps, OK? Hey, right, what does Biscuit you. Boy mean? No, Biscuit Boy, what's up, what does Biscuit Boy mean? Yeah, basically once, someone insulted me on a football pitch by saying that I look like a 13-year-old that's eating too many biscuits. <laughs> how, like, how do you even insult someone like that? But yeah, ever since I told my stream about that, it just clocked on. But I thought, sort of got rid of that nickname like two years ago, but some people still uh, hold on to it. Well, joke's on whoever made that up now. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Thanks for calling me that. <laughs> All right, Biscuit Boys, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, ha I had two huge cookies yesterday. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, you're a Biscuit Boy now. Say I'm a bit of a Biscuit Boy right yeah. here. Anyway, fair play to Tom. 15 grand confirmed now. A massive win for him, as well as extra bonus points, obviously. This is how he got it done, as we look back in the highlights from what was a cagey affair, a class goal that got it done for him. Yeah, and um, we'll take a look at the highlights right here. I thought he was going to get rigged in this one because he had so many chances, as we see here. I think this is going to be the opening goal. Ronaldo skips over Van Dijk. You rarely see that, but nice little near post finish. Of course, R9, he's got that R uh, five-star weak foot. I think Tom Fanai Tom might be a passion merchant. I don't even know. This guy gets hyped up, though. And you saw there, Van is making saves for Ali Bali, and I think he might hit the post here as well. And you're just thinking, man, 
is everything going to go against them? Because FIFA 19, you know when you miss that chance, your opponent goes the other way, and this is exactly what happens. One shot, one goal. Isn't that right, Mike? No, absolutely. And it's worth mentioning, too, Vanderstar was good for both of these players in this matchup. So when you're looking at saves, the big reason that this stayed low scoring, actually, it wasn't because there weren't chances that were made. Uh, or, not, or that guys weren't taking shots. Yeah, maybe not a pen, maybe a pen. A bit debatable. This but is the winning goal. You saw it. Scoop turn. It's coming. Bang. Sensational. Very direct. Just went for it. Why, Put your head down. why would lyrics advise him not to do that? I don't know. Nobody listens to lyrics. Actually, no. People do. <laughs> lyrics is the guy. You know, he's one of those guys. There are a few guys in the community that just discover those things first before anybody else. Lyrics, uh, Dr. Nightwatch. Um, as you see, the passion merchant there again. <laughs> um, but those guys are, you know, looked as the guys that, you know, find the cheese, find the things that work, and they just advise you not to do it. And usually you listen to them, but hey, something must have just sparked into Tom to take that shot. More shots, more shots on target, more possession. Well done, Tom. Advancing to the PS4 final. And Mike, the, the, the winning goal, Ronaldo, the one we spoke about with lyrics advising him not to do it. You've broken it down. Yeah, we have to revisit it. It's just a big moment, especially when things aren't maybe going your way. You're not finishing. You're hitting the post. You get a beautiful entry pass. And I always say, let your superstars be superstars. Let them be themselves. You see the freeze frame here. You've got a bit of a 1v1. You're on the edge of the box. And anytime you have space to work with, you've got to take that space. So after he has his turn, then we see the scoop turn. And following that, he's opened up a nice angle. And it's worth mentioning the scoop turn. You need a four-star skiller or a five-star skiller in order to use that maneuver. Just bangs it. Top corner, the best corner, easy on the eyes, and it allows him to progress. Messi, or nine. But Argentina and Brazil combining together. Magic. PS4 bracket looks like this. Congratulations, Tom. In the final, the Englishman will be taking on a German or a Brazilian next. Um, to take on Zazinho. That match to come. But first... I want to trust the boy. Oh, okay. We're going to hit the wingers this time, Chu. Yeah, let's take a look at some of the wingers that the pro players are using here in Atlanta and some of the substitutes that you guys can use in case you're not able to afford these top-tier players. Of course, Cristiano Ronaldo, Messi, Eusebio 93, 98, Mbappe, and Mane. Those are the guys you've been seeing down the wing for the pro players. You know, speed, strength, and skills. Those are the most important things. And let's take a look at some guys you can get if you cannot afford them. Under 750K. Again, that Scream and Signet. You can use him in SD Cam even, but he's also good down the wing. Agility is very important as well. I would rather put Mbappe down the wing than SD because his finishing, I get, I just don't trust the 89 Mbappe's finishing. There's something about it. We also got that new headliner, Mertens. Under 500K. Ben Yedder, Mertens, Salah. You're seeing a pattern here. Agility. Under 250K, I put the Scream a because I wasn't sure about the uh, headliners, Adama's price just there, but those guys are great. But Adama, two-star weak foot, bring him off the bench. He's super sweaty, the sweatiest player in this game. He is going to beat every fullback that he's going to come up against. And then last but not least, Dembele can do anything under 100K. You can get Sané, but he's got the poor weak foot, Marshall. And Felipe Anderson keeps scoring against me in the weekend league, but maybe that's my fault. Sweating doesn't help. Yeah, I mean, by sweat, we mean just like, you know, that kid who uh, he probably has like the Tex or Desari Tifo just goes down the wing. You know? Zazinho looks like he's sweating a little bit there. Up against Umut. The last of the semifinals. Next.
Welcome back in, folks. Kev Egan, Chew Boy, Mike LaBelle. What's that? Oh, you got yourself a little drop there, Chew. Oh, Thank wow. Thank you there. It was, what you got? Uh, it was a lot better than that, that thing you're going to say. Like it's no, no. Oh, why would you do that? You no. dead. That is the most dead thing <laughs> ever. Can someone clip that? Please, I saw can, it. can we get him like out there? Get, here? Come on. Guys, can, just give me my close-up camera, please, so we can not talk about Kevin Egan and what he just did. Never do that again. But we oh. do have drops. He's not lying. We got the 91 Van Dyke that has just been dropped into accounts. He may have just scored against my Manchester United, whatever. I'll get over it. But he's also dropping into your account. So check those fun accounts to see if you've got a Van Dyke 91. We already saw that Dulsta got the content from yesterday. So, of course, EA rewarding the bad players, right, Dulsta? <laughs> That's terrible because he's probably one of the best players in professional esports. But. If you do want to win some more drops, go to ea.com forward slash Twitch linking, and then you can win some of the more drops that are coming later today, all right? Now, please, Kevin, again, don't do anything like that ever again. That's what happens My when you move apologies. to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Kev moved to Atlanta, and now that's what we got. This is this is the new Kev. Ah, the cringe. I apologize. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> We've got ourselves another match coming up. Umut to take on... Oh, stop it. Look at Mike's face. Oh, man. Oh! <laughs> Run it back. Why, Run it back. Why would he do that? This is ready for TikTok right here. Good material, Kevin. No, hey, Kevin Egan, can you promise me something? Never make a TikTok. Never join TikTok ever. Okay. Right? Two Just has a TikTok. I do, but. Oh, okay, two. But Kevin hey. can't get on there? No, it's fair enough. Y'all hey, are the same on. age. We're not, though. Same look. You are. We're, right? we're really not. One He's year? a year older. One year. Okay. I'm just I'm just saying. Chat, how old do I look? Don't actually is that a good thing to ask the chat, but anyway. Chat, Let's how do I look? Talk about two guys that are an awful lot younger than Chu. Uma taking on Zezinho. Germany, Brazil. The final semi-final, Mike LaBelle. Promises to be a good one. Yeah, the scruff versus the clean shave. Mm. Just an observation. Hashtag right? analysis. Profile <laughs> but yeah, yeah, in-depth analysis. Yeah, Michael very in-depth. So we've seen Zezinho looks to go forward. He has the skill moves. He has the flair. A lot of Brazilian characteristics. And he's got Nicholas, of course, coaching him. They're talking about tactics, even though Nicholas hasn't necessarily been able to put it all into motion. And then Yuma is kind of like on the other path. Yeah, you could even make the argument, like Chu was saying, he reminds you of Nicholas in some ways where he's limiting mistakes. He's controlling games. Very consistent buildup. Consistent defending. You name it. For all the penalties and extra time that we saw yesterday, both these guys have not had to rely on that at all. How do you see it playing out? Use the Twitch extension and get your vote in. Will you go Zizinho or will you go Umut? Mike LaBelle, prediction. Zizinho. What score? My, my score lines have been bad today. It's been okay. very poor. Uh, we're going to keep this low scoring. I'm going to go with a 2-1. A Even though I talk about Zizinho's offense, I think Umut's going to be able to counter a lot of that. So Zizinho, 2-1. I uh, just, uh, you know, not agree with Mike because I don't like doing that. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Umut because, again, I, I think he's going to be one of those players. Uh, you know, Nicholas is standing next to Zizinho, but he's going to be like a Nicholas-like player in the future where he just does not make mistakes. I'm going uh, Umut to 3-1. And Umut, very under the radar. We yeah. really haven't discussed him much. We haven't talked about his run. Uh, he's been impressive start to finish in this tournament. It's not like he just creeped in no. from the Swiss stage. He's Six been and one record so far in this tournament. Raced off to a 4-0 uh, record in the group stages yesterday. Sensational. Good stuff, gents. We're going to hand it over now to Scott Cole. And Aaron West, I'm sure, is pretty embarrassed by my antics over here. <laughs> I do apologize. Again. I'm not embarrassed at all. I'm like, it makes me happy how much how happy you were to do that and to make the other casters the, the on the desk embarrassed like look look at mike's mike is still having secondhand embarrassment right now like he can't handle it -hand <laughs> i don't know i don't know if i can have that i've been shirtless for day one and day two hey at least somebody took an l and it wasn't mike labelle it's true it's true a rare non mike labelle l oh stop make it stop rerun let's go make it stop like look at how pleased he is with himself about this that's what i love about the whole thing I love that. Oh, He's just no. so What's happy about it. I don't get it. <laughs> He's so happy about I'm it. Done, uh, I also just checked my account, and I still haven't gotten any drops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed with everyone involved in that situation. I mean, you are petitioning for a drop. Hard. Every Lit, time you cast it, I am hurt Aaron. I, I, know, Lit, I know. I am begging you. <laughs> Give me a drop. <laughs> hey, Aaron, do your job, will you? Take it away, Jen. We, we, got, a little, to get yeah. jobs. we got a little thing called the semifinal here on PlayStation 4 to find out who is going to be <laughs> Facing Tom in the final, and Aaron, it's either going to be one of these two youngsters. You got Ubat coming in from Germany, and then the Brazilian Zazinho, who really set us ablaze last night. Yeah, I've been 
having a lot of fun watching Zizinho. No shade to Umut, but Zizinho's style of play is just very open, very creative. Uh, he loves to throw in those dribbling moves, a quick combination. So I, I like the way he attacks. Umut's been very patient. Um, but I, I, I'm going to... I'm, I'm not supposed to be partial, but I, I want to see a Zizinho win. I just want to see a good game, but to me, I like the way Zizinho plays a lot. Well, 70% of the folks out there in the Twitch chat, they agree with you. As Tom is just sitting back chilling, waiting in the final, who is it going to be? That's the question. We'll have 180 minutes and then some to try to figure out which one of our competitors it will be. It's been a long road. You think about all the qualifications and then the gauntlet that you've gone through over the last couple of days to have an opportunity to maybe come here and win the whole thing. I uh, just have to comment. Drip levels are solid solid for both of these boys. I like that Benfica hoodie a lot. Uh, and the HSV jersey, we talked about this yesterday. It's a solid one as well. So I would I, on, on the drip front, they're even, but we'll see how it plays out on the pitch. But drip is important. Hope, Everyone needs to know that. Well, one thing I hope Uma's ready because the senior is about to bring it. He is very aggressive offensively. Very aggressive. Presses high, tries to put the opponent under pressure when he's on the ball. He doesn't want to just knock it around the back. He's not just going to sit back. Uh, he's going to be he, he's going to be proactive, and that's that's what we've seen so far this tournament is the proactive players. Like we said in the last match, the proactive players are, are now starting to, to come to the fore. They're starting to see rewards for how they're playing. So I'm hoping we see positivity rewarded yet again. Uba. On the other side, yeah. it doesn't matter who it is. I just want positivity rewarded. So you feel like you've been positive this no. week, and now you no, no, should no. be rewarded. I'm not being rewarded. The only reward I've gotten is, well, I get to talk about FIFA for a living, and I get to sit <laughs> beside Scott Cole. And I got fuss. So I got actually, yeah, yeah, a lot you're, of rewards. You're doing you know all what? right. I, think I, was, I was trying to talk my way out of that one, but no, I'm having a great time. They talk about counting your blessings. I think, I think that's what you just went through right now. That's what we did. Number 38 on PlayStation 4 is Umut 157. Is the youngster from Brazil, Zazinho. And here we go. And we're seeing a, a return of the Allisons in goal. I'm not going to pull a Kev even Egan and yell out return of the Mac, but uh, <laughs> return of the Allisons in goal. And we saw him break out a fantastic assist today against Chew Boys United and the celebration too, man. If, if you guys didn't catch that, even if you're not a Liverpool fan, it was fun to watch. I am not a Liverpool fan, but that, that assist and celebration was fantastic today. Nothing like all the buildup getting ready for this second semifinal for us to catch a pause right off the break, but here we go. R9 will start it off for Uba. Kits consist of the white shirts, red shorts, and then Zazinho going true grayscale on the other side. And you can see in his tactics immediately, Umut's going over low ball side. Zazinho's going over low ball side. We've seen a lot of that this weekend. Uh, we've seen a lot of, of one or two depth, but overloading the ball side has seemed to be very, very effective because those big switches haven't always worked out. Defenses are so, so compact. It's very difficult to break them down unless you're working those quick combinations or taking a chance and dumping it into the corner. Maldini out to the left side. There's Rude Hullet. Robertson gets another touch. Boy, the virtual supporters almost know this is a big match. Yeah. They are loud and proud early. This is very patient from Zizinho, but you can see the pace that he puts on his passes. He wants to swing it side by side very quickly, see what kind of openings do open up for him. Well, the first build up for Zizinho spoiled as Ubut will have a chance. He's going deep. I was just about to say we're going to see some patience from Umu, but then I love to see it. Dumps it in the corner, finds Ronaldo. I'm fine with that. Here's Eusebio, working on the 18, gets back to Ronaldo. Here's R9, Alasco through. One of the rare players using uh, Eusebio from the start is Umut. You can't, you can't argue against it, that 93 Eusebio, but don't see it too, too often from the very beginning. Alexander Arnold gets up to Ronaldo. Umut, he's the one trying to set the pace early. And Carlos Alberto gives it right back to Mbappe. Yeah, and both of these guys are being very positive from the start. Trying to push it forward. 
Just roll the dice a little bit. So this is a very promising opening. Umut ever so close to that monitor. He is all up on. If he sneezes, his nose is going into the screen. My mom would say, you're going to hurt your eyes. <laughs> Conte. My mom is still amazed that I make a living off video <laughs> games, so it's crazy. Call <laughs> it. Back to Conte. Good ball roll there. This possession has certainly been a patient one. And R9, Vieira doing a great job getting a leg in front of that one. Really, really good spell of possession there from Amu. Creates what looked like it would have been a clear cut chance, but really good defending from. We're seeing a lot more guys using that that Vieira. Zezinho's using him in field, Umut using him in the back, but just a great item, whether it's the 88 or the 91. So strong, so good at reading the game. Such a good tackler. And there were times, you and I have talked about it, where certainly Ronaldo there, I'm talking about CR7. I would have been tempted to put it on his left foot and yeah. let it go, but that extra pass is the reason they're playing and we're watching. <laughs> are, you, do you, are you saying they're better than this? <laughs> you think they're better than me? <laughs> you think you're better than me? <laughs> Outside of Trent Alexander Arnold and the flag's up. We're pointing at you, Ronaldo. It's moved a little bit early there. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Andrew Robertson just tucks in a little bit, just steps up, lets him run offside. Very easy work. That thing with that 97 pace, it's just very hard to control yeah. how those runs are going to turn out. And a blink there, six, seven yards past. Not much fun to defend. Robertson. Over to Vieira. Hello. Back to Vieira. Here's a run, and that's well out of reach. Scything ball through, looking for that run, but just couldn't quite catch up to it. Skids off the surface and out. Small frame of Messi was sort of hidden inside the area. Yeah. Tell you what, I've been a little surprised to see that him going so direct, but pleasantly surprised by Umut. He's tried that deep ball into the corner, dumping in there, in there looking for the wingers, looking for... The Mbappes and Ronaldos of the world. And it's a, we've seen that over and over this tournament. It can be a solid tactic to keep possession, keep possession, and then try and exploit those corners, especially when they're playing overload. Mbappe trying to break free for Umut. Good strength there. The strength and ba balance of this team of the year, Mbappe, has been something to see this tournament. What, at what point are we going to actually talk about Germany versus Br Brazil here? Uh, should we say seven? <laughs> should, shouldn't say anything about that, should we? All the Brazilians in the chat are going to get upset at us. That was surprising day to say the least. Vieira. There he is again. Well read from Vieira. Stepping in there to win it off R9. Ronaldo, who again has been such a menace today for everyone across the board. Or sorry, across the tournament. Not just today. The virtual pitch has certainly been dominated by the the Dutch. The question is, will it be Zizinho from Brazil or Uma from Germany facing off against Tom representing the United Kingdom? That's what's at stake. PlayStation 4. He's got his Brazilian Carlos Alberto out there on the right. O Capital, who's just been a mainstay for a lot of these teams. It's him and Trent Alexander-Arnold, they're both, like we said, can't go wrong with either. By the way, the Xbox final coming up next. When we started the day, we thought we'd see Dasari or maybe in Rasik. No, they've both gone home. So that'll be a good one coming up next. We'll have a brand new champion on that side as well. And just one shot in that first 45 minutes. But the pass accuracy has been fantastic. That is one thing to say about this matchup so far. <laughs> I appreciate your positive. A lot, of, a lot of silver linings coming in. I'm trying to find the positives in this, man. Trying to 
All the chat's probably like, come on, man. Dude, no. But 96 pass accuracy for Umut, 92 for Zizinho. They're keeping the ball really well. I, but you can't say it's been cagey. They're n neither one of them are really sitting back. It's just with these team of the year items, with these prime <laughs> icons, with the defensive firepower that's out there, it's just so, so hard to create chances. Well, you got to beat two world-class CDMs before you even get there. Run through the wall of Hullet and Vieira before you get to the wall of Maldini and or Vieira and team of the year Van Dyke. It's just rude. Hullet, there is Vieira. He finds Ronaldo, powers his way toward the byline to try to pass it back for Messi, but... Decent little spell there. Yeah, it wasn't Vieira a clear to pass. Ronaldo, a little scoop turn, trying to find his way down the left side. See if we see a little bit more of that flair, those dribbling skills from Zizinho. And Ronaldo gets free, and when he's free, bad things happen. For once, I said something, and then I was proven right. And it, it, it went with what I was saying. Zizinho gets the ball on the feet of R9 Ronaldo on the edge of that area. Little fake shot to find some space. And then, again, he's never missing from there. That's Virgil van Dijk, team of the year Virgil van Dijk. This is left grasping at air. Very good goal from Zizinho. R9, a different class. It feels like he's got 50% of the entire goals of this weekend. Maybe more. It's crazy. Absolutely balling. So 1 0, Zazinho. Gets it outside to Trent Alexander Arnold. I think this is a point in the day where I petitioned the EA for them to drop a prime icon Ronaldo into my account again. <laughs> I am. The time of the day? Unashamed. Or. It's, uh, I feel like it's the every, day hour, on the it's hour. every yeah. hour on the hour. I'm just, I'm just gonna keep begging. I like I have no shame here. You say be up. It's at uh, R9. He's trying to do the same, but Maldini able to get a boot in there. Tries a little elastico. Maldini bullies him off it. That's good defending. Just a little poke tackle to break it free. And now Zazinho, some pace coming back the other way. Starting to see Zazinho grow into confidence a little bit. He's defending well. He's attacking well. His possession's been solid, it, intelligent. Playing with intent. Hull it with it now for Uma. Trailing by a goal. And the equalizer will have to wait one more time. Need to see something a little bit different from Uma. A little bit of creativity. Can he find a combination in midfield? Is it going to take a sub? Because right now it's not quite working for him. Carlos Alberto here for Zinho, gets it to Vieira. Zinho looking very, very comfortable out there. Rude Hullet now on the ball. Gets it back. Try to squeeze it in there to R9. Who'd just waiting around the 12-yard mark. The French card cheater, N'Golo Conte, stepping in there to win that one. <laughs> Ronaldo. And again, that's just not good enough from Umut there. In, in the final third, he's finally worked his way down there. Just could not find a pass with Ronaldo. He's giving it away in a cheap area. Back in possession. But can he find something special to break Zizinho down, who's defended so well so far? Under 20 left for Uba here in leg one. Just trying to find his way through. That Zazinho just back themselves up in that final third. Eusebio now does have some space. And Zazinho, again, is defending so, so well. He's player switching, getting pressure on the ball with midfielders, with attackers, cutting down those spaces, making Umut go where he wants him to go. He just can't find any space in the area. And there's there's Messi making an interception. Well, for a moment, you thought they had Robertson cut off there, and it is a turnover. 
R9 all the way across to Mbappe. Touched by Hollett. There's Conte. He wants nothing to do with it. Back to Eusebio. R9 now. And the ball drag did not work out. A little bit better there from a little bit of creativity. Quick passing in the final third. But again, Cezinho with the defending. R9 just starting to be a nuisance. Pressuring along that back line. Defending hasn't really been our focal point with Zizinho over this weekend, but in this match, he is defending so, so well. Just able to switch players and get into those gaps. Cut off dangerous areas. He won't let him break the lines. Won't let him play forward. He's just, Umut is just forced to play sideways, hoping for an opening. How accurate and how quick he's passing it. It's almost impossible to mark. He's done well to just, even in, in patient possession, just move it quickly, side to side. Umut hasn't quite been able to find that pace of passing to open up Zizinho in the same way, but Zizinho just so, so patient. And you know he has that creativity in the final third for a little scoop turn, a little ball roll to do something saucy and open this up. But right now, he's just completely content to keep hold of it. He's going to hold it until we find out what the added time is. He wants that final possession. If he could get that elusive second goal, that would be huge going into the second leg. And here we go. Two minutes of added time. Yeah, and he will play for that final shot. Try to get that last opportunity and not give him a chance to rebut. R9. And there's 10 minutes of wasted time. And Sabio. I didn't hate that effort <laughs> right there. A little scoop up and into the through ball for Ronaldo. And it looked like it might have a chance of working out there. Someone just picked up a yellow card at the end of that half. I'm not quite sure who it was, but it might have been Rude Hullett. It doesn't matter. Leg one is in 1 0. And it's in favor of Zazinho. The Brazilian, who, as we mentioned before, came here to Atlanta with the original ranking of 157. It's certainly bound to go up. Yeah, definitely going to go up. And you got to say he deserved that match. Only one shot created, but he had much better of the possession, just looked the calmer, the more in control of the two in that match. So he's got to feel good, good <laughs> going into that second half of this aggregate of this tie. Get some last minute instructions. He's got the lead on aggregate here. And for a guy that's been very successful these last three days, he looks like he's kind of going through it right now. He's, he's, he's mentally exhausted. Got a little anguish on his face, yeah. you know? It looks, like it, <laughs> it looks like everything is hard, but he's not playing like everything is hard. <laughs> Just pure concentration on the face of the man from Brazil. But that's been his, how he's been all weekend, just kind of impassive, very chill. Like, we may see some emotion at the end of this one, but he's been very, very calm, even killed. I mean, all the matches, all the work that you put in just up to this very moment to have a chance to face Tom on the other side. who was unbeaten to this point, and he's sitting in the final waiting to see if it's going to be Umut or is it going to be Zazinho. Yeah, we'll see if we see a little bit of a different approach from Umu in this match. If he tries to stick with the very, very patient, measured, slow buildup. We saw a couple dump balls into the corner, but I feel like we need to see him try and take a couple more chances to to really see have a chance of sneaking past Zizinho here. That one depth, the drop back. Well, he's going two depth. Getting a little aggressive. Getting aggressive with that two depth. That's uh, <laughs> doing a lot there, bud, aren't you? <laughs> so a lot of changes for Zazinho, but he's ready to go, as well as Umad. It certainly doesn't feel that way, but we're, it's just a one-goal difference. It didn't. It didn't feel like that at all. It just felt like it was all Zazinho's match. Um, no real danger at all from Umut there. Just I want to see him create more chances, create chances, period. I want to see both guys be positive, but 
We need more chance creation here. It's been very, very stoic. Here's our nine Ooh, inside the 18. A little pop up still had possession for a moment before Holt was able to come down and help out Virgil Van Dyke. Look like a little reverse elastico there from R9 Phenomeno Ronaldo. Just bundled off the ball a little bit, gets a little bump enough for him to lose possession. Well, remember in the opening leg, it was Umut. He was the one setting the pace. But in that final 60, 70 minutes or so, it was Zazinho. Yeah, he found his rhythm really well. Um, Early on in this one, it looks like he might still have kept that rhythm. He, he just right now, it kind of feels like he has the edge here. He's playing the way he wants to play. He's kind of dictating the pace of the game now. And there's our nine. Ronaldo dispossessed by Ruud Hullet. There's no chance to counter. Not at all. If you haven't watched much FIFA 20 at the foot champions cup level you know the counters are few and far between especially with the pace of those defenders Robertson bit, now a little bit better spell of possession here from Amut. hasn't really had a chance to get hold of it in this game see if he can work something here Just more and more, I believe that that Conte is not the answer. Especially if you're struggling with creativity. It, and that's what Umut is struggling with. He cannot find any sort of combinations or pull off any sort of dribbling to wriggle free, to create an opening. And I think something, it, it's obviously extremely early in the second match, but I think something might have to change at halftime or around the 60-minute mark. I can't remember who he's got coming off the bench, but it's got KDB maybe written all over it. KDB or a Messi, someone like that to come off and unlock this. Come on, sorry, and unlock this defense. Ubat once again. Feels like we uh, we haven't seen a Zizu in in months. No, that that play is over. Guys, tried him. He's new <laughs> to this edition. Brand new icon this year. Brand new prime icon for uh, for this tournament specifically, but just my, not quite the answer for a lot of these guys. We saw a few guys trying him out in the early stages, but it doesn't look like he is their guy. Here's all it now. That is, uh, that is the guy. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to find him anywhere else but on the pitch. Here's our nine. That's a lot of space. Played it back for Messi. Tried to get a little fancy there and back heel it to Messi when he could have had a pop from that near post. Maybe the, he felt like the angle was too tight to squeeze it by this team of the year, Allison. So he went for the, the, the extra pass. But again, Zazinho is he's been the one creating the chances. I needed to find some way to at least put it on Messi's left foot. Didn't happen. Ubut retains possession here with a throw. And Mbappe will just take it away. And that's just really what's unfair is when you have CR7 and Mbappe just tracking back. <laughs> Not a lot of space to operate. Using all that pace to just come back and harass defenders. And that's a fantastic ball. And it's messy. Can he pass it across the six yard box? No. Big block from Umut there using Patrick Vieira sliding over to challenge that Messi. A second goal in this aggregate would have been, I think, devastating for Umut, for Umut so far. He's, He's just, just waiting for Zazino to make a mistake, and he hasn't. Yeah. Zazino's been calm, very composed, just playing intelligently, not making any mistakes. And He's fine just sitting back. Using that two depth, just keep him in in front of the ball. Sorry, behind the ball. Picks yeah, up a we're foul have there a with situation Messi. here. Yeah, Messi came out. Good call for the foul. And now here's a set piece from 26. Looked a little soft to me, if you ask me, Scott Cole. 
Ronaldo lays it back for Mbappe. Zinho's pressure is just so, so quick. You see, as soon as... And wow. what a fantastic string of events there as R9 in the 39th minute of leg two has brought us back to equal. A little bit against the run of play. I was just going to say Zinho's closing down everything so, so quickly, but one chance. That's all it takes. That is all it takes. Zinho's defense breaks down a little bit. Quick combination, and then it's, again, R9. Who else? Who else is going to be? Certainly don't go direct on those set pieces, but no. it's just enough of a different look to get your guys in position and just two or three wonderful touches that leads to that goal. And the FIFA gods love this. You've been playing poorly, and then don't go down, don't, don't get uh, punished for it, and then find something a little bit sweaty. They love it. And R9 is trying to just get a couple steps closer before pulling the trigger. Pulled and off the level. Elastico there and nearly creating an opening. Zizinho looks stressed now. Yeah, Uma, this needs to be the final possession of the half for sure. Yeah. All that good work from Zizinho erased with one moment, and we've all been there. We've dominated someone in FIFA and <laughs> had, a, had a goal just fly in and you almost break a controller, but is going to go into this half, I think, maybe a little bit rattled. Uh, I, I think that might have gotten in his head a little bit. Well, you play so well, and then it's just one quick opportunity. A shot for each, but it's Umut is the one that finds himself true, and he has brought us back level one apiece here in leg two. With really, uh, you know, he had 56% of the possession in that first half. Much better. Uh, you know, able to hold it, but is the foul by Messi? Well, that's the only foul we had in the first half. Was that the difference? It had to be because Umut was keeping hold of the ball, but he just wasn't creating any dangerous opportunities. Zizinho had a little bit, a tiny bit less, but he was probing, trying to find those opportunities. A uh, couple shots blocked or picked off the toe of a Ronaldo in the area. He's definitely had the better of play, but that's not how this game works. <laughs> you got to tuck those chances away. Aldini couldn't get it past Hullet. And now Uma with an opportunity. That goal's got to give him a lot of confidence, especially when you're not playing particularly well and you find a way to equalize like that. Always makes you feel a little bit better about yourself. And it's a mental game. We know it's a mental game. Here's Ronaldo. Gets it to R9. There's Eusebio. Well defended from Maldini there. Had a chance to drag it back. And this is a long run that Trent Alexander-Arnold is able to hold off. Good pace and strength from TAA there. Chasing team of the year Mbappe down. Not an easy thing to do. Conte. Get another touch. Feels like Moot's confidence has just grown tenfold in this second half. Dominating possession again. Now, sorry, I don't want to say again. He is now dominating possession. Probing, trying to find that opening. Got Zizinho sucking his cheeks in, looking a little bit stressed over here. Conte off to hull it. Here's Eusebio, gets it to R9. And he'll retreat for the moment. Patience there to turn around and bring it back out to Conte. But it looked like there might have been an opening for a little shot there. But again, extreme patience from Amu. Zizinho finally back on the ball. We'll see what he can create. Oh, yeah. It's been a lot of our... Weekend here in Atlanta, hoping for one or two goals. Sometimes we're just hoping for one or two shots. Big facts, as the kids say. <laughs> they don't say drop it like it's hot. <laughs> 
I uh, I went all of yesterday without saying it, but it's squeaky bum time, baby. <laughs> I had to make a comp- conscious decision because first day I couldn't stop saying. It. You kinda, <laughs> yeah, you kind of went in. I did, I did. And you just gotta you gotta be honest with yourself and be like, hey man, you're being annoying right now. <laughs> <laughs> You got to bring, I mean, Offord is just sitting on the bench there at 48 overall. Not sure why he doesn't bring him in, but. If you need a difference maker, you, you're going to go with a Messi, a Croy for an Offord. Come on. Who do you think is going to make the, the breakthrough here? Well, will it be one of these super subs that avoid extra time? And starting to see that Croy for a little bit more often in the latter stages, huh? Coming off the bench, trying to make a trying to make a difference he's got that five star five star the vaunted five star skills five star weak foot Neymar in there as well I think you're just you know, searching for someone that can get the ball on their feet and turn yeah turn and fire the agility of that Neymar the agility of a, a Cruyff on the other side just the dribbling ability in it again that five star weak foot is such a magical thing in this game weak foot is so important and Alexander Arnold read that one all the way. Fierre will switch the pitch. Uma gets it off to haul it. I like what I've seen from Uma in the second half. Been a lot more positive, a lot more proactive. He's been on the front foot looking to find these openings. Just playing a really, really intelligent game, a really measured game. Robertson to Neymar. It's Ronaldo now. He's just really, really stepped it up so much more. Sadio Mane dispossessed there by Robertson. And here comes Azinho. Can he grab any momentum? It has been awfully flat after that equalizer. It kind of looked like it took all his energy out of him. Pricked his balloon a little bit. He's to find some little moment creativity just stay patient as well not get frustrated and make a foolish mistake Neymar pretty through ball it's messy and Lionel laid it set the table but CR7 just couldn't get to it before Allison scooped it up yeah there's a heart and mouth moment for a Zinho there you see team of the year Virgil van Dijk just let that run but he clearly got a big shout from Allison You certainly just haven't seen that pass work. It would have been a rarity for sure if he could have poked it in there. Yeah. And there's just, there's Rude Hullet just quietly everywhere, out muscling Johan Cruyff. Not even a question that he's going to win that ball. Conte with a lack of length <laughs> on himself. Going to ground, just trying to reach that pass. And I, I think he's got to take a page as a Zeno's playbook here and hold on to this. He gives it away. He did not listen to you. And so now Zazino will probably have the latch ditch effort here to maybe pull this out in regular time. Yeah. He's going to play, try and be patient, play for that last shot like we've seen so many do today and over this weekend. can be devastating you think there's two minutes of stoppage time on the clock it gets to like <laughs> the opponents in your area it gets to like three minutes and there's nothing you can do about it you know it's you know it's going to be a goal surprise surprise two minutes of added time and I told you it's two man who has got to find himself going forward here ball's got to get into that attacking third and then time just will never run out if it's an attacking third <laughs> and as long as you don't go backwards and Ronaldo gets a piece of it, forces it over the touchline. And that's going to take us to some extra time here in leg two with a spot in the final. First, Fnatic Tom out there to grasp. Can we talk about that uh, Johan Cruyff flow, though? My man looks like a, uh, a 2004 lacrosse player killing it out there with the flow. Hair just running in the wind. Could he be one of the substitutes to maybe make a difference in this next 30 minutes haven't seen many goals in extra time but we did have two in a broadcast we did yesterday yeah it's mostly been settled in pins 
here two, this weekend. In two very different situations with these players right now, Umut's just focused, not even talking to his coach, Zizinho, in deep discussion with his coach over there because I feel like he's the one that needs to make the changes. He's the one that needs to make the adjustments. First leg, it was all him. Probably a little bit unfortunate to maybe see uh, himself even here, but you cannot say Umut hasn't deserved it in this second match. Skips it across. There's Alberto. Finds Maltini. And we've certainly seen white gloves be used in extra time. Nobody wants to be the one that makes a mistake. And Ronaldo couldn't track back, and we got a foul. Yeah, I was going to say that. That's definitely a foul. And unfortunately, he tries to hold it with Hullet and play for that free kick right at the edge of the area. But the referee says, nah, we good, bro. Keep playing. And continue on. That's that's pretty frustrating for a player. You think you're going to get a really, really dangerous free kick and you just stop, but you don't get that call. In there to R9. Try to put it on the right boot. There's team of the year, Virgil van Dijk again. He just makes you think twice about everything you're going to do because he closes that space so, so quickly. And that's when we see him goals is... When it's been a Vieira or a Maldini instead of Virgil van Dijk forced to be the one that marks the man. Yeah, There's, your ball movement has to be good enough to draw Virgil van Dijk out and set up a one-on-one -on -one or a 2v1 situation against one of those quote-unquote, or I mean, they're all weaker center backs, but it's not like a Maldini or a, a Vieira. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something to scoff at. <laughs> Conte. It across to Robertson. It's just in this extra time, just when you're talking about two 15 minute segments, you maybe get a build up or two with this meta. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting too because it, it's basically if you have the ball first in that extra time period, you're probably just going to dominate position, maybe create a chance. No one wants to make a mistake, no one wants to overextend themselves to try and win it. And when you virtually have zero restarts in play, that's what you get. A quick 15, one more half of extra time to go. And dare we say, settle it on pins. We've seen it before. We will uh, very likely see it again. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody can do it, it's certainly one of these two guys. Although they've been very patient in this match, they have the ability to both strike quick. Yeah, and we're not going to see any more R9 magic from Zizinho. He's just tossed on Eusebio for him. Again, a fantastic player in his own right, but that R9 Ronaldo has just been incredible all weekend. Was a little bit gassed. Felt like he needed some added energy from Eusebio, who, again, does have that five-star weak foot, four-star skills as well. There's Sadio. Play the advantage and no. We're going to put it on the spot. Not the penalty spot, but 33 yards out. Straight away, this will indubitably not be going on target. Yeah, you, you, you'll put the house on no one shooting from that distance or just about any time from a direct free kick in this match, but in, the, in this tournament, but especially definitely not from there. It'd have to be in the waning seconds for sure. Up the left side. It's messy. He's going to chase it down. I just want to see someone recreate Roberto Carlos in the, uh, <laughs> I believe it was 97, right before the 98 World Cup against France. That free kick was. There's absurd. a drag Woo back, and it's a left boot from Ronaldo that finally takes us away from level. And now it's 2 1 in favor of the German. Sheesh, that is fantastic. That's a beautiful goal from Mumut. Beautiful little piece of skill, the drag back from Ronaldo to get it on that five-star weak foot, his left foot, and slam it into the top corner past Allison. Patrick Vieira can't do a thing about it. Allison can't do a thing about it. And Zizinho has it's it's just been all Umut in the second leg. He's he's it felt like he was measuring Zizinho in the first one, kind of a, a rope a dope, a little rope a dope there, just hanging out against the ropes, letting Zizinho punch, letting him punch, and now he's countering. He's playing so, so intelligently, so patiently, and he's taking some chances. Uh, he's gone forward a bit more, kept possession a bit more, and now that is, that's just a fantastic goal to open it for him. 
Well, here we go. Mom spaghetti time. <laughs> Zazinho trailing by a goal. He's conceded two here in leg number two. After pretty much dominating the first leg. Yeah, and I said you could see the body language. Again, I'm, I'm harping on this over and over, but Zizinho just looked like he was off his game. Umut just chilling. Felt like he was okay with the way he was playing. We'll see if Zizinho in this last three minutes can pull something off, but Umut has reacted so well to what Zizinho's thrown at him. When Umut is about 12 inches away from the monitor, you know he's locked in. He's not missing any details. Laser focused. And he can just run this out. All he has to do is just not lose possession. Going to go backwards here almost certainly. Won't be a lot of added time, too. Minutes. That can be dangerous. It's about the maximum you see. Here's one last shot for Zazinho. This is the one, Scott Cole. Now or never. Hull it. Gets it outside. That's Ronaldo. Trying to go to the byline. And Trent Alexander Arnold, I think, has conceded a corner. You got to go on. This is the opportunity, and Allison punches it away. Big punch from Allison there. And you can see the emotion from Umut. A fantastically played second leg for him. Well, Zeno can't believe it, but Umut is going to be facing Tom in the final. It was slow at times, but when the drama hit, it came in bunches. Absolutely, and the first leg was just Zizinho punching and punching and punching, and Umut just kind of sitting back feeling him out, not conceding anything big, not doing anything to, to get himself out of his game. And he was just so calm in that second leg, so measured. He fully deserves this one. Well, Zazino's run is coming to a close. He's sick about it. He doesn't even want no, no to show gap. some love. You hate to see it. He's over there with his mates. He's made a good run, but it's Umut's time. He'll be in the final. He'll be facing Tom. We got the Xbox final coming on the other side. Still plenty of matches to go here from Atlanta.
Welcome back inside our E-League studios, folks. Congratulations, Umut, rocking on to the PS4 final. Kev alongside Chewboy and Mike LaBelle. Umut, he's been flying under the radar. Not anymore. He's standing by with Chilean. Umut, you told me you started esports this year. You were bounced out in the Swiss stage in Bucharest. Here you are. You find yourself in the PS4 final. What does it mean? I am very surprised that I yet, uh, that I know in the final, and it's an amazing feel for me. Can you tell me about your emotions during that match? You were so animated, and I could also see the nerves sometimes. Yeah, I was 1-0 uh, behind. I, I thought that uh, this game is over, but um, in the second game, I can't uh, make the 1-1, one -one and in the overtime, I can uh, make another goal, and it was amazing for me. What's going to be the key in the next game? You have hashtag Tom coming up. What's going to be your focus tactically? Uh, I think I would um, play very different. Like uh, my last game, it's very uh, important to save everything hinten, uh, behind. Yeah. 800 global series points, $15,000. How much fun are you having? I have much fun. It's uh, incredible for me and for my whole family. They all uh, look at home my games all right let's give them a shout out give them a message the people at home yeah i love you all at hamburg <laughs> you can say it in german too yeah ich grüße alle leute die aus hamburg kommen alle die mich supporten danke an alle danke schön danke Yeah, a little German. Kev. love it love it love it great stuff wonderful message umo congratulations to you folks we can't like turn away from umo right now he just knows how to get it done. This was the action. Umut for the second straight game, getting it done in the second leg. That's where he gets his business done. Otherwise, it was Zazinho here breaking the deadlock. Oh, what a beautiful finish as well. Fake shot opens up the, the complete pitch in terms of picking out where you want to go. Near post, far post, you name it. Now, Umut, like I said, he is just does the basic things right. A few mistakes. He's just one of those players that makes... So few mistakes that you can't find a chink in his armor, and it goes to extra time. He's got that R, uh, sorry, that Ronaldo, that CR7 with the drag oh. back. Weak foot finish to the top bins. That's actually pretty rare because Ronaldo's four star weak foot, even with the team of the year, is not the best. So great finish there for Fumi. This is what the stories are all about. Yeah. Talk about guys that you don't know much about. We haven't seen them in tournaments, and they're making a run. He's in the finals. He really decides his own destiny, he controls everything. These are kind of the storylines and the narratives to really build out with competitive FIFA. It certainly has been the championship for the underdog. We will see a fresh face lift the trophy in, what, three hours from now, you would think, there or thereabouts. What a goal that was for Umut to clinch it. Mike, can you break it down for us? Yeah, we're not done. We're going to see that goal once again. We don't necessarily uh, see the across the body used that often. And it's all about putting your players in a position that they're going to be able to exceed. When he gets the ball here with Ronaldo, many of us at home might know, okay, there could be a drag back coming here. That's something that, that we've seen. But the reason the drag back is important and it's one of the most commonly used skills, not only is it effective, but in this area, it really opens up the, the virtual pitch. And then he has to make a decision, option A or option B, one and two in this case. Most people are going to hit this on the near post. However, we've also seen a lot of posts hit on the near post. Uh, so they haven't gone in for him. And that's why I think you see the drag back and then he goes across the body, takes a chance, bet on yourself, 113th minute. Well, he just punishes the back of the net. Was there any doubt? You're enjoying that toy over there, aren't you? Yeah. Telestration machine, you're loving it. Can I take this home with me? <laughs> Confirmation to Tom to take on E-League. E-League, you hear me? England yeah. against Germany. Aaron's asking PS4 for foot phone. items. I want, I want the whole, whole shebang here. It's not happening, Mike. It's not happening. Let's talk a little Tom against Umut. I mean, who's who's the favorite uh, pe here? Penalties. <laughs> That's all I'll say. It's probably going to go to penalties. I mean, you know, they're going to probably sit back. Umo even said in his uh, interview that he's going to be more defensive. Tom likes to keep possession. And so I think we're going to be in for a long one there in that match. I don't always agree with Chu, but this is going to be the moment of the day. I, I think this is also heading the penalty kicks. Wow. Wow. All right, we've got an Xbox final to look forward to next here on the show. Oli Lito to take on Diogo. Where do we go with this one? Two class acts. We'll do battle next.
Super Bowl. Ivan has been on FaceTime with the young man here today. That's pretty cool to see, isn't it? Yeah, Ivan and company. A lot of people are always wondering, yeah. well, who's watching all these events? Is it just going to be uh, kids at home or guys that are diehard into the FIFA community? And the answer is no. You got your family, you got your friends. You talk about it, you call, of course, you got everybody else that's playing online. You got your casuals, your intermediate, your advanced players. All encompassing. Welcome back, by the way. Kev alongside you and Mike. Oli Lito. A giant killer, absolute giant killer. Diogo, the exact same way. This a reminder of what's at stake for both these guys here set to do battle. First place, $50,000 in the grand final, 2,000 global series points for first and second. Here we are already at the third and fourth place, so they've secured 15,000 as well as 800 global series points already. Olilito, Diogo. Olilito's already taken out Gorilla. He's taken out Inrasic, the champion from stage two. Diogo has taken out MS Dosari, a world champion. This is phenomenal. It's only a $15,000 game, just saying. <laughs> That's a nice little touch, right? Everybody's pockets get a little bit bigger. Sure. How do you see it going? Um, you know, something I noticed from Olilito's gameplay is um, he gave the ball away a lot in both his uh, two previous games. Um, and I think Diogo with his attacking style would be able to take advantage of that because again, Diogo is very, very unpredictable. Um, so hopefully Alizito is able to keep possession a bit more because I think maybe he got a bit nervous, but he gave the ball away a lot against, you know, um, his, yeah, his two previous opponents and they were not able to capitalize, but someone like Diogo uh, can capitalize. So he needs to be wary of that. We've also talked about both these players being giant killers, but I also want to bring up different types of gameplay because olito has been able to beat Gorilla, who's more of your attack first yeah. player for the most part. He'd like to score goals. And then he also beat someone like Enrasic, who's the opposite. And the reason that Enrasic has seen so many different penalty kick disputes is because he's holding the ball very careful, very calculated, doesn't take a lot of chances. So it's going to be interesting to see how he combats Diogo's style because Diogo is going to go attack. Every Diogo game we've talked about, goals are scored, mostly for Diogo. So you hear the wise words of Chu and Mike. Who do you think will take it? Use the Twitch extension. Let us know right now. I want to score. Chu, I'm going to guess you're going Diogo. Yeah, I'm going to go Diogo. I'm going to go 5-2. Five 5-2, two. Five two. wow. Okay. Ivan's not going to like that. Like, <laughs> you got to go with uh, <laughs> uh, Alilito. Hold on. I'm going the other way. But I just want to <laughs> say that I think Diogo's the favorite in this matchup. Okay? But I, th I think that... If I'm Ollie in this position, I'm saying, man, versus Enrasic, I got it done in penalties. It wasn't my best gameplay. I get a second chance. And I could double my money. And I got Yvonne and company watching me. What's up? I'm here for the big show. What's the story with his accent, the way it changes sometimes when he's... When Ooh, he's this guy? Yeah. It's, it, it, it I goes don't full know, Texas. Man. I don't goes know. back to his roots. I've never had a Texas accent, really. <laughs> I mean, I'll take it if I have it. I Give just us a score, I Mike. It. I think it's got to stay low scoring, I think, for Ollie here. I, I'm going to go 3-2. Three, three, Close game. All right, I'm going to do my best, Mike LaBelle. What's up, Scott Cole? <laughs> What's up, Aaron West? You guys take it away. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. Oh. Is that oh. how I sound? I'd rather have you Aaron. Is that what it like is? Bro, I'll tell you what it is. is when you start feeling yourself, you start getting into that swagger. You talk yeah, like exactly. this. You, get them with, you hit them with the rhythm. That's what it is. I'm Mike LaBelle. <laughs> <laughs> Give you some of that flow. <laughs> that good premium quality FIFA <laughs> material. Oh, God. I feel like he's trying to pull up with the candy paint whip. Like, oh. I'm going to hit him with it. I'm like LaBelle, What's up, baby? my beautiful people? That would be very southern of me if I had the, the candy whip that we are pulling up with to talk about FIFA. <laughs> hey, I'm the FIFA analyst. I probably wouldn't be like that. A little more swag. We got a massive match, guys. That's huge. You talk about a Xbox final. You, know, you already know what's at stake as far as the points, the money, uh, but, you know, the pride of just winning your first one between Diogo and then you got Ollie. Yeah, and both of these guys have been so, so exciting throughout the tournament. Diogo just smashing goals by people. We've seen him beat the big, big names, especially with MS Dasari, probably the biggest one. Like, he's showed so much confidence. He's young. He's not afraid of anyone. We've seen him with the sprinkling in the Portuguese, the bombos. He's, he, and actually, <laughs> if we're going to be honest, like, it, it really surprised me. I did not know he had an English accent. I thought he was yeah, Portuguese. Yeah, that threw me off. It threw, threw me, me off so off. much. But he's been balling this tournament. Uh, the chat agrees. They're going with Diogo. But this one's going to be a good one. 70% of the chat agree with you as we get this thing on as the Xbox final. Two legs to the side. Who is going to be the champ? I'm also very happy that uh, Mike LaBelle asked us to, to go in on him because I was just going to start making fun of how he talks in me, like <laughs> anyway, but then he just requested it, which is fantastic for me. I was going to hit Kevin back with a 
what's the crack or what <laughs> what a crack. What's the crack? <laughs> and just off the rip. Holy Lito with our nine is going to go short on the corner. And it will be interesting for Diogo. How does he respond when he's the favorite? He's been a buzzsaw. He's been a giant slayer. Yeah, yeah. And we've talked about the positivity from both of these guys. They want to take it to you. And you're seeing in the first minutes, Olalito pushing forward, trying to create opportunities early. Fierro. Trent Alexander Arnold. It's all the characters that you at least assume deserve to be out there, especially for a final. That we've seen for the last three days. Got a little bit of variation for Diogo as well. He's one of the few players that uses that Sambrota as a, an outside back. He's tossed that team of the year Kevin De Bruyne into his midfield as well, who with a shadow has. I think he's playing on seven Kim, but he's still 95 pace, 90 every single thing else. Crazy aggression, str strength, shooting, passing. High, high, five-star, four-star. Just this is me raving about Kevin De Bruyne. <laughs> oh, you saw Mbappe almost get behind there for Diogo. He's also you mentioned John Luca. We yeah, don't yeah. see a lot of them. Don't see him too much, but you. I mean, it's very. It's. I understand perfectly why you'd use him. Great strength, great defender, four-star skills, which is uncommon for a fullback. Five-star weak foot, so you could play him either side. Just a very, very versatile player, strong player. And he's using that Schmeichel in goal as well. He's got a high medium trade, so we'll see how that factors in as we move along. KDB to Messi. Hull it. Feels like there's a lot of space right now. Yep. It's, oh, it's, it's fairly open. Seems fairly open. Both of these guys, again, so, so attacking, so positive in their play. On the other side, Alelito's rocking with that Matthias Delict alongside Virgil van Dyke. We've seen it a few times through this weekend. Again, there are so many fantastic options for these guys to choose from. It's just a, a pick your poison, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Virgil van Dyke winning the ball high up. The pitch. <laughs> he is way out there. Didn't know if he had taken over central defensive mid. Team of the year, Van Dyke can do whatever he wants. Our nine will lay it back to you, Sabio. Little Brazilian Dante. Portuguese connection. Pape now for Olilito. And Rude Hullet. Just doing Rude Hullet things. Being rude. Just quietly cleaning up everything. That's what we've seen this weekend. Just you're never really gonna like it doesn't seem seem quote unquote dominating, but he's just always winning the ball, always playing perfect passes. He's just there, always there. Portugal going up against Sweden here. And it's good to see the national kits be represented. I don't know if that's a precursor to them thinking about the E-World Cup coming up later this year. Never too late to start preparing. Here's a through ball, Eusebio. Working toward the end line and just couldn't keep possession. Tried a little fake shot and just a little bit of a nudge to get him off his balance. Mbappe. The pace of this game has been very, very quick. The, both of them are trying to push the ball quickly. There's a reason they're here in the final. And Conte. And those that sit back, although it's effective, and it certainly does increase your chances of winning, but all you need to make is just one mistake, and sometimes it's hard to ever recover from that when your mindset is not on the attack. Yeah, and it, it has been interesting. It, you try to play very, very patiently. You can't get punished if you're just keeping it in the back. One of those defenders who's not quite as great on the ball, if you're just holding it and holding it, and you, they can advance, the opposition can advance that line a bit higher and put some pressure on these defenders. Sabio maybe turned the wrong way. Good tackle there from Vieira, but yeah, if you can get that, these attackers a bit higher and put pressure on those defenders who aren't the greatest dribblers, maybe force a turnover at midfield, a quick counter. Yeah, why do you turn back with Sabia though? Five star weak foot, put it on your left and grip it and rip it. Conte. Making me want to uh, play golf right now, Scott Cole. <laughs> I haven't played in like five, six years, but maybe I'll just play like, Tiger Woods or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
certainly been a while since Tiger Woods has had an iteration of any sort of video game. Yeah. On the feet of Ronaldo. Put it outside of the left side at Root Hullet. Take it away one more time. I feel like they actually don't need us here. They could have just recorded a soundboard of us saying, <laughs> well, Hull it once again with a <laughs> dispossession. There's, there's Rude Hullet <laughs> winning the ball. There's Virgil van Dyke making the tackle. There's R9 scoring a goal. Yeah, that would have been about 90% <laughs> of what we've seen this week. The stars have certainly come out to play. Yeah. Mbappe Broncos. running down the wing. <laughs> CR7 <laughs> running down the wing. <laughs> And a lot of it's just been having that. You got to have that mental fortitude to just lock in for two full 90 minute sessions. Yeah, it's so much of this is about mental preparation, staying calm, being strong mentally. You see, will he let it go this time? Oh, my I goodness. I mean, why have him out there? Oh, my goodness. If you ain't going to go at it, you have to take a dig from there. That is the first big, big mistake I think we've seen today. Eusebio wide open in the area. A perfect opportunity to have a hit. He's inside the area. He's on his right foot. Where else is he going? Have a dig, my son. I think Ali's, Ali Lito's definitely regretting that one right now. Uh, he's going to want that one back. Knock him down at a super sub if you're not going to use him off the rip. Don't want to be too critical. We are still looking for that ever-elusive first goal here in the final for Xbox. That's one of those where you feel it's a little bit of finals nerves, just overthinking everything a little bit. You got to think this is early in the tournament. If you're playing foot champs on your couch, he's taking that every single time. Maybe these team of the year items are just making you think twice. The pressure, the moment gets to you a little bit, but that's a huge opportunity missed by Alito there. He had two looks inside the 18 with Eusebio. Trust and, the and boy. The latter was better than the, the first. Boy. Yeah. So I'm saying if you're not going to use them, get them out of there. Plenty of other options if you're not going to shoot with Eusebio. <laughs> Messi, now he'll, he knows what to do with it. Fantastic effort from Messi. Allison clawing across the face of his goal to get a fingertip to that. Conte's got some space. There's some transition here for Ole Lito. He's got a lot of great supporters back in Sweden watching, rooting them on, sending those good vibes. Think Zlatan's watching? If, if he was watching, he would have wished he'd <laughs> shot with Eusebio there. Zlatan, we've been taking shots from midfield. Here's Messi Oof. right in front of Matthias de Linden. It's a fantastic little slip ball through from Messi to R9. Ronaldo has it on his left foot, but can't find that far post. A good opportunity for Diogo there, who seems like he's growing in this game a little bit more. That that miss for or not even an attempt from Alalito has to give him confidence. Ronaldo this time he's got R9 on a breakaway. Clean look, clean finish. And there's the first one here in the Xbox final. It's Olalito striding first. There are two things you can guarantee in this tournament. I'm going to say something, and it's going to be immediately proven wrong. And the second thing is that Ronaldo is going to score. Uh, Diogo had the opportunity on the other end, and then Olalito just comes right back down. Bang on the counter. Great ball roll from Ronaldo to open up that space. Great composure, and R9 is not missing today. We take it all back, Alilito. You do your thing. You take the shots when you're ready to take them. Don't listen to us. We are fools. And the virtual supporters giving them the business here early. Come up on an hour gone by. Yeah, they don't understand. It's two legs. <laughs> we'll give them a break. <laughs> it's like me going through KFC. There's bound to be another leg. <laughs> Ronaldo. <laughs> Off to Kevin De Bruyne. And Messi will just slam it right into Virgil van Dijk. Will scoop turn, for, turn from Kevin De Bruyne, opened up some space, thought there was an opportunity for Messi to have a shot on his right foot, takes an extra touch, takes another one and gets it taken off him. And R9 will just kind of dribble it out, string it toward the touchline. Yeah. 
All Alito's got a hawk on R9, tiny bit of a pace boost, a little bit of physicality and shooting boost. We've seen, I think, throughout the weekend, a lot of marksmen, a lot of hawk. Just he needs a tiny bit of physicality bump, but otherwise, he's a perfect human. Here he is. And Virgil van Dijk said, that's enough of that. Well done from Diogo to step in there with Virgil van Dijk against the most dangerous man on the pitch. Diogo has been a buzzsaw. Put up a cornucopia of goals. Against MS Desari. And he's going to be making a change as. Getting near that. Waning minutes of this first leg. Yeah, he just sighed through MS Desari. Not able to find any openings here today. All Alito's defended pretty well I would have to say so hard nine from outside the box and when you don't defend well you still got Allison back there to rescue you and you don't hate that shot because you know at the very least you're probably going to at least get a corner yeah you get a stoppage in play which allows you to make some not only substitutes but some tactical changes can probably count on at most two hands the number of distance shots we've seen this weekend but I, I really respect Diogo's uh Decision to take a pop from there. Why not have a chance? Why not? See the subs. Sadio Mane will make his way on for Olilito. Got a, a another Johan Cruyff sighting. Uh, starting to see him a lot more towards the latter stages. Guys going to trust a, another yet another one of the Dutchmen. We've seen Sadio Mane be extremely effective off the bench in the, this throughout this tournament. So we'll see if that little spark, that little energy boost he gives on the wing does anything for the Swede. Continue to get keepers that are the same color of the opposite kit. <laughs> it's always a fun thing. <laughs> Mbappe. Conte just steps right in. Good tackle from Conte. That's why he's out there. There's a reason. He might not offer the most attacking thrust, but he is absolutely a menace on the defensive side of the ball. Robertson. Especially against guys like Messi or Mbappe. Yeah. Now the Ronaldos, that's a tough task for Conte. A little bit more difficult for him to outmuscle them, but he just nicks in. So good at winning the ball, so good at reading play. Such a good tackler just overall. Hull it. Get it across to Conte. Now it's Ronaldo to Cruyff. Cruyff with a little bit of space, the shot. It's great work from Alalito. Getting the ball into Cruyff's feet. Couple skill moves, little step over, little fake shot to find some space, but a good save from Schmeichel to his left. There's the service, and for the first time, Virgil van Dijk gets a header to it, but well off the mark. Almost saw yet another rare headed goal. We would have seen the third one of this entire tournament. Yeah, if that one goes in, just pack it up. Yeah. Give the guy the trophy. That's one of those prop bets that gets you like $100,000. <laughs> Sabio, we've only seen two. So many matches, but it's been the ground game. We haven't seen a lot of aerial play. Zambrata. To De Jong. Frankie De Jong in for uh, Diogo now. Seen a lot of guys trust that Frankie De Jong. Tyus to let able to get it out of there. And again, man, these the Dutch contingent is so, so strong in FIFA 20. They're everywhere. You've got De Jong, Hullet, Van Dyke, De Ligt, Van der Sar, Johan Cruyff. Incredible if you're a fan of the orange. You're going to see Ellie, uh, Ali, excuse me, play it around the back end here because he is waiting for that 90. Absolutely no reason or desire to take any chances or really even go forward. Oh, a little bit of a weird ball there. <laughs> Cruyff. Well, Aaron on the through ball is looking for R9. So the question is, can Diogo find a build up here? Got to go quickly. Got to keep it going forward. Mbappe. Just a little turn back. That's enough. Yeah, just. Carlos Alberto getting that shoulder in, making Mbappe turn backwards, and that's literally all you need. If it's in that last throws of the match, just make them turn backwards in their own attacking third or just period, and you're good to go. But a good first leg from Alalito. Frustrated Diogo a little bit. 
the end of the final whistle. We got a 1-0 favor of the Swede over the man from Portugal. But as you said, there's still one leg to go here to find out who's going to be the champion on Xbox for stage three here in Atlanta. Diogo's looking a little lonely over there, too. Can we get a coach? He's All he's got is be, be, be easy, easy on his side. Yeah. Man. But to be fair, <laughs> if you got be easy on your side, what more do you need? Well, it's been working for him. Been able to get to this point. But see, is there one more goal in him? Did he use them all up against Asari? See if he's got any magic left in those SCP hands. Doesn't seem to be rattled. No, just feels like he just wants this game to start. <laughs> hey, you can't wait just to get back out there and take a rip at it. And the crazy thing is how many goals... Could Ole Lito actually have? There was a couple chances from the top of the box that he did not take. Yeah, he was he was possessing really well, really intelligently, playing patiently, creating. He created a couple very, very good chances, just a little bit reticent to pull that trigger to have a dig. But now that he's gotten his first leg out of the way, he's gotten the first win. Maybe he'll be a little bit more apt to take a shot, maybe a little bit more confident in his own abilities and the abilities of those guys out there. Messi. Lino with a couple step overs. But all for show. A little old school phenomenal Ronaldo. Triple uh, scissor step overs out there. And Lino back on the ball. Has it again. He's been a focal point for sure. And this time he'll skip. Good ball to break Lino the line. Lino get it to our nine. And Messi still on it. Oh. Still has it. Lays it off. And what a save. And that's what we didn't really see any of from Diogo in the first half. A little bit of creativity. Beating men off the dribble. Finding those combination plays. And Allison with a big save to keep it at nil-nil. Now you and I have been doing a lot of matches over on the PlayStation 4 side. So we haven't had the honor of calling a Diogo match, but it seems like he needs to know that going direct from that corner is certainly against the meta that we've seen so far. Yeah. And Ronaldo will chase it down. And Dyke turns it away quickly. That is a positive sign from Diogo, though. Seems like that spark might be there. He's playing quickly, playing well on the attacking side of the ball so far. All very early in this game, obviously, but I like what I've seen early from him. Hull it. A couple touches. Gets it off to Messi. Yeah. Little one two gets spoiled. Oof, that's going to be a yellow card for Rude Hullet, who's been really good for Diogo in these early stages, breaking the lines, finding his striker's feet. Now he's going to have to play about 75 minutes with the yellow <laughs> until it goes out. Uh, find many yellow cards to be rude, but especially that one. Hull it. You can see the vision there. Had Ronaldo streaking in, trying to find a, some space behind Vieira, but Virgil van Dijk and, and his partner cleaned that one up very well. Good defending from Diogo. That back line has broke the link time and time again. Yeah. One nil in favor of Olilito. And boy, we got guys going everywhere. And there's the yellow. There is that yellow we mentioned. It's a booking for Hullet. If the bodies hit the floor, Scott Cole. 20 gone by. KDB, he'll find himself laid out on the pitch. I think somebody maybe sprinkled some ice chips out there. What's going on? Pitch is frozen over. It is chilly in Atlanta. But maybe more windy than most. Good little turn there from KDB. Unfortunately, couldn't find the through ball from Messi to Mbappe, but Diogo seems like he's starting to grow into this game. He's finding some, he's able to break the lines a couple times with Rude Hullet, finding some uh, openings with Messi, with Kevin De Bruyne. A encouraging start from the Portuguese. Eusebio now, he'll play it back and we'll have a build up here for Ali. Beat Gorilla to get here. Diego 
took care of Desari, but remember Oli Lito started the day taken down in our seven and maybe the most entertaining pins that we've seen in the history of competitive FIFA play. That was so, so stressful. <laughs> so, so stressful. He was down 3-0 on pins. Diogo with an opportunity, full stretch for Allison. And again, he's growing into this match, finding these quick combinations. Little one-two at the edge of the area, but just couldn't find the power to get to find that top corner of Allison's net. But Diogo is he's growing. He's he's gaining confidence. He's playing the game he wants to play. KDB with a rare shot. And he finishes it. The man from Belgium. Makes me feel good when I'm right. I'm not often right, but again, you could feel it. Diogo was growing into this game from the start, from the very early stages. He was able, I think the biggest thing that he's been able to do in this match, as opposed to the last match, is find, be able to break the lines with, with Kevin De Bruyne, who is such a good passer, with Rude Hullet, finding those, the feet of his attackers, working those little one-twos right around the area, getting those little heel-to-heels, little ball rolls to create space for the shot. And there is KDB on that left foot, that five-star weak foot. Not too much Allison's going to do about that. Game well, on, we've gone baby. back level here on aggregate. You talked about the building up, the building up, and finally bursting his way through onto the scene. And that's the reason he's got De Bruyne out there. Yeah, and uh, the momentum looks like it's on Diogo's side. Uh, this little pause actually might work well, well for Alilito. He gets a chance to, to holler at his coach for a little bit, but so far this one's been all Diogo, just about all Diogo. Back to play we go. After that goal in the 33rd minute. We've got the Swede using the Portuguese Eusebio, and the Portuguese man is not have, does not have him in his lineup. Is that disrespectful? Maybe he's just too young to, to respect Eusebio like that. He's got Ronaldo, so, so maybe he can uh, slide by with that. But no Eusebio. What's going on, bud? I got to have the Black Panther somewhere. <laughs> he's just lurking on the bench, ready to come out and pounce. R9. There is Eusebio. Good step by Vieira. Fantastic challenge from Vieira there, standing strong, getting a toe in there. Eusebio was certainly the difference man a year ago in FIFA 19. He was insane in FIFA 19. He was terrifying. <laughs> but R9's been the one to be the staple. Here's a run from Messi. Can he get past Van Dyke? No. Good defending from Van Dyke. Not committing to any foul, not making any fouls, any foolish decisions, just standing strong and nicking it off his foot. Zambrotta's been very, very good today down that wing. Strong defensively. Hasn't given away any passes on the offensive side of the ball. Just very steady. It's all Diogo right now. He's got the possession, and he's got a one-goal league here in leg two. So we're equalized on aggregate. Messi, maybe one touch too many. Yeah, but he's starting to feel himself. He's feeling his combinations. He's feeling his passing play. It, he understands that he's, he's started to find a way past Alilito's defenses. He's got a beat on him right now. And that will take us to halftime. It's been an entertaining one, and the youngster, Diogo, battling back into this one. Yeah, and this is a great time for halftime to come for Alilito, a terrible time for halftime to come for <laughs> Diogo because he had all the momentum. That's when you just hope the whistle never, never comes so you can sneak a second goal in there maybe. But now Alilito can get on the ball, be patient, find some space into this game, and take Diogo a little bit out of it. And I'm not sure if I was Ollie there that I wouldn't have taken the maximum time needed for halftime. Coming out of the dugout a little early. Frustrate him a little bit. The other team's out on the pitch already. You're still in the tunnel <laughs> chilling. <laughs> Are these guys coming out? We gonna play today or what? Y'all still playing faith? <laughs> <laughs> We've had a good time so far, if you can't tell. We've been having a blast. A lot on the line for these two players.
time starting to run out. Yeah. This is much better from Alilito. As I say that, he gives the ball away, but a better spell of possession. Trying to work these one twos yet again. Trying to open up Diogo, who in the first half of this second leg was the danger man the entire way. Hey, your biggest hope is just when you finally find your way through that Virgil van Dyke is not the one standing there. Yeah. You got to pray. You just got to pray. This is the way, Scott Cole. Was that? Yeah, this is the way. <laughs> I have spoken. <laughs> Leave a few goals for the foundlings. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> Robertson up the side. There's Ronaldo and there Virgil van Dijk will yet again. come way up. Way, way up. Mbappe. I think the story of this game so far for Diogo has been Kevin De Bruyne in midfield. He's been extremely influential. He's been able to find a couple, break the lines a couple times with Rude Hullet, but De Bruyne has been everywhere, both on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. It looks like uh, Diogo at this 60-minute mark does want to make a change. It's going to have to be a super sub to come on and make a difference. Maybe uh, this is where we'll see Eusebio. Alberto coming way up from right back, yeah. trying to press the issue and ends up giving it away. But look at how quickly... Both teams get behind the ball when the ball is given away. We've seen this all weekend, especially with these prime icon and team of the year items. The defending is just so good. Their awareness, their positioning. As soon as you lose the ball, they're in behind. So it's just so difficult to break people down. With that drop back tactic, I mean, they just, they just turn and run. Yeah, it's just going to It takes something special to beat them because as soon as you lose the ball, every single defender is turning around, head down, straight back to their goal. Now you got to beat four, five, six, seven guys. Over the top. Good ball into the area. Ronaldo were center and someone's got to take a shot. Conte. There is that Alilito patience, we'll call it, but it, it, I, I'm not really going to fault him there. It looked like it was, you couldn't really find an opening or find a shot. He'd beaten Allison, goalkeeper was out, but just could not find any opening there. But maybe you get a deflection. Maybe yeah. there's a rebound to be had. He has not wanted to take those chances today, and it, it could hurt him in the long run. Had a couple foxes in the box just waiting for a chance to maybe poach one. Yeah. Doesn't pull the trigger. Still level. Slide that through. There it is. Boy, there's some room, and it was bending. You could see Ronaldo wide open on the right there. Couldn't, tr could not find that top corner with the outside of his right boot. Just bending past. Allison looks over his right shoulder. Like, oh goodness, what, what are we get ourselves into? <laughs> Look at those substitutes. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> A decent bench. <laughs> A decent bench. He's not playing around. There's no 53 yeah. overall sitting down there. And we are gonna see for the first time I think today we're going to see that Zizou come off the bench he's not going to risk a second yellow card with Rude Hullet especially in these important areas we got to make some important tackles so he's going to bring in 96 Zizou prime icon Zinedine Zidane five star five star the only weakness is that medium medium see if that comes into play in this final 15 or so in regular time. I say the only weakness, but I have heard from a couple people who have tried him out. He may feel a little bit clunky there in midfield, which is why a couple players have chosen otherwise, but I'd still be happy with Prime Icon as Don. <laughs> Good roll to Sandy Omania. Here's Cruyff. Fantastic ball from Cruyff. He comes on. Boy. And like, it just seems like a today, lot of space. Alilito is just yeah. overthinking every little thing. He's got space. He turns, gives it to a player in a worse area just the the attacking build up for him today has just not been fluid at all it's just a little bit janky just feels stilted and stiff overthinking it maybe the pressure of this final is getting to him he's can't handle it quite right now well kdb has got the lone goal for diogo of course that you don't even have to guess who Oli Lito used to cash in early in leg one. Are you telling me Ronaldo scored again? <laughs> R9 with a rare goal. <laughs> Matthias will swing it around. There's Robertson. 
I'm talking some basketball terms here. I feel like this is a two possession game here, Scott Cole. <laughs> Switch it to football. We're down in the red zone. My friend in Germany asked me not to. <laughs> I'm gonna not to speak like a basketball announcer, <laughs> not to be true to your own self. Where's the shot clock at? I got no idea. <laughs> Hold it. But yeah, we, we are seeing that patience from Ali Lito. Ronaldo. Maybe again, one move too many. Could have had a dig. Goes for the chop, the Ronaldo chop, the CR7 chop. I'm sorry. Even though uh, R9 Ronaldo was doing that before, we knew who CR7 was. Just I want to say that. I admit, you got you to have a lot of respect for what Allison's doing back there in goal. So Oof. it's just not as easy. This might be that red. That might be a red card. This might be red. It's a yellow. Oh, so close coming from behind, especially this late in the match. We could have very easily seen big Virgil van Dijk sent off for that. I wouldn't have made any arguments to get in uh, against it, and I don't think he would have either. Absolutely cleaning. I believe Johan Cruyff from the back. I'm not sure who that was, but he uh, he's going to feel that in the morning. The That's the tackle the virtual you morning. see in pro clubs when you're down three goals late. <laughs> Very risky. Just will find himself the book of the yellow. Once again, why doesn't he take the shot with CR7? Hold it. It's just one pass too many for Alelito. One pass, one move. Just taking a little bit too long to get that shot off and not taking his chances. He's just leaving Diogo in this match, and you feel like he, he could, he, I feel like in, over these two legs, four, five, six times where we could have seen a shot where he just didn't pull the trigger. He looks frustrated, frustrated with himself, his decision-making, but he's, got, he's still got a chance to pull this one out. He's just got to stay calm and take his chances. That's the biggest thing. The chances are there. You just have to take them. Be confident in yourself. Come on, Frankie Dion, you got it. It's like me and my wife going for dinner. She needs a little extra time. <laughs> you got like one of these every game <laughs> that you're just sitting on, holding it down like a fat kid on a blanket. Oh, man. <laughs> one of my favorite that I haven't broke out is got to take care of the onion or it'll make you cry. And there's certainly been a lot of chains and possession in this one. I don't even, I think it's the act, exact opposite of that for Alelito right now. He's trying to take care of it too much. Just Save let you. it ride, my dude. Almost fighting through the challenge, almost riding it. Extra time is where we're at. We've had a lot of fun this week. I hope you have as well. Appreciate you tuning in on a championship Sunday. This is the final for Xbox. 15 grand on the line. Got Sadio Mane out on the pitch now for uh, Olilito. Maybe he'll be the one to find this opening. Cruyff turns to the left, and Olilito did not hesitate that time. How many times have you seen Cruyff make a turn and fire? It's the 97th minute for Olilito. And there is Sadio Mane with some of his first involvement in this game. Finds Johan Cruyff, uses his body well to turn and shield. Defender absolutely cannot do anything about it without fouling him. Hits it with that five-star left foot, that weak foot, and it's a beautiful goal from Alilito. Finally taking the chances that he's created, having that confidence to have a dig and be calm on the ball. It's a good goal, and I would say 100% deserves from Alilito. Well, he made the substitution. Johan Cruyff came on, and he made a difference. And the lead is now one. Two subs for him making that difference. Mane to Cruyff. Uh, and that's good coaching right there. Very well said, partner. Two to one. And Olito has earned back possession once again. And the Sadio Mane already has just been a menace down this right side. Gianluca Zambrota may have a little bit of fatigue setting into those bones, but a fresh Sadio Mane is going to hurt anyone. It doesn't matter what fullback it is. He's just such a, a, a problem for outside backs. I think Ollie's playing well here. No reason to force the issue. No, and the only issue he was having today was his finishing. He's creating the chances. He's playing well defensively. He's been very compact, very good on the, the other side of the ball. But he wasn't taking his chances, and now he's he's fixed that, and he's in the business. You got to go direct here. Going to put the shortest player on the pitch on the ball, smart man. What we see is Zizou 98 
Yeah. The header. He's hanging in there. Well, it is a high ball. And it's loose in the box, but Allison able to jump on it. Poorly timed with CR7. It wasn't on red, but it was surely flashing yellow. Yeah, yeah. 15 more minutes for Ali Lito to keep doing what he's been doing. Can Diogo on the other side find a little spark of magic? We haven't seen what we saw from him in the first match. But Ali Lito just doing the right things now. Finally finishing. He knows he's just a few moments away from maybe seeing his name on the trophy. Is this his moment for a little silverware here in stage three? Yeah, and I think we're going to see... Uh, Diogo go constant pressure. He's got to get bodies around the ball. He's got to get higher up the pitch, force the turnover in a dangerous area because he needs that goal. It's been some up and downs in this one for sure. Bad news for Diogo. Possession will start with Olilito. Yeah. What a run by Sadio Mane. All the way to the end line. Plays it back, but Conte. Doing a great job filling the lane. Fantastic defending, fantastic positioning there from Conte. Thought it might be a bang-bang goal right off the, the kickoff for Alilito. And he's just going to try and dominate possession in this last 10 minutes. Not making mistakes. The other thing is if you get that extra goal, that could be the difference. That's a lot of room for Lionel. Zidane! Good work from Lionel Messi. Thought there might be an opportunity for a shot, but he's found Zidane. But he could not push that one a little bit wider, find that top corner from the top of the D. Zidane does have 92 shot before you even think about putting Kim Styles on him. Yeah. Not a bad effort. Not a bad effort, just needed a little bit more placement, a little better placement. Yeah, Allison didn't have to work that much. Did Very manageable. And brought up. It's a design. He'll get it back. Jean Luca Good put it on the ground. He saved there. You. Good patient combination play from Diogo right now. Back heel. And Matthias DeLitt, the youngster, will step in. Very big challenge there from DeLitt. Important challenge. Another important challenge from Conte as well. That one was huge. That might have been the one. That might have been the most important challenge of the match. Smartly doesn't play it ahead of Ronaldo, which R9 looked like he might have been a step off. Yeah, she can try and frustrate him here, keep the ball. And there's only one minute of extra time now. That is a big surprise. You wait until they make you throw it in. Yeah. And he's just going to pop it up. Oli Lito. He's played so well here in Atlanta, Georgia, stateside for the man from Sweden. He is your Xbox winner came in ranked well down the list but we saw some giants get slayed and now he is at the top of the mountain well deserved from alalito created those chances finally tucked one again away and congratulations congratulations to the boy from sweden we still got a few more matches but we're gonna celebrate this with olilito on the other side
Massive congratulations, Oli Lido. It's starting to heat up here in our E-League studios. Now watch the biggest matches from every stage of the EA Sports FIFA 20 Global Series. That's Friday nights on TBS broadcast premiere. Stage one will air next Friday, January 24th at midnight. Do not miss that. Some social media rolling through here. Oli Lido, the king. Love it. How about this? You national hero, what a player. Sweden absolutely loves you. Oh, that's that's go to guy. I think I, I, I beat his club in pro clubs. <laughs> he was L not too happy. Little subtle <laughs> flex there, Chew. <laughs> Let's go. Ah. Final for Oli Lido. And there you go. Homer Simpson with the Swedish flag. <laughs> the Swedish hero, Oli Lido. Love that. The Viking chant and clap. Fair play. Massive support for Oli Lido. And rightly so. He continues to shine here. Welcome back in, Kev, alongside Chu and Mike. The man that's heading to the cross console final. The champion, Oli Lido, standing by with you. Oli, you were watching those messages roll in. What's your reaction when you see that? I'm speechless. Um, to be in the final and win the final versus uh, a good friend in Diogo. Um, like, it's a good one for sure, but like, I feel for, for him also. A fantastic player and a great guy outside, so I'm very happy. And it was a close, close game. How were you able to get the edge? Um, I felt like I was close to score, like sometimes, but like didn't shoot. And in the end, like my coach Martin told me that, like, do a fake shot and then shoot, and yeah, you will probably score. And Johan Croy from the Netherlands did, so I'm very happy. <laughs> the first Swede in the Champions Cup final. What does that mean to you? Uh, me so much, uh, like writing history, uh, it's always fun and to do it as a Swede, I'm, like I'm still speechless, I'm so happy. All right, you have the championship coming up, it's a cross console. How comfortable are you in PS4? Uh, comfortable, to be honest. I'm often playing 60 games a weekend, so 30 games on Xbox and 30 games on PS4. So the controller, I think, isn't the issue. It's maybe like a bit faster gameplay on PS4 in my opinion, but I'm feeling confident. All right, good. And all that confidence, you have a message for the people at home? Yeah, thanks to all of you Swedes who are following this and also to my family who has been up and yeah, stayed and watched and also to my dad who is here. All right, those people are staying up late, so they don't need to translate. You can say it in Swedish too. Vamos, soya! <laughs> Love it. All right, congratulations. Thank you so much. Guys. Huge Vamos congrats soya. to Oli Lido. I got that one, right? Do it again. Vamos soya! Not bad at all. Not bad right. at all. I mean, the Swedish people will let me know. Chu, you were pinpointing Diogo's ability to score, the free-flowing attack. Oli Lido did something right. He came away 1-0 winner after the first leg as we show you how the Swedish superstar got it done here against the Portuguese. What did he do to nullify Diogo here, too, Chu? Well, he really did everything well. Uh, outside of, and I'm going to use Aaron's word here, he said his finishing at times, or his decision making in the final third was a little bit janky. And I would agree with that, even though it looks beautiful to start out there, send a message. Now, let me, uh, maybe uh, the preferred terminology, he was a little hesitant. He looked for the extra step, the extra skill move, trying to make it picture perfect when he was already in that premium location. I mean, we were all jumping around uh, at moments saying, shoot, shoot, you gotta shoot. It's like watching Arsenal on the Arsene Wenger. <laughs> Why you gotta be like that, man? <laughs> There's some gooners watching this, and you see their KDB five-star week for the team of the year. Item is a pretty good item, let's just say. And Ali Lido did a great job of just kind of really, you know, FIFA 20, it's really just about clogging the middle. And Ali Lido is very good at concentrating and when he needs to clog the middle of that, um, you know, the little area right in front of the penalty uh, line. Um, he was just very concentrated doing that, and that's just the key. I think that's what is setting him apart right now. And I feel like both players had a chance to win this game, mainly because Alida wasn't finishing that well, so he left the door wide open. Diogo with the comeback, and then he had a couple chances in the box, and it all comes down to these very fine details, the small margins in FIFA 20. But Alida had just enough. Yeah, it was so even. Look at some of the numbers from this contest between Alida and Diogo. But ultimately, Mike LaBelle, on the day that maybe Barcelona fans are happy to see their philosophy be implemented under Kike Setien, the man that started it all, Cruyff, was the one that scored the winner in brilliant fashion as well. Can you break this one down? Yeah, we're, we're looking at kind of letting the play develop. I feel like Ali Lido did a really good job of this. I mean, we talked a little bit about his finishing, and we keep stressing the importance of having a five-star weak foot. So when we're looking at letting the play develop, you've got Ronaldo here, you got a freeze frame. At this point, Ali Lido is like, I need support. I also need to buy some time. So we're going to have Mane who cuts into this space. And the reason that's important, he's going to lay it off, but it's more so so Johan Cruyff 
can get himself onside, and then he can deliver the goods. And he gets it on that left foot. Once again, we were talking about having a five-star weak foot means both feet are equal in FIFA, and he's always going to convert from here. Very rare do you see any of the attacking players beat Virgil van Dijk in a 50-50 as well. He turns him on that left foot, back of the net, and he's into the final. He's booked his place, Oli Lido, in the cross console final. One place remains. Who will face the Swede? Is it Tom or will it be Umut? We will decide next. You're very welcome back. A few tweets rolling in before this PS4 final. A lot of support out there for Tom. Go hashtag Tom. There you see it again now, brother. Umut takes it. Support for both sides. Love it. This one will absolutely be fire. Nightwatch. Looking out for you, Tom, as well. And last one coming in from Tex. Tex is hiding back there. There's that kind of a creepy angle, Tex, but we love it. Creeper. Saying, come on, Tom. Peeping over there from side. Tom has got a support system here in the studio, doesn't he? He's got about 10 coaches. Yeah, he's got all the English lads behind him, and uh, always good to have some good support. 
And the reason that's important, because you're yeah. seeing this online, there's thousands and thousands of people watching, yeah. but in studio, you don't necessarily have that presence, unless you're Tom, where he has five, six guys over there, all English guys, giving him some cheers, some applause, that you can hear them throughout the match, so it doesn't feel like you're isolated on the stage as much. Real quick question on uh, Umut, if I can. I asked you before this, this last round about who you think will win it. You actually said Umut, Ju, because he's not making any mistakes. Yeah, and this is a game of who can make the most mistakes. You know, you capitalize on a mistake and, like, you just don't see too many from him, you know? Um, Tom definitely has to get ahead. If Tom wants to go through, yeah. he has to go ahead first. That's very important because if he goes behind, I don't think <laughs> I can see him <laughs> talking behind me. But it's like if Umut goes a you know, Umut already said, yo, I'm going to play defensive and I don't make, make mistakes. So if I go ahead, man, you are not going to get through. So I want to see Tom take the lead first. Hey, you got to play your game. You Let us know yeah. who you think. I said, you have, will to, go, take you have this to go take the lead first. That's what I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Obvious Chew here. Who do you think will take it? Will this man Tom or Umu take it? Use the Twitch extension. Let us know your thoughts. Chew, we'll go to you first then on a scoreline. Um, I won't lie to you. All my predictions have gone wrong, I think, Just today. Spit it out, Chew. What have you got? So I'm going to reverse jinx. I'm going to say Umu because I want to see Tom in the final. Okay. I think Tom's going to do it. I think he's going to stay undefeated. He's got the support crew here. It feels like a home field advantage. I think he's going to get the job done. He was a little bit unlucky finishing in the last game. I think he's going to be luckier this time around. All right, here we go. PS4 final. Tom Umut, let's join the casters now for this one. Chris Tun, Dan Gaskin, take it away, guys. Thank you very much, boys. That was... Uh a very biased prediction <laughs> going on in the desk. There's, there's some favoritism, but uh, yes, uh -oh. Dan, a tweet from yourself here. Talking about bias, uh, gets to a PS4 final, gives a great interview and claps back at Mike LaBelle. That's all I want to see from any players. Yeah. I'm not going to be biased. I'm going to be impartial, yeah, of well, course. We don't care how good you are at FIFA, to it, be fair. It doesn't matter if you're English, <laughs> if you're German. I just want to see a good game of FIFA, and I think we're going to have that with these two because their defensive records have been phenomenal, but they've also been smashing in goals. They have played each other already in this tournament. It was during the Swiss phase. They did draw 1-1, and it was Tom who won that one on penalties. And of course, he's undefeated, is Tom, and Umut's only loss is against Tom in that penalty shootout. Well, let's see if a second time is a charm, but here comes the fan voting results. Tom, with 81%, no surprise to see that they're very much a fan favorite at home. And clearly with you guys in the chat. Here we go, the PlayStation Finals for Champs Cup number three here in Atlanta. Who will go on into the final? And I think this is a big one for these PlayStation players Huge. because historically, yeah. Xbox players have always won Foot Champions Cups. We've never seen a PlayStation winner, but I really feel like there is something in the air here in Atlanta that might offer this opportunity for our first ever PlayStation Foot Champions overall winner but we have to get there first. One of these players has to take down the other. I did speak to Tom briefly. I said, have you actually played Uma apart from this tournament? They matched in qualifiers for this tournament as well. It was only Swiss again, but that was an Uma victory. So they're one and one, technically. We'll see who can take each other down though in this final. Well, here we go. And I, you know, I think going back to your point of this is really the time for a PlayStation player to win a cross-console final. I, that's no disrespect to Aldi Leto. I think, you know, these two guys are very, very solid and have been all weekend long. I said Tom is undefeated. Going in against Oli in that Xbox final, Oli is, is a guy who, you know, doesn't have much experience at all. And both these guys will fancy themselves. But here comes Tom on the first attack. Mbappe down this left-hand side. It's a good ball in for Ronaldo. And good defending in the end. Umit will scramble this one away. The pressure is still on, though. But well worked. Good. You can already see under pressure. the attacking intention from Tom as well, just trying to get in the face of him. And I think you've got to, when you look at his defensive record, he's only conceded nine goals in eight games. He really has been troublesome for a lot of players at this tournament. They haven't been able to break him down. So if Tom can get that early goal, open those floodgates, maybe we can see a few smashed past him, but Kante doing the work at the back. Yeah, Kante getting in the way of that. The agility helping him get across, but maybe just ran into him a little bit easily, but... Tom with the initial attacks, and you know, Umut has come out and said, you know, I'm, I'm going to play defensively. It's the way that the meta is, and it is probably the best way to play, if you like. Of course, if you love goals, maybe not, but you know, honestly, when you look at some of the players that have been successful this weekend, though, it is the guys who have been willing to go forward. That. I guess a good thing for Tom is, even though he has been going forward, his defensive record isn't bad either. He's only conceded 12 goals in the eight games, so it's not like he's been letting any slip past him. 
That's why I am expecting more of a low-scoring game if we don't see an early goal. Oh, there's an opportunity for one there. Bertolt van Dijk will get in the whip. Tom will survive that attack. Mbappe down the left now. Just recycling the player once again. Alexander Arnold now down this right hand side. Looking for options in the middle. Not sending anyone too far forward here yet, Tom. Quite a conservative attack so far. And you know, typically when we're watching Diogo play or other guys who have been scoring a lot of goals, you can see the players sprinting forward at will. Right now, though, just a slow, methodical build up. Kind of has to with the 11 men behind the ball for Uma at the yep. moment, and he's just switching between fullbacks and slowly but surely creeping up the pitch and seeing what's available, where those central defensive midfielders are running to and where those wingers are available as well as Kante somehow muscles Mbappe off the ball legally. It does mean that Uma regains possession and it's the counter-attack is where he's going to be scary. Tom has to be well aware of these over-the-top through balls. But he tracks that run nicely with Bacci Vieira. Ball will find its way to Uma's feet via Hollett. That's finally found its way out to Mbappe and KG start for both these two, 20 minutes in, only one real chance and that landed at Tom's feet early on. Couldn't quite get the ball out of the feet though. Oh, now, now into Eusebio, trying to craft something here, Kante. Into the feet of CR7, good feet as well, the drag back comes through. Andrew Robertson, well aware what's going on there. Frankie Dion will get this one out as well, getting in front of Hullet. Do you think counter-attacking is crucial for Tom here because he, there's been occasions there in that instance where Uman is sending a couple of men forward they get past the midfield line so they get past Kante they get past the Hullet after Uman has already attacked do you think Tom should be quicker on that counter attack or do you think he's right to gain possession and try and break him down I don't think he needs it as of yet I think it's definitely going to be a viable option as the game goes a little bit further if he's not able to just successfully break him down slowly but surely I'm sure it's something he's going to be considering a little bit later in the game, he might up his depth a little bit just to try and win the ball back in more dangerous areas so that he can hit quicker on the counter-attack. But for now, there's no rush. Plenty of time to work with with Tom. And even though he does prefer an, an attacking style, he knows what he's going up against Anuma. He would have been watching the other games. He will know the defensive record of the German opposite him. And historically, English players don't do well against German players in penalties, as we saw with Tex and Nicholas Razek. Ronaldo not able to quite receive that ball. Hull, it will get in the way. I think that's just a worldwide thing, Dan. It is, yep. That's what I was alluding to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just Captain Obvious today. Hull, it now in the middle of the park for Umut. And a slow build-up will be the name of the game for him. Nelly and interception coming in there for CR7. Standard teams for these two. I've seen Kante a little bit more today. I haven't seen too much of him during the weekend. But he, uh, he is becoming a... A little bit more of a staple for some of these guys now, and I think it is, as you said, the pace and the agility of them just helps as a defender, especially with how strong jockeying is in this game. It's just, it makes sense, however. On the other side of things for Tom, obviously Hullet, the ever-present wall in the centre of midfield. Partnered alongside Dion, so a little bit more creativity there. Yeah, when you get Kante on the edge of the box, you're very unlikely to be hitting them. Even though he does have the capabilities and the statistics, you'd feel a little bit more comfortable doing so with Dion. So it is more of an attacking intention, that's for sure. Oh, Hullet having to be careful here. That will draw a foul. If he will play on, no. And Umut will get this one out via Kante. Here we go. Can he get anything going down this right-hand side? I would like to see Umut try and flex his muscles a little bit. And here we go. Ball over the top towards Cristiano Ronaldo. Hasn't able to get the ball under control before the bounce. And as such, we will have a throw in. Eusebio now back to Cristiano Ronaldo and a little bit of pressure building for Umut here. It's a good ball in the hole. A little bit of room opening up here. Mbappe can't quite find our nine. Our final pass uh, is just seemingly eluding each of these players so far. Seems to be the story of the weekend, really. It's just the final ball not getting past your team of the year, Van Dijk, or your prime hole. If you are defending correctly, if you're not making those mistakes, it's so difficult for your opponent to get through. But can you force the mistakes out of your opponent? I feel like that's going to be the question for Fnatic's Tom right now. Yeah, Mbappe does well. Drags it wide and eventually it finds its way to Frankie Diong. I wouldn't mind a shot here, to be honest. The ball roll is there. Virgil steps in the way, though, as he so often does. I say, well, that's a cracking ball forward to R9. He isn't going to find its way through just yet. Tom smiles to himself at the ball that was lumped forward. Sam Allardyce football, if I've ever seen it, at end the half. No, no, just a Van Dyke war oh, at the it, moment. It's ridiculous. 
who's Van Dyke is going to slip up first, who's going to get muscled off by Mbappe like we saw yesterday. But very defensive style from Umu as expected, but Tom hasn't really been able to create anything. And I wonder whether he will start to get a little bit frustrated. He does just need to just accept that this is the game he's going to have to play. And we'll see whether he can create a few more chances in this second half. Doesn't need to change anything drastically as of yet oh. and throw everything forward because then he will, of course, then leave himself subjectable to attacks and counter-attacks from Umut. So just stay calm, keep doing what you're doing, and the chances will come. So already beat Umut on penalties this weekend. We'll feel confident if that's as far as we go, which isn't out of the realms of possibility here, Dan. Umut quite happy to sit back and rest on his laurels and play confidence in his defence. See if he can build something here. You see Eusebio now. And again, though, you know, Tom's got a lot of members back as well. I, I mean, definitely not as heavy as what Umut is, is, is going with. I mean, every single time Tom attacks, there is literally 11 men behind the ball. Umut not wanting to concede. And that's a little bit of a squeaky area for Vieira to be playing with the ball, but he was eventually able to get away with it. Yeah, I'm not saying that Tom's not guilty of having men behind the ball and probably playing over low ball side as well. However, the intent does seem to be there of yeah, wanting to, to go forward and wanting to try and break through. And it's not like Umut doesn't want to score, but he does seem a little bit more nervous in terms of going forward and is more relying on his opponent making a mistake rather than trying to force one. Can't say no. Will he force the issue? Just going to spread it out the wide. That's been very, very popular from the midfield. Getting it out towards those fullbacks who are running up the pitch. R9 now, not in the position you want to find him. We'll feed that back inside. I'd imagine Hullet will receive this in a second as well to try and create something, the Dutchman. Eusebio now the turn was nice, but CR7 there, back <laughs> defending. Yeah, CR7, back defending. Yep. Key words there. So even Tom still got plenty of men behind the ball as well. Fire with fire. When you are going up against someone who plays like that, you kind of have to as well in most cases. And the majority of players out of the tournament are because that is what the game is at the moment in FIFA 20. That is the meta that we have. We've gone through many a meta through FIFA sure. 18, 19, 20. Many a meta, yes. It, it's the, like the polar opposite of last year. Though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, last year we had <laughs> El Tornado crosses yeah. in eight, nine games. Which was entertaining. But didn't necessarily simulate real football. Yeah, very true. This year closer to real football. However, a real lack of creativity, I feel, for some of the players. I think if you add something or maybe bring back the ability to chain skill moves, perhaps, might just be able to help break through this brick wall of a defence we see with his now Team of the Year and Prime Icons. Robertson now forward to Hullet. Umut uh, sucking up the pressure. Van Dijk spreads this over towards Alexander-Arnold. A little chip ball, uh, ball forward. It's not going to come to fruition. One of the first changes of the game are going to come through. Both players changing something up at least. R9 going to be subbed off on the side of Umut just because of uh, fatigue. He's Man a big guy. Coming on. He's a big guy. He is. And unfortunately, he just doesn't have the stamina as some of the other items in game. Messi's going to be coming onto the field for Fnatic slash hashtags Tom. For those of you who don't know, Tom is at hashtag United, however, was loaned to Fnatic for the E Club World Cup, which will be coming up in a few weeks. And uh, rules state that you have to then play for that team until and after the E Club World Cup. So a nice gift to Fnatic having Tom perform mm. so well at this event. But still with the support of the hashtag fans as well, which is nice to see. Still has the hashtag kit on. Yeah. Got to represent. Neymar Co trying to get something done here. Neymar on somebody we haven't seen too often this weekend. He's actually going to feed Mane down this right-hand side. Neymar inside the box now. Skills not able to do anything to Young. Very aware of what was going on there. It's a good turn by Holland as well, which will allow Cristiano Ronaldo to be released down this right-hand side with Alexander-Arnold in tow. Tom choosing to turn this one round. Doesn't need to rush anything. The first-time cross-field ball from Vieira. Absolute Hollywood balls here in Atlanta. Robertson now down the line towards Mbappe. Is this the route for Tom to find a way through the strong defence of Umut? Messi just about getting away from his defender there. Unfortunately, the pass is a little bit wayward, and that attack is shut down immediately. 
Tom starting to commit a few men, a few more, more men forward. Excuse me. And I wonder whether that's going to leave him a bit more vulnerable at the back, but thankfully, Alexander Arnold, that's why he's on the pitch. That touch so from Messi. To go back and forth. Yeah, that touch from Messi, I just thought he had taken him away from the defender there, but such is the pace of these cards at this time of the game. So, so difficult to get away. Alexander Arnold now into De Jong. Does Tom have anything else in the locker? And we do have to remember this is the first tournament with these items as well, and yep. I'm sure players will discover better ways of trying to break through. With and the ability of them now as well. And yeah. as time goes on, these pro players will get more coins in their club and they will be able to use a lot more of these items at home to try and test them and to work out where the weaknesses may lie, if there is any weakness. And the meta will keep shifting as the Global Series goes on. Oh, nine to CR7, a little bit of an attack building here. Messi on the edge of the box, goes for the outside, the oh. foot shot, and it's a small amount of luck. I say small, a large amount, but Tom laughs in the camera in the bottom right corner. He will take that all day long. Oh, you hate to see it. Unless you're a hashtag fan, of course. <laughs> you love to see it. Van Dyke for all his ability and all we talk about him being an absolute presence at the back. That's his second own goal of the tournament, I believe. Umit is defended well, and for all, you know, maybe we sound a little bit critical of his decision to sit so many behind the ball. That's unfortunate. No, I'm not. I, you do I'm, have to feel for him. I am not critical of any player playing no. this way because they can only play what's in front of them. Yeah. Um, I would rather someone play attacking football, but I can completely understand when oh, yeah, money is on the line, Global Series points are on the line, why you would play the most effective way to play FIFA 20. But now Uma is going to have to show a different side. He is a goal behind to Tom here. Yes, it's a stroke of luck. But sometimes you just got to accept if you don't get the rub of the green. Mane down this right-hand side now, can Umit steal a goal away? Towards the end of the first leg here. Into the feet of CR7. He's found Mane. He's onside as well, crossfield ball. The movement of the keeper. Catching him unawares there, as I, I would have seen a front post shot. You would have liked to see one if you're a fan of the German. Not able to happen this time round. Good play by Tom, good defensive work by Tom. Great defensive work, and yet the subtle goalkeeper movements can play in those mind games. Could have still seen that ball go in the back of the net with a shot from Mane, to be honest. Even if it's gone across goal near post, there's still a possibility it goes in. You could argue maybe Uma overdid it a little bit. But that goalkeeper movement might have been enough just to scare him from taking that shot. Might have seen it's too much of a risk, wanted to try and guarantee himself the goal. But instead, at the end of 90 minutes and the end of the first leg, it's going to be Fnatic Tom with a goal lead after a very fortunate deflection off Van Dyke's thigh. Yep. You play in weekend league, you take those all day long. And the only shot, the only shot on target goes in via Van Dijk's time. Was it even a shot on target? <laughs> I mean, the stats were saying it was. Okay, so it's probably heading towards the right of the keeper and then it just yep. gets deflected to the left. But a smile on the face of Tom and he looked across to the boys that are supporting him in the arena as well. And you have to laugh at something like that. Of course, for Uma, however, there is nothing funny about that situation whatsoever. No. And it's the worst feeling in the world. That's a control bouncer if I've ever seen one. Mm -hmm. I mean, controllers nowadays are made pretty well. A lot of these companies that support these teams and these players, they do make sure that they could probably take at least one throw, I'd say. Yeah. Depends how far off the throw. See, when you're such a strong fella like me, Dan Gaskin, sometimes, you know, they just disintegrate. Mm. You know, like Thanos snaps his fingers. That's what I do to controllers when I throw them, such <laughs> as my stature. Yeah, well... At least you're modest. That's what matters. This is going to be an interesting second leg, though, because Uma is going to have to attack now. Yeah. He is not going to be able to just sit back. And if he does sit back, he probably loses this game. And even though you can sometimes approach the game of saying, look, I'm only a goal down, maybe I can sit back and maybe I'll find that counter-attacking, he may do so for 30, mm. 40, maybe even just the half. And see something a little bit different for him. I want to see the Uma who beat Stokes 7-1 in Swiss. That's what I want to see. I mean, look, he's got it on his lock. He hasn't found his way to this final, surely, by just playing defensively. You know, clearly, has beaten Stokes 7-1. He's, he's got 26 goals. Like, he's got more goals than a lot of the other players that are in the tournament that have got close to these stages. His defensive record is phenomenal. But from what I've seen so far in the semi-final and the final, 
There isn't, there isn't quite enough creativity going forward there for me yet. But clearly it is there and it is available. Well, let's see it. Let's inject a little bit of energy into this game. Speaking of energy, you've just passed me a coffee. Thank you very much, Dan. You are more than welcome. I didn't get it for you. And you know, I was going to pretend in the stream that you just made me one here and then. That would be impressive. It would be. You're an impressive man. <laughs> Tom now, shooting from right to left in the hashtag kit, of course. Umut, left to right in the grey. On to zero to Tom after the first leg. And let's see if we can get a little bit more excitement in this one. We also will quite like a scoreboard. Hold it now, moving forward. He's going to send Mbappe on this left-hand side, who is onside. He's just about beat the offside trap. The roulette not going to work out. Alexander-Arnold wise to it. And now we are going to see whether Uma is going to try and drive forward and try and attack a little bit more in this game. Cristiano Ronaldo is going to be on that right-hand side, and those over-the-top through balls have been deadly throughout this tournament. His sheer stature and presence has offered so much in Atlanta. We'll use an elastico to try and get away from the man, but pull it bundled <laughs> over by R9, and that's a, a challenge if I've ever seen one that says, "Look, I'm not going to mess around. I'm not going to allow you to have any easy possession." That was that had that challenge had Richard Buckley written all over it. <laughs> You'll love to see that. Anyway, Ronaldo now trying to move forward, trying to break down this defensive Tom, who now has plenty of members behind the ball. Not quite 11. He still wants that counter-attacking threat. As he knows, Umut is going to have to push forward now. 1-0 to, to Tom, just to remind you guys in the stream. On aggregate as we head into the second leg. Couldn't tell you what minute we're in. We'll get that sorted. Alexander-Arnold now. Back to Vieira. And if you're Tom here, keeping a hold of this ball. No qualms, no issues doing that. Yeah, even though Tom has had a lot of attacking intent and... He is a player who likes to go forward. He does like to score a lot of goals. He's also very experienced. Even though this is his first time in a major final, take you back to FIFA 19. Mbappe in the box, the heel to heel. He's escaped past a couple here as well. Somehow he's still got the ball. He was stuck to his foot there, Dan. PS4 final, LQE Bucharest just before playoffs. Tom was the champion there and lost out to Tex in the grand final. So he knows what it's like to be in finals. Yes, OK, it wasn't necessarily a major, but it still meant a lot at the time. It got him those Global Series ranking points. It gave him that experience. And he knows that closing out a game is something that every player has to learn to do. And if your opponent is playing slow and methodical, then you might have to do the same. It's good football by Umu, to be honest with you. R9, bundling Vieira over, who is able to drop, get back up, and pass the ball away in the time before R9 can get around him. Virgil will clear this one away. Alexander on the down this right hand side now to his Liverpool teammate. Big win for them today against Manchester United. Unfortunate for all you Man U fans. You love to see it as a fan of anybody else. Did they inspect, expect to see anything else really? Are Liverpool going to lose this season? I actually don't think so. I kind of, as an Arsenal fan, I hope they just lose one. <laughs> You're holding on to it. And Mbappe down this left hand side trying to hold on to the ball. Can't say we'll get this one away though. Very much concentrating on Mbappe down this left hand side is Tom. Somebody to concentrate on here is Cristiano Ronaldo down the right. So good with these over-the-top balls. He can just shrug off defenders. Unfortunately, can't get much further with that one as Robertson stops him in his tracks. But here comes the corner. We now have a scoreboard. Van Dijk now looking for a pass inside. Is going to find Mbappe. He feels as if it might take a really good goal to break one of these players down. It's not going to come this time round, though, as Mane. will get in the way and help this one be cleared via Van Dijk. The only thing Tom has to be careful of, if he does just start playing this ball around and playing keep ball as if he's a year 11 team against a year, bunch of year sevens or something like that, if there's one mistake whatsoever, then he could be punished. I'd like to see him press on and look for that second, but he can just take his time. I think he will, you know. He, he isn't the player that strikes me, that he wants to sit back and want the zero lead. I, I think, you know, if you would to tell him that this will end once zero, you'd take that all day long, but I'm sure he'd like a bit of a cushion here. He may find one now. Ronaldo can't quite get past Hullet. He will clear this way down this left-hand side. A little bit of room for Mbappe to run into, but he's got Alexander-Arnold breathing down his neck. Can he get past the ball roll to get out the way? Is not quite enough, but he will get a throw high up the pitch here as well. 
For all we talk about Van Dijk and Maldini, it has been these fullbacks that have really made a difference as well. Having Trent Alexander Arnold and Robertson with the sheer amount of pace to be able to catch Mbappe, a team of the year Mbappe, has been so helpful for every single defence. And even like prime Carlos Alberto has been able to do a job as well. Mbappe inside to R9, a little bit of room to play with. Look cool. at the run from CR7. We all seen it. Not able to make it work though was Tom. And a lot of FIFA is about that, is about when you do see those things not actually being baited into it by what the game is necessarily presenting to oh, you. What a ball that is. You say be over the top, the touch is horrible and Umu. A picture of frustration, Tom laughs. I, I just love that Tom giggles at everything. <laughs> just looking over towards the boys in the corner and laughing. Yep. How have I got away with that? What a ball that is by Van der Sar and Mbappe on his bike down this left-hand side. A little bit of support as well, but we'll choose to send it backwards. But he's in enemy territory now. Vieira out wide Alexander-Arnold. It's an aggressive ball. Well, De Jong's made the little run inside, not quite able to thread the pass, Alexander-Arnold, although the ability is there. Unfortunately, so is Hullet. Hullet now, one more stab at it in this half here for Tom. You feel money into Cristiano Ronaldo, a little bit of room. R9, could he kill it off? Not going to happen, Virgil gets in the way, will get a corner though to end the half. Virgil gets in the way, but no deflection this time. Oh, Straight in there! And almost. We see another header from Fnatic's Tom. Tom, of course, still unbeaten in this tournament. Technically, Uma unbeaten if you don't count penalties. Although, technically, Tex was still unbeaten if you don't count penalties as well. I think a lot of people may have been potentially unbeaten because... I mean, if we didn't count penalties, this tournament would probably be very different. <laughs> Let's be completely honest about it. But if it does go to penalties, dare I say it, Tom has a pretty good record. Well, we're a little while off that yet, but it's in the air, potentially. Tom now changes a foot coming in here, and that looks like it is actually for Umut and Tom. Both playing the same formation, 4-2-3-1 in-game. Yeah, 4-2-3-1 using the overload ball yeah. side as well. It just really makes everything so difficult. I remember the beginning of the year, it wasn't really loved, was it? 4-2-3-1? Yeah. A lot of people used it from the transition to FIFA 19 to 20 because it was so popular in 19, but yeah. then people were trying out 4-4-2, people were trying out 4 triple 2 Yeah, I didn't like 4 triple 2 Or 4 one 2 one 2 either. Like, I, just, I think I loved the way it played in, in FIFA 19, personally, as well, and I just think it's just a good all-around formation, isn't it? 4-2-3-1. It's got that defensive strength there. A little bit of option going forward. Just a bit of everything. I like it, Dan. I like it. However, earlier on, we did see... Um, Castro go up against Gorilla off stream, obviously. Oh. Castro was playing just a normal 4 4 2. Oh. And it worked out. What a ball this is here. Allison is just about going to get in the way before Mane could latch onto that ball. But yes, you will bring it up. Gorilla and his fans will be disgusted that you are letting everybody in the stream know that Castro beat him in the weekend league. It was a great game, to be fair. Yeah, it looked like a close one. It looked like a close one. This one is quite close as well. Can Ronaldo get past Van Dyke? Oh, let you answer. That one, Dan, absolutely not. Tom looking like he's desperately searching for this second goal now, and you feel like if he does get the second, it should be game oh, over. Oh, there's room there. Why isn't Huller played the pass? Maybe Ronaldo's run a little bit too quick. Now he gets it. Oh, nine, edge of the box, strike oh. in the run post. Hits the side net, and I thought that one had snuck in. Tom was saying in interviews that he's going to be using scoop turns, but I haven't seen any of them just yet on the edge of the box. Even if Lyrics did advise him not to use the scoop turns on the edge because he says they're too easily tackleable. Is tackleable even a word? Tackleable. Oh. It is now. Ronaldo is going to send Cristiano. Ronaldo, he's looking for the heavy touch. Just to try and get it past Vieira. Here comes the first pause. Tom will cue that one up. Umut, though, time is ticking. 30 minutes of in game time to go here. Just one down, and I think that's why you haven't seen the kitchen sink being thrown yet. Doesn't want to concede that second. We can also just chip away at Tom. Find that one opportunity. That Virgil van Dijk will shut down every single time, you feel. This one is going to be cleared away via Robertson. And a lot of luck down this left-hand side for Tom so far. Mbappe trying to get away from Alexander-Arnold. Not a chance. And, you know, we said at the beginning of the weekend that as things went on, as more games were played, there would be more of a definitive team Alexander-Arnold has become a mainstay. 
It's just the way he can go up and down the pitch so quickly and, and match some of the fastest strikers in the game. Oh, De Bruyne, a little bit of room, finds Ronaldo. Back to De Bruyne as well, gets saved, Van der Sar. First big chance for Umut there, can't quite convert it, but a lot better from him. Really good movement, really good FIFA. That one is cleared away, though. Good save by Van der Sar. Changes the foot here now for Harry. Harry? Same mug. Easy mistake. Teammate of Harry. Yep. They're basically all the same people nowadays. They, yeah. they, they hang around with each other that much. They play each other that much. They are all one. It's like a Megazord, a hashtag Megazord. But Tom is currently the head. Harry's like the fist. And I'd put Shory as the body. <laughs> and then Wes and Spencer, they're the legs. They're the legs, are they? Yeah. Okay. Holding everything up. One hell of a Megazord, honestly. I mean, there's other body parts we're missing, but here we go. Corner kick coming in. I want you to think about it. Messi now to hold it. Can Umut find something here? It seems to be building. It has to be said, he is getting a little bit closer to finding that final pass, to finding the back of the net. This crossfield ball has been so effective all weekend long. I tell you what, Mbappe is away here if Hullet wants to send him. Tom's thinking about it, but it is just going to be the easy pass into feet. It's been a sensible game. It has. From Tom, a very experienced one as well. He was gifted the lead and he's just taking advantage of that now. He knows he doesn't need to be taking too many risks. Oh, Mane has escaped down this right-hand side. It was a ball into Ronaldo and back to Mane and then to Ronaldo. There you go, it's one clean-cut chance, that's all he needs. German efficiency from Umut. As Cristiano Ronaldo draws this one up, one apiece. I was talking about taking risks. It doesn't come from Tom taking a risk, but it just comes from Umut snatching the ball away and then on the counter-attack as he has done so successfully all tournament long. And I'm sure that Tom would have been hoping to get to 90 minutes and just be able to hold on to this gifted goal that he had in the first leg. But now he's going to have to work for it once again. So much on the line for both of these players. It's not just a place in that cross console final. Of course, an extra $15,000 in their pocket. A total of $30,000 for the winner. 2,000 Global Series ranking points if you get to the cross console final as well. And then once you are there, you have the battle with the Xbox champion, Oli Lito to be able to lift that trophy and call yourself the Foot Champions Cup Stage 3 Grand Champion. Game on then. I don't want to say it was coming, but I felt like Umut was growing more into it and the chances were becoming a little bit more... I was about to make them put awayable, <laughs> convertible is the word I was looking for. And we're, did, we're allowed to make up words. Yeah, I mean, I suppose it's our job to speak words so why can't we make them up Robertson now he's gonna find Holland de Jong flirting with a tackle against Mane he's gonna make the run forward here as well a little bit more aggressive from Tom I don't feel like he wants to see extra time here Mbappe back to Hullet he's building slowly so hard to break through this he's just gonna continue to walk them down challenge me come at me boys I'm rude Hullet I'm the strongest man on the planet Is Ruud Hill the, the strongest man on the planet? I mean, if you go off his FIFA it, ability, yeah, probably. Yeah, in FIFA he is. The FIFA planet. Hold it now in the middle of the park too. De Bruyne, a little bit of room here. And I tell you what, Umut is definitely continuing to move forward. Hasn't sat back as defensively as he was doing before the first goal. Mbappe now. Back to Hull and looking for a little bit of room. He's wriggled past Messi, Mane now. Can't get quite past Robertson. But he's in, still in control of the ball. Back heel into Ronaldo, and eventually Tom will be able to get this one away. And it doesn't matter how Maybe. much experience you have now, like nerves are just yep. going to come into play. Every single time that your opposition gets the ball in those kind of areas, you're just going to be hoping that that one little touch of a button to lunge in doesn't give away a penalty or just miss so they get through on goal. I wonder now whether Tom is just going to hold on to this one until that whistle goes and just have the last attack of the game and send us into extra time here in the PlayStation final. It's a building opportunity. I think Tom wants to keep a hold of the ball as long as possible. He's saying that he never completely gives it away instantly. But there is time for one more chance yet. He wants to wait until the final opportune moment. Let time tick down, then strike on 90 minutes. No risks here. 
Umut camped in his own half. And rightfully so, he doesn't have possession of the ball. He needs to make sure Tom cannot do anything with this here. Just trying to break them down where he can. Here we go, into the 90th minute we go, and into Umut's half we go. Oh, is Messi going to be able to latch onto that? Not quite. Umut will get a hold of the ball, maybe have another chance here as well. Look at the run from Hullet. He's going to send it forward. He's going to get onto it as well. This one has to go in the box. It's the fake shot into Mbappe, into Messi. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. The drama, the theatre of FIFA comes to town once again. Mane sends it in the back right corner. It's a lumped ball forward. It's not pretty, it's not sexy. Umut will not care one little bit. No, he won't, because it's going to send him into the cross console final. It's going to send Fnatic slash hashtags Tom out of the competition. It was a last minute goal for Umut. Heartbreak for Tom. He desperately tried to hold on to the ball, so he had the last attack. But Umut snuck in an over the top through ball to Hullet, and then he just worms his way into the box and he finds himself in a final. Ooh, that's going to be a hard pill to swallow. Uma defended so well all game, though. And when, the thing is, when he got his chances, he took them. And you can't say any more than that. He, he, he was fantastic when he had those chances. Tom will be mightily disappointed. But, I, I mean, at, at the same time, you want to say it, Tom's goal. It, it was a deflection. It wasn't anything clear. He is going to feel hard done by, and the unbeaten streak of Tom comes to an end. A great tournament from him still, and he's still got to that PS4 final, but it's Uma who goes on forward. Tom crashes out, Uma goes forward. Oli Lito awaits him in the final. Germany v Sweden, right after this.
Absolute heartache then for Tom. Ecstasy for Umut. Some of the social rolling through for us. What a play, Umut. Goaded on the sticks, Umut. Now let's keep the cup in Germany. And Rasik winning back at stage two. And there you see. <laughs> Love that. Hey, folks, welcome back in. Kev Egan, Chew Boy, Mike LaBelle. Can I quote a famous Englishman here? Gary oh, Lineker, right football is a simple game. 22 men chase the ball for 90 minutes, and in the end, what happens? The Germany, Germans always win. Germany wins. Germany wins. Umut, the big winner here. Now he advances to take on Oli Lito in the Grand co Cross Console final. Umut now standing by Gillian Sakovitz. Umu, you get it done in the last kick of the game. What was going through your mind? I was really nervous because it was the last attack for me. He played on the last attack, but I can't uh, save the ball for me. And yeah, I can cross the goal. All right, so nice. Got to see it twice. We're going to take a look at that highlight. You want to take me through it? It'll come okay. up on the screen. Here I threw a long ball because it was the last uh, attack for me. And here I play from Pollard to Messi and from Messi to Mane and it was the one we won and I should go. Did you believe it when you saw it? No, I don't believe it. I was so happy. Congratulations. Now next you have the cross console final coming up. How comfortable are you on the Xbox? I don't play Xbox. Uh, really, I never played the Xbox, but I will look. Maybe it's okay, maybe it doesn't. When you were watching Olito, what, what is it about him? What do you think it makes him good at his game? I don't know. I don't watch his game, but I think he's a very good player because he's in the final and every player in the final is very good. Well, let's talk your own game for a second. What is it that has made you so good over the past three days? I think my defense is very good. I played against Tom and his defense was also very good. He's the best player I played in FIFA 20 so far. And yeah, it was a very intense game. You having fun? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, we'll see you after the game. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Chew boy. You said Tom gets the first goal. That's the all-important key here. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> Didn't work out that way, didn't did work it? out, but I, I have to call out Mo Alba because Mo Alba was roasting Umut, a friend of his, about his interview style. Mo, I remember <laughs> back in the day when you first started, your interviews were a bit rusty too, all right? So Mo, the world champion, he's hey. watching the stream. So shout out to the Mo Army. Not I love that guy. <laughs> not everyone can flirt with a camera like you, dude. <laughs> hey, I, hey, just he's going to come for I think Umut is going to be a star in the future uh, because he's like the, like I say, he's the German Nicholas. He is... Uh, I remember when Nicholas was coming on the scene, everyone was like, this guy's like a robot. He makes no mistakes. And Omo, you're going to see as you go into the final, he will make no mistakes at all. You saw it with Tommy got that lucky goal, and we'll see that in the highlights as we go into them. But, man, very efficient gameplay, I have to say. Roll the highlights, folks. Let's see it. Tom, off to a great start here early on. He will be the one to break that deadlock first. All smiles from Tom to kick things off. And things did look to be going his way, Mike. Yeah, and I talked about it. I said... Maybe it's time for Tom to get a lucky bounce, and indeed he gets that. Shoots to the opposite post, messy, deflection, top <laughs> corner, off the bar. He's loving it, at least for the moment he was loving it. And there we see here Tom on the ball, and almost just setting defenders, but I thought maybe Tom was going to get some um, even more luck here with the Virgil van Dijk cross. Looks a bit like the Man United game that was earlier today. Virgil score from the header, but Tom just trying to get through that Umut defense and nothing is happening for him. And Umut holding on again. Very few mistakes from this guy. And we have the tail of two legs. The first leg was all fanatic Tom. However, in the second leg, you could see that Umut was starting to edge his way back in, that he still had really, really strong belief. I always talk about self-belief in FIFA. And amazing game management here. Rude Hullet attacks the end line, gets a layoff. You're gonna see a back heel of dreams. Ah, that's beautiful. A lot of talk was about Umut and his defense, potentially not necessarily parking the bus, but keeping things quite conservative. There's the winner. That's the sexiest football we've seen all weekend. That was unbelievable. unbelievable. Mike, you're going to break it down for us. Absolutely. We're going to look at that goal again. And if you guys weren't watching the game, basically Fnatic Tom was attempting to hold the ball late and, and take that last chance, unfortunately for him. Umut gets one last, uh, basically a deep ball to Rude Hullet. The layoff here, and this is where you're going to see the freeze frame. I'm going to tell you guys right now, if you're playing at home, you've got Messi, 90th minute. 
you are definitely attacking this near post. This is going to be option number one for you. However, at the pro level, they're always trying to do what's unexpected. So option two is going to be the Mane overlapping run. Uh, I heard Scott Cole say earlier, you don't need it, but you love it with the back heel. I think you need the back heel in this one. <laughs> Everybody's out of the picture, out of the play. You could see Tom knew that he was going to concede. Everybody here is saying, oh, my goodness, the reaction, the eruption of energy. And he said it, Germans just figure out a way to get the job done. And he's heading to the final. And it's harsh on Tom, isn't it? Performed admirably. Obviously, he hadn't even lost a game. Uh, the only fella to go 5-0 and in the group stages. He was superb in the knockout stages as well. And even in those late stages, as we hit the second half of the second leg, it was Tom going through in our minds. Well, after you saw the first leg, you're saying, all right, Tom got a little bit of good fortune. But overall, he looks like he's been dictating the play. Yeah. He's making more chances. He's holding the ball well, which has been really important for his gameplay uh, all the way through this tournament. Is That's kind of been a staple, that he has a lot of possession. He's able to see out games, making good decisions. He's got his coaching staff. The whole squad is here to support him. Uh, and unfortunately for him, Umit just stayed mentally really tough. And I think it shows you that he's ready to, to be on the big stage, that he's ready to potentially win this event. He's only got one more match to go now. And that he's the real deal. This is not some lucky run. And Chu has been talking about Umit from the beginning, yeah. saying, I like his gameplay. His intangibles are good. He's mistake free. He's going to put himself into positions to win matches. Chu called it two rounds ago, saying he thought Umit would win it. I thought I was watching Atletico Madrid Barcelona in the green room. All the ball with Barcelona, that being Tom. Umut, like Diego Simeone, just finding a way not to concede too many chances. Just like the Spanish Super Cup just a few days ago, Atleti hit two late goals, as did Umut. That sees him through to the grand final to take on Ole Lito, the boy from Sweden who is dreaming right now. His father, Frederick, outside, loving the occasion. His mother, Molly, back in Sweden, staying up late. She's got work early tomorrow morning, and she's enjoying it, trying to stay up as late as possible to see her son potentially take home the grand final. This is incredible. I mean, I think Ali Lito, he does have a bit of luck on his side. There's just something about him. I feel like there's a story here in the making. But again, you know, everybody has a plan until a German shows up and beats them <laughs> at FIFA. So it's going to be a very interesting final. I think you just took a Mike Tyson quote. Everybody has a plan to get punched in the face and then you applied it to FIFA. I see what you're doing there, too, yeah. right? Bell correcting, correcting. I love it. Yeah, well, hey, it doesn't well, happen Mike. that often, for especially you, not Mike. with phrases, but I'm pretty sure that's how people. it's supposed to go. Of all people, yes. That is what I did, Mike LaBelle, yes. Yeah. Good we got ourselves a cross console final, folks. It's coming up next. It's Ole Lito of Sweden taking on Umut of Germany. Do not go anywhere. You don't want to miss it. Live from our E-League studios.
for Champions Cup Stage 3 here in Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome back to our E-League studios. Kev, Chu and Mike with you. We have reached the Cross Console Grand Final here in Foot Champions Cup. This stage three, remember, there's six across the board all season long. The end goal, guys, obviously make it to the FIFA E World Cup later on in the summer. What is a grueling season? Mike, you were talking a little bit about the grueling hours that these guys put in each and every weekend. First prize for the winner between Umut and Olilito, $50,000. Both will take home 2,000 Global Series points. Congratulations to everyone who picked up those vital points and those few dollars along the way. This a look at the Xbox bracket. Olilito, Diogo, that was the final. Olilito, the champion from that. Olilito also knocking out Enrasic on the way through. Huge congratulations to him. Now, Olilito beat Diogo, and that man, Diogo, standing by now with Gillian. Diogo, a top two finish for you, but you're telling me you're still not satisfied. Nah, of course not. Um, before this tournament, if you asked me, would you take top two? Yes, of course I would. Puts me at the World Cup, you know, whatever. There's a lot of good things about it. However, once you're in the Xbox final, do you really want to lose? So, yeah, I'm not satisfied, no. That's the hunger that we like to see. But the top four finish moved you on now to stage four. So what can you take from these past three days on to stage four? Um, to be fair... Like uh, in Swiss format, mm -hmm. I nearly got knocked out. I was one and two, I was one and two, so yeah, a lot of experience. Um, I need to learn to get my head more. I need to learn to adapt to my opponent's game style, which is what I learned in that final. It took me what, 150 minutes to adapt to his play style, which is probably what lost me the game. So yeah, a massive performance from you, though. You have a lot to be proud of. Yeah, I guess, and um, family and friends are definitely proud of me, and I'm happy to have made them proud. But yeah, like I said, it's a bit disappointing to lose in the final. Well, we'll see you soon. That's the hunger we like to see, right, Kev? Absolutely. Very well done. This now the PS4 bracket where Umut got it done against Tom with the last kick of the game. The ultimate gut punch on Tom. Umut was all smiles and celebration. Not exactly a high scorer, but as Chu and Mike both allude to, he does not make mistakes. Congratulations. This guy just keeps rolling here, Umut. Hard to write him off here. And you could definitely say that he has a, uh, a traditional German style of playing yeah. FIFA. He's efficient, doesn't make mistakes, intangibles, mastered them. You're going to have to beat him. You're going to have to do something special. He's not going to give you any gifts, no presents. There's no holidays with Umut. Forget about that. He's, he's going to get the job done. And we've seen very consistent and reliable play. When you watch his games back, you say, I know this guy's not going to concede a bunch of goals. I know that's going to happen. And I know if he gets a one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to finish. Drew, you're all in on this guy. Yeah, because, I mean, the FIFA 20 meta just kind of plays into his style. I mean, he always says he's very defensive, and the thing is now that he's got the Team Deer players, if he does sit back, he's already so proficient at sitting back, he's going to make fewer mistakes anyway because he's got Van Dijk, because he's got DeLigt, because he's got Tra was it, Trent Alexander-Arnold yeah. and Robertson. So it's just fitting what he does best, and it seems to be a game built for him. I think we could be seeing a lot more from him after Champions Cup Stage 3. He's much more patient than yours, truly. Yeah. I you reckon? Be, I, oh, my goodness. If I've made no <laughs> chances, I'm running at you at some point. I'm down a goal. i got to shake it up. And he waited, and he waited, and he waited. He yeah. said, I'm going to get my chance. I'm going to get my opportunity. And, of course, he scored very late in that game. But even to, to start the comeback before that, he had to be very committed to what he had put into uh, the game plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and it worked out for him. But that takes a certain level of belief and patience, knowing that once you get this opportunity, you're going to make the most of it. Jill Sakovitz has become good friends of ours, you know, all three, you know, this weekend. And she swapped us out right now for three others. That is Zizinho, Tom, and Ollie Bolly. Yeah, just hanging out with my best friends over here who are all very excited about finishing top four because it meant that they could get some extra sleep. Zizinho, your third top four finish. What did you take away from these three days? Uh, I think from these three days, I learned better how to play FIFA 20. Uh, I hope. Uh, the meta changes for the, the next tournament, but it was a cool experience and I'm happy to make top four again. Hopefully one day I'll be top one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to go up against likely these guys. Ali Bali, your first. What did this experience mean to you? It means a lot, really. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm so hyped for, for the FCC4, so I can't wait. Now, Tom, you said to me, I lost just five minutes ago, so e go easy on me if I, if I start crying. I know you weren't satisfied, but top two, was it good enough? Yeah, I mean, no, like it's not good enough for me, but like considering this is my first Champs Cup I've been to since FIFA 18, so if you offered me top two before this weekend, I probably would have said yeah, so I can't complain too much. 
What did you take away from this tournament? Um, that this game is about mental state because like it's really tight. You see most knockout games going extra time penalties. You've always got to stay switched on. Um, and yeah, overload ball side. Hopefully we don't see it again. A bit of luck. <laughs> Please turn it off. All right, well, all three of you, thank you so much. You're such good sports about it, and we will see you in stage four. Kev? Cheers, guys. Tom's absolutely right. Most games go into extra time and a lot yeah. go into penalties about the mental state. Yeah, and Zizino made a very good point because, of course, there was a new title update that did just launch, I think, uh, last week, and it's going to come on consoles this uh, coming week. So the next Champions Cup is going to have a buff in dribbling and I think a little bit of a buff in shooting. So we could see a different play style. Hopefully that means that the buff on dribbling means people can get drag backs and different skill moves away from Van Dyke because we need to get away from this Van Dyke. This item is absolutely <laughs> destroying people out here. And then shooting at the edge of the box, people are going to take more shots. Controllers will definitely be broken or thrown or tossed. or Maybe your phone also could be broken. But something I did want to stress is you hear us use the word meta all the time. Yeah. Meta is an acronym that stands for most Careful efficient, now. efficient tactics available. Well done. Well done. Just need, needed a I, it, was, it was right there. Thank you very much. I needed, I needed the no, assist. Just, thank you, Chu. Don't thank me. Hold on. Hold on. Can I do the credit, second? Please. Bam. I want that. I'm on the second. <laughs> uh, come on. I'm doing my best over here. Look. You need to be one with the camera, Mike. It's just not happening. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe stage four. Chu, Chu, this you is this mean. is day three. He's had time to practice. I know. He hasn't I got just, it done yet. No. Hey, speaking of, we had 64 when we kicked this off on Friday. Now we are down to the final two. Will it be Olilito? Will it be Umut? We've got the grand final coming next.
Welcome back, folks. Here you see it in Rasik, racing back to the hotel to make sure he catches this, the grand final, and see his compatriot in action. In Rasik, the winner of stage two, most likely hoping that Umut can go and win this one. That's one way to get your cardio. It sure is. Welcome back, Kev, alongside you and Mike, and I believe the boy has got some goods. Yes, the boy does have drops. Can I get my close-up cam so I can show Mike how to do it? <laughs> Yes, I can. Never gets old. Never gets old. <laughs> Guys, we have some drops. We have just dropped some Jumbo Premium Gold Players packs into some accounts. So check your fun accounts to see if you have gotten some packs. EA, I think stage four. I think the chat agrees. Chat, let me know if you agree. Press one if you agree. We need some nice packs, some 50Ks, 125Ks, maybe some hundreds. Give the boys some love over there for their fun accounts. And hopefully we have some really good packs on stage four. But, guys... Check your accounts. You can link your account to make sure you win future drops in the future Champions Cups as well. If you go to ea.com forward slash Twitch linking and EA, come on. Yo, just boost those packs a bit. And then give me one too because I haven't won anything. Don't give it to Dulsta. Don't do it. All right. You done? Yep. Sorry. Good stuff. Oli Lito. <laughs> He's already taken down Gorilla. He's already taken down the reigning champ from stage two in Rasik. He's taken down Diogo as well. Now it's a case of maybe the unstoppable force meeting the immovable object. You've got the great defensive mind of Umut up against Olilito. How does this play out, Mike LaBelle? I like Olilito. When we saw him talking to Jillian earlier, he also said he plays 60 games in the majority of weekends, which means he's playing 30 on the PlayStation, 30 on the Xbox, cross console. You have to play on both platforms. It's going to be like night and day for him. And um, like I said, there is this thing about this is some kind of story that's forming about uh, all Alito. But again, with Omut, you're sticking to him. I'm sticking to him. Um, you know, again, we're looking at the German Nicholas. I'm telling you, there's so many similarities from when I saw Nicholas dominate in the FIFA 18 scene. And something I noticed about Omut in that last game, you know, you know, sometimes a guy goes behind and then they start rushing to get a goal. He doesn't even rush to get that goal. He just knows it's coming, so he doesn't rush. So very calm, composed. I'm going to go with him. So you're saying that we're going to have our first PlayStation cross-console champion at a Foot Champs event. Big a major. That's what, that's, what, that's what you're saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What do you yeah. guys think? Use the Twitch extension. Get your vote in now. Let us know your thoughts. Gentlemen, your final prediction on a score for the entire weekend. Mike. I got Olilito on a uh, penalty kick win in the, the cross control final. He's been practicing his penalties. He lost two penalty shootouts in stage two. They've been working on him every day since. He's won two penalty shootouts in this competition, and in the semifinal, he scored a penalty too. And we haven't, we haven't seen a Swede hoist the, the world title since uh, Ivan Lapagna, which is his idol or his mentor. Uh, I want to say that was 2012. So it's been some time. It might, it might be his time to do this now for Sweden. In my opinion, it's, it's his time to do it for Sweden. Scorch you? 3-1 uh, Umut. Contrasting opinions here on the desk. Chu going with Umut, Mike going with Olalito. We're going to hand it over to the gents one final time. Dan Gaskin, Chris Tone, take it away for the grand final. I mean, you can almost say their opinions were night and day, which would be the proper use of the expression, Mike, but uh, we, won't, we won't get into that. But it's one final dig. <laughs> get it in. What get a grand in. final we've got here, though, Chris. I mean, uh, there's so many possibilities. A p first potential PlayStation winner at a Foot Champions Cup. Do you think it's going to happen? I don't know, man. You know what's put the seed of doubt in, in, into me here, Dan, is the fact that Umut has come out and said he just doesn't play Xbox. He doesn't play. However, on the other side of things, Oli Leto from the Xbox has been playing PlayStation every single weekend. He is prepared. He is ready for all outcomes. And I think as a competitor at the highest level, you have to be. You absolutely have to be. If you're playing both consoles, you're going to be familiar of both of those controllers as well. I know it's not too much of a difference, but sometimes when you are used to it and where your fingers are going on the controller, it does help. But at the end of the day, if you get your job done on the console of your choice, then you are going to be putting yourself in good stead for the overall result. Well, here we go. Foot Champs Cup Atlanta. Here we go, into the grand final, the cross-console final. We will indeed start on the Xbox, which I think is a relevant point. I think it's a, re a relevant point if you are Oli Lito. I think it's an advantage to him in this scenario. We know how defensive some of these guys can be. If you can find yourself a lead 
in the first leg, then you can find yourself in a really, really good spot. Little issue. Of course, would it be a cross console final with that one? And we will get this one started up very, very shortly. But I don't know if you agree with me, Dan. What, what, what are we saying now? Are we agreeing that it's an advantage for Olilia to play on his preferred console first time round? Um, I would rather play on my preferred console second because then okay. if it goes to extra time and penalties, you're playing on your preferred console. However, uh, historically, we have seen some people choose to play on their preferred console first just because they would rather gain a lead and then try and hold that lead on their uh, unfamiliar console. I think it makes more sense on FIFA 20 in that in that direction with the way that the game does play. You can sit back in the lead. You, you, you'd be quite happy to do that. However, if you are Umut, you go into this game, you maybe play defensively first time around and know that you have a potential 120 minutes to have a go at it on your console. Yeah, I think he's probably actually going to be thinking, yeah, this is a, a decent opportunity for me here. Um, he did say he hasn't played on the Xbox, so as long as he doesn't find the controller too confusing, because he probably wouldn't have prepared for it. I mean, a lot of players will have like custom-built controllers now so that it's more familiar to a PlayStation controller when you're playing yep. on an Xbox. He probably wouldn't be thinking he's going to be in a cross-console final when he comes and, and approaches here you know, coming you, into Atlanta. Exactly. I think, you know, one thing for me, even when I play at home, it, I like to play with my own controller. Irrelevant if that's on a different console or whatever, I, I use a specific controller. And if I'm not using that playing any other game, then I maybe feel a bit thrown off. You know, you go around to your friends and you're using something that isn't you're not used to. It's something that can't put you off if it's something you use so often. And that's a spot that Umut is actually going to be in there. Yeah, he's just got like your standard E-League controller here. Just one of the spares out yep. of the back room. Um, but I'm sure that he'll he'll get familiar with it after a couple of uh, couple of minutes in-game. And then he'll be back to his ways. And are we going to see the Foot Champions Cup stay in Germany? Of course, we saw Nicholas Razek win it at Foot Champions Cup Stage 2. And maybe Umut is going to do it for the German community. And even though we do talk about a PlayStation winner for the first time in a Foot Champions Cup, of course, that is not including the E-World Cup, which we saw Mo Alba win, a PlayStation winner and a German, may I add. Mm. There is something about these German players. They just seem to get better and better That's with each point. FIFA title. That's a good point, Dan. On the opposite side, it could be our first ever Swedish Foot Champions Cup winner in Oli Lito as well. I know that Mike was talking about Boras legend and how he's won titles in the past, but that was before the Foot Champions Cup started. Well, here we go again. Back into the fray we go. The grand final, the cross console final. Umut against Oli Lito, we will be playing on the Xbox first time round. Oli Lito will be in the Swedish kit from right to left. Umut in the grey from left to right. $50,000 on the line, both players already given 2,000 Global Series ranking points, which will guarantee them at the E-World Cup. So get used to hearing these names throughout the Global Series, because we'll be seeing them again and again. Of course, they guaranteed their qualification to foot Champions Cup Stage 4 as well. But who's going to have the nerve in this cross-console final? Two legs, as always, and then extra time and penalties if we need them. Ali Lito will be the first one on the attack. Building slowly here, as people so often have to do against Umut. But on his preferred console, can he strike first? CR7 trying to build there, a little bit of fortune. It will fall his way. Has Hullet on his right-hand side, choosing not to pull the trigger quite yet. The one-two inside from Eusebio was solid, but could not get any further. Can we see Umut find a couple more counter-attacks a little bit earlier on in this cross-console final? Just, well, mere moments ago. He was able to beat hashtag Tom with some late drama, a last minute goal, which just sent shudders around the arena. Everyone kind of went quiet because you know how hard that is on any player to concede that late in any game. I'm sure Uma would rather score earlier on as well. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, the heart rate monitors, if we had them in Sashford, I'd imagine they were quite high. Sorry, I'm just holding your hand there, Dan, I'm scared. It does get nerve-wracking in these cross-console finals, and I think it is going to be a cagey affair, as it has been amongst many players in this current meta. And we've heard the opinions of some of the players, what they want changed and what they believe should or shouldn't be done. Oh, Umut, maybe the first chance to drag back is superb from Eusebio. He strikes first on the Xbox. Oh, Alito's behind on his own console, Dan. What a call by you, Sabio. See you boys later. And Mike LaBelle will be screaming it in your ear. 
If you want to get better at FIFA 20, just use drag backs. Such a powerful skill move. Pretty much the only powerful skill move we've got in FIFA 20 at the moment, aside from the ball roll. And it offered up enough space for the prime Eusebio to give the lead to the young German. And Oli Lito is going to have to answer back. And that is Umut's 29th goal of the tournament. So for all of his defence, he has still been scoring goals. Does Oli Lito have an immediate answer? Carlos Alberto down this right-hand side. Looking at the pass inside to Conte. He makes it available. Look at the man behind the ball now for Umut. He will drop in. And I don't blame him. I said he's on the least preferred console for him. If he can take a lead and hold on to it and then go to the PlayStation side with a lead, it's game on. Eusebio into R9. It's a good turn. There's the second goal. The drag back just keeps on coming. Ronaldo settles it. We're one apiece now. 22 minutes gone. It's a good start to the grand final. And I think Oli Lito has to just go at Uma here and hope that there is going to be a little bit of difficulty with that controller and maybe his defensive ability. Try these turns, try these shots from distance. There was plenty of space for R9 to put that one away. And in 23 minutes, we've got two goals. And I'm very thankful of that. <laughs> Praying to the FIFA gods, thank you. Thank you very much for a strong start. I mean, I was a little bit worried we might have had like a nil-nil in the first leg, especially with him being on the unfamiliar console. He could have quite easily just shut up shop here. But credit to him, he has come out and attacked Olilito from the get-go. I've been trying to catch him off guard. I'll tell you who has been caught off guard, though. It is Alexander-Arnold as Ronaldo tries to get going. Eusebio's not going to reach that in front of Vieira, who will clear that one easily. Umut holds strong. Eusebio now look at the run. That's over the top. These lob-through balls have worked for Umut before. Worked wonders. And Mbappe now inside to hold it. To Eusebio, to R9, you've got to be careful to drag back this time round, though. Virgil van Dijk is aware of what's going on. I sense a lot of nerves from them two up there. Yeah, he couldn't really get it close to the feet of R9 so that he could stop up and just shield and then go for a drag back. BVD was there with his ever presence just waiting in the wings. Eusebio now back to Kante. The runners coming forward. It's about beating that first line of attackers who have dropped back, then beaten. Hull it and Kante in front of you. Then you've got to get past the likes of Virgil van Dijk and Vieira sitting in there at centre back as well. Kante twisting and turning, trying to find a bit of room. That's a good ball into R9. Not quite enough to get past Virgil van Dijk with a skill. Eusebio will bring this one out. Always playing it out wide to Cristiano Ronaldo as well as Uma. Balls on again. He's so good at getting a hold of these balls over the top. Van Dijk now out of position. Can Ronaldo get past? Wriggles away, space in the middle, the pass into Kante was nearly beautiful. And he desperately wanted to get a ball there into the middle of the park because of a BVD was out of yep. position. And we have noticed that a lot of goals that have been scored in this tournament is usually when BVD is not the defending player on these attackers. Even though Maldini, Vieira, Delict, they're all such fantastic items as well, they just don't seem to compare to BVD. Robertson now with the ball inside to Kante. Seems to be the countless for a lot of what Alilito is doing. He's trying to get a hold of the ball and do something, but just shrugged off it there, Dan. Tried to do the drag back, but... Didn't have a hold of the ball. Oh, no, he just didn't have the ball. Still went for the animation, but just couldn't quite get there. Maybe he just clicked it a little bit too early, but you saw what he was trying to do. Certainly warning signs for Umut. First 22 minutes. Were a lot more free flow in the last 20. But I say that though, actually, it has been back and forth. Neither of these two want to play too defensively, clearly. Oli Lito, if you're him, you want to make sure you have a lead going into Umut's preferred console. If you're Umut, you're probably happy with 1 1, to be fair, but he does seem to be going for it. I play to him. It's been a good first half. It has. We'll see whether Oli Lito can just grab one before the half time whistle here. It's a good ball down the line to R9 now. He's going to try and get away from Vieira. Uses the strength, drags it in. Oh, my word! Straight through the legs. Eusebio makes it 2-1, to the keeper in no man's land. It's a fantastic skin with it. It's a brilliant pass, and it's such a good finish. Nothing you can do about that if you're in it. 
Oli Lito takes a lead for the first time in the cross console final. Uma probably felt like he had done enough. Didn't think that Arnon would be able to get away. But at halftime, it is going to be a lead for our Xbox player, Oli Lito. Not much shots to scream and shout about, but it has been pretty back and forth in terms of attacks both ways. Slight domination of possession from Oli Lito, but you'd expect that, I guess, with how Uma has been playing in this tournament and the fact he's on his unfamiliar console as we're straight back into things. No hesitation, no look at tactics. Chris, this is going to be the first time we've had an outsider win a Foot Champions Cup since Dull and Mike back in Bucharest in FIFA 19. It has been full of upsets. It really, really has. I think, you know, mostly today, I, you know, we, we've had some big, big names knocked out. Guys like MS Tassari, guys like Razek. There's been some big names left up until the final moments. But these two have just shone through somehow. Oli Lito has been brilliant all weekend long. Umut has been fighting on the back foot most of the time and has been close games. But they've just ground their way through every single game. Both have been defeated during this event. But they find themselves on the biggest stage here in Atlanta. Umut in possession of the ball now, trying to get something going. Kante is going to get there, though. The pace of him is far too quick. Oh, that's a bit of a mistake, though, by Holly Lito. Maybe a little bit nervous up there. And who can blame him? Oh, no, now back to Robertson. Umut trying to build. I feel like Holly Lito needs uh, a couple of goals going into this second leg, though. Yep. Umut has been making a bit more mistakes, and I guess we could put that down to playing on the Xbox for the first time. If you like, Holly Lito's play hasn't nearly been as clean cut as it has been in previous games though a couple of times that players are getting away or there's just an odd misstep here and there where the pass would usually be intercepted that time it is though Holland will get in the way well you heard what Tom said in the interview that so much of FIFA 20 is just about the mental side of it and the amount of concentration you have to go through is you're constantly defending so tiring mentally as well I mean I mean I any even, 1v1 yeah. game is naturally yeah I mean, I can even hear, speak here from experience in terms of commentating. It's, it's hard to concentrate and, and talk about what's going on, never mind actually being there, playing it, thinking it, breathing it every single second of the weekend. You must be absolutely knackered up there, in all honesty. Hold it now. Inside to Kante. This is Oli Lito on the attack in the Swedish kit. He has been good for him so far, Kante. He's found some important passes. And Pape fakes the pass into Hull it now. Building a lot of pressure here is this man from Sweden. Ronaldo, oh, they drag back through the legs. We'll get him a free kick. That would have been something if you got it through and went for the strike. I know what you want to see here. You know what I want to see. Not sure you're going to see it, though. No, I don't think I am. It's going to be laid off, though, to Cristiano Ronaldo. Allison gets in front, as he should do. And the save comes through. It's a simple one in the end. Come on, I just want somebody to hit it. Give it to me in the final. Well, I guess the last stages of this first leg is starting to look as how I was expecting it to go with Uma kind of defending for his life and Olilito trying to take advantage of this home console, as it were. Can we see anything from the corner? We've seen a few whipped in. This one will not be one of them. Cry for the heavy touch, but it's actually allowed him to skip past one of the defenders. Mane now back to Virgil van Dijk. That's not what, who you want there. Anybody else and you feeling good about the attack. That is one of the frustrating things about playing it short and then trying to work it into the boxes. Quite often, I'd say 50% of the time, it ends up with a defender yeah. there. And if you don't trust them to shoot, then I sometimes just rather lump it in and try and hope for that header. It's usually Langley it falls to for me. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, though, this has fallen to N'Golo Kande. Acres of room. Again, though, that hit lack it. of trust. That yeah. lack of trust. If that was maybe De Jong, you might hit it. If that was Hullet, you might hit it. Even I've seen Vieira hit it from there as well. But Candy's shooting stats aren't that bad. Exactly, but the, the, it's the percentages again. The players, they don't want to take that risk because they feel like if they play the pass, they're more likely to score. But I'd quite like just to hit it there. You might get a deflection. It might go for a corner. I'm sure 99% of pro players would, uh, would disagree with me, but that's absolutely fine. That's a good ball into CR7. It's bundled to the floor. And Oli Lito can get this one out. It's going to be given away, though. Messi here 
to Ronaldo. It's good play. And when he gets in and around this area at times, Umut's attacking play is fantastic. He's so sharp with the passes. And that's a good pass from Ali Lito, you know. Is Virgil going to get there in time, though? I mean, was it in any doubt? The Dutchman has been sensational this weekend, that team of the air item. Yeah, when you play that coins up. over the top through ball, <laughs> you're, you're expecting a Robertson or a Trent Alexander-Arnold yeah. that Ronaldo can bully off. But as soon as you see VVD heading towards it, you just think, all right, well, I'll start thinking about defending then. Alexander-Arnold now forward to Sadio Mane. To Kante. Can Umut get one back here? It's a good ball through to Ronaldo. CR7 now in control of the ball. Neymar can't quite wriggle past. Virgil van Dijk. The everlasting presence at the back there. He's like a wall, a big Dutch wall. He is. You're right. Honestly, I'd love to have him in my team, as I'm sure many would. You at home. don't need any improvements. Yeah, I do. Mane down this right hand side now. Can Oli Lido get one back? It's really good skill. Look at the pass to Ronaldo. It's open. Surely he buries it. He does. There's the third for Oli Lito. It's a touch of fortune, you have to say, but the chance created. Maybe deserved the goal. Three to one now. 82 minutes gone. He's in control of this cross console final. R9 just having a little thwack of the flag there. You've got to be very careful from what I saw in the Newcastle game. <laughs> just this weekend gone. You never know where that flag might end up. But he has bundled the ball in. I thought it was just an open goal anyway. When you saw R9 steaming through the middle, I thought it was guaranteed. But he just wasn't able to get any power behind it. A little bit of lady luck does shine upon him and now he has that two goal cushion that I'm sure he would have been wanting to carry into this second leg onto the PlayStation but the downside for Uma is yes okay the PlayStation is his home console however we know that Oli Lito competes on the PlayStation on weekend league weekend in weekend out that's the problem I think a three to one deficit is achievable for him it has to be said it's not the end of the world here a two goal Deficit is achievable. However, as said, Oli Lito is somebody who has experience on the console and he'll feel nearly as comfortable as he does on the Xbox. This is only the second time that Uma has conceded more than two goals across two legs all tournament long. Fiddle scored three goals against him in their Swiss phase, but Uma did win that one four goals to three. But with another leg still to play, Oli Lito might be breaking that record of who scored the most goals against Umut here. After such a strong weekend of defensive strength. Maybe it's all going to come to an end oh, here. He doesn't want to concede another R9 here. The skills in the box are enough to release Mane, but not enough to find that final pass to find that fourth goal. That will now, mm, I think, be the end. <laughs> the ball over the top. Cristiano Ronaldo at Senegal. 3-1, though, is surely going to be the end of this first tie. And we're going to move over towards the PlayStation. Umut, not quite the mountain to climb, but a small Swedish hill. 3-1 is the score after leg one. And as it stands, it looks like we might still be seeing Xbox dominate Foot Champions Cup. Still 90 minutes to go. And there is still the Umut that I was talking about throughout Swiss, who was smashing goals in for fun. He needs to find that sense of a attacking intent, I feel, going into this next 90 minutes. But it's going to be difficult because Oli Lito doesn't have a bad defensive record either. Most of his goals that he conceded, to be honest, were against Tex during the Swiss phase. <laughs> and you'd expect that, really. Yeah, you can allow that. But what a moment it is for both players, to be honest. History is going to be made either, either way. We're going to see a new name on the Foot Champions Cup trophy. And they will find their way into the history books. Of course, it would be a bigger kind of record-breaking situation if we saw a PlayStation winner in a Foot Champions Cup. And Umut's going to have to come from two bar from behind if he is going to achieve that. Do you think there's potential for it? Yes, there is potential. But I think Oli Lito has given himself enough of an advantage here where he can hold on. With this current meta, and how Olilito has been playing and his consistency throughout the weekend, he shouldn't throw away a two-goal lead. But there's always a but. And we saw what happened with Uma against Tom and the last-minute goals and the, the, the small mistakes and the small slip-ups that allowed Uma back into the game, and that's all he needs. If there is one single mistake from Olilito, 
then suddenly Uma could be back into this one. He is somebody who is there to punish. And as we've seen at the end, you know, Tom seemed to panic as that final ball got put up. And he's clinical. It has to be said. When he gets in and around that box, somebody he's passing is fantastic. And I said, we're on his preferred console. Can he draw it back? And the problem is, and it, you know, this is speaking to what you were saying at the beginning of if you're going to play a cross console final, in some situations, you want to be on your second because of that extra time. Just like you guys know at home, if you haven't watched before, you go to extra time, you in the second leg, you will, of course, play it on the console you are on. There we go, though. Tweets coming in for Oli Lito support from across Sweden. Let's go, Oli. Just 90 minutes left till you're the best in the world at the moment. And then some Swedish words that I can't speak. I'm glad you didn't try. Although, uh, actually, slightly sad you didn't try on the same. I, I'm quite happy I didn't didn't give it a go. But what a, it is a, a huge moment for the Swedish FIFA community. I know that Boris Legend will be watching at home. And the reason why I keep mentioning Boris Legend is one of the biggest FIFA players in Sweden, both at the moment and historically as well. Big YouTube star. And has a lot of history in achieving so much FIFA greatness. But as he's got older, the youngsters have come through. And I'm sure he has been a little bit of a mentor towards them, and I'm sure they've looked up towards him as well. So it will be nice for him to see that progression of these new players now coming through. Did you just call Boris Legend old? I did just call Boris Legend old, and I feel like I am allowed to do so. I think so. We're all getting old now, Chris. We are. I'm, just, I'm, I'm married now. Good Lord. Congratulations, by the way. Thanks, mate. Newly married. Yeah. It's wild, isn't it? Crazy, crazy times. Whereas half the players in this arena... You're probably old enough to be their dad. Uh, well, I'm not that old. I'm only 27, mate. Like, okay, maybe you're not maybe quite not old enough quite. to be their dad. Well, you're not older than me. I'm 28, yeah. Yeah, well, older than you. yeah but I still look about 12, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> because I look older than you, that makes it... That me it means you are... Like, it's all the illusion of television and the, Twitch. The see. only... Our dad, or our da, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> it's though. He's the only father figure in this room. He is. I mean, with, <laughs> with a lot of the jokes we've had on the desk from Kevin Egan this weekend, he is very much the dad of the group. Yes. I did see him try and dance to some sort of rap song today on the desk. Oh. Uh, I hope I never see it again, if I'm completely honest with you, Chris. Well, here we go. Into the next game. Yeah, just a little bit of time while these players switch over to the other console. And the switch has been completed. Nice and quick from the E-League staff as the second leg and the final leg of the tournament is now underway. Well, Oli Lito has a 3-1 advantage over Uma here. He is going to be Uma on the PlayStation, his familiar console. As there we go, I can see the game again. There we go, thank God. Here we go, then. Umut on the attack straight away, an early goal will do him a lot of good. Oli Lito, though. Good defensive work, as Dan said. The Swede in the Swedish colours from left to right. Umut in the white and red from right to left. We're back on the PlayStation. And can Umut get it done? It's a two-goal deficit, and he has to overcome. Or can Olilito become the first Swedish cross-console champion? And this is something that players dream of. And... Not many people will have the opportunity to do this. Con the consistency we've seen throughout FIFA and the fact that it has been Dasari and Tech so many times. Razek showed up. We had the Dull and Mike, of course. Rocky when the FCC was first ever introduced. But it's always been the consistency from the big players and you're going to very rarely find tournaments like this where you get two outsiders in a cross-console final. And that's no disrespect to them. I'm sure they would know they were outsiders and they definitely would not expect to be here. But they have to seize this opportunity now. <laughs> I like how Ubit is 3-1 down and the casual back heel out of the defensive side of things. They're clearly feeling confident now that he's back on the PlayStation. Just getting used to the analog sticks yet again. <laughs> Saying, oh, that, yeah, this is how it's meant to feel. PlayStation 6 are a lot taller, I find. A little and bit more depends. sensitive. You, you can get them changed. Can't say now, though. Moving forward, you save you on a little bit too much room, if anything. Especially if you're an only Lito fan, can't say back to your Sabio. Hull it just bullying, just hurrying him away. You can't just turn normally in front of Hullet. You've got to come up with something a little bit more creative or at least use Ooh. ball rolls to get away from him. That's a good ball. Shifted it onto the right foot. 
and got it out to Ronaldo, who switched inside, not expecting Vieira and Uma to be aware of what was going on. He will retrieve the ball once more, I 17 think minutes in. In the final third, I'd like to see Uma using the R1 button a little bit more. Ronaldo now, a little bit of a run, it's going to be R9, that's going to be 3-2, there's the first one he needs. It's a one-goal deficit, it's a fantastic goal, and we said he's known for his defensive work this weekend, but every time he goes forward, he looks ever so dangerous. So clinical in front of goal. It helps when you've got the likes of R9 making runs like that. And I was just saying before, I want to see him utilising that double tap on the R1 to try and bring players a little bit closer because at times when he's on the edge of the box, he's running out of ideas and he's waiting for those runs to be made. But if he can double tap the L1 button and make those runs himself as well, it's also going to be very effective. So just a goal in it now between these two. Can Olilito get a goal here? I would make him feel a lot easier about this. But that's the perfect start for Umut. I really expected Olilito to maybe shut up shop, but he's he's been the same consistent all weekend long. He's wanting to attack. He's wanting to go for it. He's wanting to control the game. And he ain't changing for nobody, depending on what console you're on. Doesn't matter. He's quite happy to play his own game. I think that's the right way to do it. He's been ever so successful, successful to get here. And he's trying to continue the same thing. Oli Lito now will try and get this one away down this right-hand side to Cristiano Ronaldo. And it all stemmed from a, a good-looking attack from Oli Lito. That one and in the end, Umut punched him. You only really have to look at the opponents that Oli Lito has taken down on his way here to really appreciate how well he has played at this tournament. In the knockout stages, he's beaten Gorilla, Razek and Diogo. Three phenomenally attacking players. Robertson just gets there in front of Eusebio and Umut now will be able to get things away. But I think you're very right. You know, both these guys have, have beat some solid opposition to get here. We may say, you know, it's a surprise they're here. They are not necessarily massive players in the grand scheme of things, but they found themselves in the cross console final. Umut finds himself inside the 18 yard box of Oli Alito. R9 back to Mbappe. Looks for the second pass and can't quite find it. I would have loved to see Mbappe hit the byline there. I mean, those players he's beaten are so good, I even made up another word, so that's how good the competitors he's gone up against are. There's almost R9, makes it another one in the header, off the post from CR7. But just about surviving here, Olilito. The Swede is living dangerously. He looks about as secure as a IKEA-packed furniture at this moment in time. Very secure <laughs> is what I'm told every yeah. time I go to IKEA. Some of mine ain't that great. Don't get it twisted. Kante now spreads it out wide to Robertson. It does remind me I need to return a cupboard. R9 to Mbappe. It's really good football from Oli Lito in this build-up. Hold it now to our CR7, I should say. Kante will get in the way as he always does. Uma looking so much more comfortable, though. Oh, yeah. Call it. Home advantage, call it whatever you want. He just looks like a different player. But he's still behind. And I wonder how much of nerves are going to come into play for Oli Lito here. Is he going to be able to play his own game or is he now going to be forced to play the game of Umut? And there's the game of Umut. The long ball to Cristiano Ronaldo has worked so well for him. It's worked well for a lot of players. Get that ball up the pitch quickly. And the strength and the speed of the Portuguese man will help you go forward. Hullet, though, is going to get in the way of this one, can't it? We'll put it out wide to Carlos Alberto. And I think Oli Lito just maybe needs to get a little bit of possession under his belt here, calm himself down. He still has a lead. It was another attack, though, where I really feel like Uma could have capitalized from double tapping R1 and bringing players a little bit closer rather than just waiting for them to make runs themselves. Two minutes. Almost makes it difficult for himself at certain periods. Oh, Lilito with the final attack. He's going to spread it out wide to see our seven. Is he going to beat Robertson there? Not quite. Umit will get control of this ball. And we'll see out the half with the 1-0 oh. lead in the second leg, but he's still 3-2 down. The Swede is still in control. 45 minutes then for Olilito of Team Hullet, may I add. Hullet is such a powerful presence on the pitch. FIFA 20, well, it doesn't really matter what FIFA it's been, to be honest. He has been there for quite some time since 
ultimate team has been introduced and these foot champions cups have been played. We've always seen Vieira and Hullet as staples in the midfield. And even as Vieira has dropped back to centre back lately, Hullet stays strong in the middle. And now his esports organisation seems to be providing some incredible FIFA players as well. Tense moments here in the E-League studios. Thank you very much to everybody who has joined us here in Atlanta all weekend long. Everybody in the stream, I hope you were blessed with the with the pack drops, with the player drops even. I, I said to myself I was going to have my phone open. I just, I, I never did it, Dan. I mean, you don't have any pack luck anyway, really. Well, no, because it all clearly goes to you. Yeah, that's fine. But I haven't opened mine. I did see a couple of, well, one pro player, Dulster, got a uh, Kante drop today. He doesn't need it. I'm going to point that out, by the, the way. The rich getting richer. Yeah. Come on, give it to some of these guys saying GG in the chat. Yeah. FYI, you don't have to say GG in the chat. Actually, you know what? Somebody from here told me no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't help, but do it anyway. Do it anyway. Get loud in the chat. Let us know who you think is going to win this game. Is it going to go over towards Umit? Can he bring this one back? Or will Oli Lito preserve this lead? I think Oli Lito needs another goal, you know. I mean, from what we saw in the PlayStation final, last minute goal for Uma against Tom, Oli Lito will certainly have that in the back of his mind of, well, that could happen to me, and okay, it wouldn't mean a loss for him, but he probably doesn't want to play extra time and then potentially penalties on the PlayStation, even though he does play weekend league on both consoles. He is still an Xbox native. 40 minutes remain. Potentially another 30 and potentially penalties. If Umut can steal another goal away. Oh, nine now. Trying the drag to get anywhere here. And the scoop turn not working. Eusebio trying to get things going via Mbappe. And this one will be spread out wide. It's good football by Umut. Just trying to keep control of the ball and no risk. But does that equal no reward? There's some decent pressure coming out of Olilito trying to close down and bring two players to try and pinch the ball and it's worked out Robertson's been able to win it now and I feel like you have to try and eat away as much time as possible with possession here not intentionally wasting time but just taking your time with every attack it invites pressure though doesn't it it does and I guess that happened to Tom in that final in those dying moments he wanted to hold on to that ball so he had the last attack but it was just nipped away with Nearly like 30 seconds left, and it allowed that one final attack for Uma instead. It's a good patient play by Oli Lito here. R9. Opening up a little bit of space. He's looking at the run from Eusebio to Mbappe. It's so good. It's just so good from Oli Lito. A well worked goal and restores that two goal lead. Umit has got 30 in game minutes to save his FIFA event here. And it all came from that patient build up as well. Just biding his time, looking at the radar, looking at the pitch. Where are my players? Who can I get the ball to? And who else than Mbappe, the team of the year foot item, which is incredible, may I add. It just has a little bit of everything. The only thing it really lacks is that five-star weak foot. It only has the four-star, but he still gets the job done. It lacks being in my club. You could say that about every player on this current pitch. <laughs> you have none of them. <sighs> I know. Not even oh. the standard gold versions of any of them either. <laughs> I can afford Allison. And still licked. The standard gold ones? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> one one then. 60 minutes on the clock, 30 left. And I feel like Umit does have goals in him. And he'll be going to the tactics screen now. We'll be bringing on some of the big boys and getting some fresh legs and probably upping that depth. But. Oli Lito has looked so fluid going forward. Knows exactly what he wants to do when he gets into that final third. And he is 30 minutes away from being a champion here in Atlanta. Mane now for Umut. A quick clap back here. Would silence Oli Lito. Oh, it's in the way though. It was a really well worked move, but he's given it away. Another opportunity here now for Umut. Mbappe, look at the run from Hullet. He doesn't need it because De Bruyne is there to find Messi the drag back. Oh. Composure under pressure once again. Lionel Messi. 
Brings it back to a one goal deficit. Umut is still in this game. Perfect response from Umut. So many players would have just finessed that far corner as well with Messi in that area, but he goes across the keeper into the near post. And it's game on yet again. Uma will not die here. I'm going to need a breather soon, Dan. Get me a cup of tea. After the event, <laughs> you are allowed as many cups of tea as you like, Christopher. But first, we need to get a resolution here. We need to find our champion. And for all of the extra times we've had, and for all the close games and some of the less exciting games, this one, however, I kind of would love to see extra time. Well, you may not be seeing it, though, if Oli Lito keeps playing like this. CR7 stretching his legs into this corner now. Back to Robertson. He looks dangerous every time he goes forward. That turn from Eusebio is solid as well. Vieira will just about win that one, though. It's getting the time now, though, where Umut will have to start throwing more men forward. It's not quite the kitchen sink yet, Dan. Maybe it's a couple of cups. A lot of fancy flicks and turns from Umut, where I'd just like to see more of a standard style of play, trying to get this ball out from defence. A lot of room for R9, which way does he choose to go? Vieira reads it right. Good defending from Umut there. I think you would have expected him turning in, but he reads it very, very well. Umut survives that scare. I mean, you'd expect that from the player with the best defensive record in the tournament in Umut. He just can't way, transfer defence into attack successfully at the moment. I'm starting to tick into danger time now. Umut needs a goal. Oli Lito needs to hold on. We've got about 12 minutes of in-game time remaining. We've got Mbappe on the ball. Carlos Alberto now has Hullet there. Off it. And look at the bring out there. Hullet comes flying out. And there's a man down there as well. Virgil van Dijk. It's going to leave R9 with acres of space. And it's straight at Allison. Unfortunate if you Umut that the chance has even been able to be created. I would have put my house on R9 putting that one away. But it's still a lifeline for Umut. But he can't get past this barrier that Oli Lito has set up in the middle of the pitch. And Oli Lito again just starts streaming forward, but VVD very far up. We'll just put that one out of play. And with just short of eight minutes remaining, it's once again time to just calm things down. Take a look at that tactic screen for both players, may I add. There's a lot of join the attack, get forward. Yeah, Alexander Arnold and Robertson set to join the attack from fullback positions. I mean, Robertson does anyway, because of the high, high work rates. But certainly getting Trent forward will help. It is going to leave him slightly exposed, but that doesn't matter anymore. You need that equaliser. Not long to go. And Oli Lito just needs to keep a hold of this ball. Seven in-game minutes, and we may see our first ever Foot Champs Cup Swedish champion. Just a switch of play. Needs to be smart now, needs to be patient. Doesn't need to take any risks, does Oli Lito. Make every second count. He's done so well all tournament long in not making these mistakes, but every gift of possession is going to be a chance for Umut to get the equaliser. De Bruyne now for Umut. Can he find anything? He doesn't have long at all, Dan. Can he get another last gasp goal to keep him in it? The time is really ticking on down now. Oli Lito, he's got acres of space here with Carlos Alberto. He's stretching his legs down the right-hand side. There is two minutes of in-game time remaining. Just keep a hold of the ball. This could be going all the way back to the keeper, but he might just keep the pressure on. Hullet will win it. He can't keep it in. Are oh, the hopes and dreams of the Germans dying in front of us? Oli Lito, the man from Sweden, he is going to do it. Oli Lito, here we go again. And my, my, can anybody beat you? Not the dancing queen, but the FIFA king on the stage. He is your cross console champion here at Foot Champs Cup in Atlanta. He gets the business done against a strong German opponent. And what a fantastic tournament from him. An amazing one. A very well-deserved one.
And there is your champion. An unexpected one for sure, but certainly has deserved it with how he's played. Your E-League Atlanta champion, Oli Lito. Jillian is on stage with your winner. Ali, that heavy? <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Two months ago, you were sent home after the group stage. Yeah. You're a champion today. How did you do it? I don't know, like, I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. But to be honest, without Timo Martens and, and Martin Sonewald, my both coaches, this wouldn't be, be impossible. And to all of the Swedes who had cheered, who had cheered for me over the weekend, uh, I thank you all enough, and especially to my family who also have been watching, and to the artist weed also, Oliver, who kept me going this weekend, so a big shout out to him also. Your coach told me that since that loss in Bucharest that you've been putting in 60 games weekend league. How much did that work pay off here today? Uh, it worked like it paid off very well, uh, and I always say this to like my Swedish followers, instead of like being out with your friends. I'm still in that room practicing to become the master. And today was indeed a day and yeah, I'm so happy. $50,000, what are you gonna do with it? <sighs> I don't know, to be honest. Maybe going on a vacation, I don't know. I'm, I'm so happy. A little birdie told me that your mom, Molly, has work in the morning and that she's stayed up. You have a little message for her? Uh, mom, I love you uh, and uh, see you tomorrow. All right. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Chris? Thank you very much, Jessac. Oh, my word. What a performance. What an emotional testimonial as well from Oli Lito. And I honestly, I could not be more, more happy for him. I couldn't be more happy. Such a nice interview, such a nice young man as well. And we will be seeing more of him. Of course, he's got that automatic qualification to stage four. He's got enough Global Series points. We're going to be seeing him in the E World Cup as well. And I can't wait to see how he develops in this FIFA 20 season. And it was just attacking play as well from him. He wasn't one of these guys who sat back and held his defense. Although, you know, we can't blame anyone who does. He was one of these guys who continued to go forward and just do the business. Thank you very much to everybody who has joined us here on the casting desk. Myself and Dan Gaskin are gone. Do not go anywhere. More analysis after this quick commercial break.
Huge congratulations, Stage 3 champ Olelito. Sweden's own pride, says Anton. I think all of Scandinavia cheering for Olelito. Awesome. Mark Hatcher in on the act as well. Good stuff. Huge congratulations to Olelito. And then Anton as well. He's born with ice, the Swedish Viking. <laughs> Huge congratulations. First time on the big stage. Boy turned 18 back in November. Gets it done under all the pressure. Welcome back in for one final time this weekend. Kev Egan, Chew Boy, Mike Lavelle. What a final it was. Epic, epic across the two legs between Umut and Olelito. Umut just would not go away. Every time Olelito tried to pull away, the German kept clawing back. And Umut set the tone. He scored early on the away console. Correct. You thought to yourself, As you predicted, Chew. You thought to yourself, could it be? He, he, maybe he was... Not telling the truth when we asked him, does he play Ooh. on the Xbox? So he looked very nice there, composed as always, dragged back, opened up space, you name it. Then we had a drag back exchange in the 22nd minute, top corner, the best corner, equalized. And it looks like Ollie's at the wheel because he absolutely brought this right back. Cheeky little finish there between the legs with Eusebio to get things going. And I have to say, I have to give it to this kid. He took his chances. And the goals in this game were absolutely beautiful. I have to say, like the drag backs, this yeah. one, uh, maybe not the prettiest <laughs> one. You know, that looks like a bit like my foot champs. But um, I have to give it to this kid. I mean, Sweden must be proud. Uh, a, a huge esports nation who have some of the best esports players in other games, as well as FIFA. And man, they're going to be happy with what this What a goal kid. this was. Sensational through ball. Talk about squeezing that through, man. And a lovely finish as well. And both these guys were able to, to show a lot of class. And they both look very experienced, even though they're oh. brand new, basically, in the FIFA season or FIFA scene this year. Uh, in terms of their game management, tactical adjustments, ability to finish, their build-up, the patience, you name it. How good was this goal? Oh, Great interchange there between Eusebio and R9. And that was a very important goal because... I thought that Uma was coming back into the game, and Oli again, Oli Lito. This guy has just been absolutely clutch in Champions Cup Atlanta. You couldn't meet a nicer guy, too. Genuinely chatting to him and his support and team around him all weekend. Top class performance from him, both on and away from the stage. And I'm sure that Holet is proud. You know, he played yeah. Team Holet, so mm -hmm. he used his own coach to win a, a title. That's got to be impressive <laughs> to use your own coach to win fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, they're, fifty thousand, two thousand Global Series points as well. And their first championship as well uh, mm -hmm. under that esports organization or his esports organization with Team Holet. Good stuff, guys. The new rankings on Xbox look as follows. And Rasik leapfrogging Tex here from this weekend's work. Diogo doing some business as well up into third place. And Oli Lito up into fourth spot. What can you say about what this does for him? Aside from now, obviously, with Footmasters having that path through to stage four. I mean, the good thing about winning a Champions Cup is that I don't want to jinx it, but you're pretty much already into the E-World Cup. I mean, it'll take a lot to get you out of the top 16 uh, to get you in the E-World Cup. So he has sort of booked his way to the E-World Cup. So I think he's going to be uh, somewhere this summer uh, and hopefully winning maybe $250,000. Well, especially considering that we're going to see him in action in stage four, get a chance to defend his title. And with that qualification equals more global series points. And, and Chu makes a, a very, very true point where he says, if you win an event, you almost solidify being in the E-World Cup. And that's the big step at the end of the year. What's it like, looking like on the PS4 side now? Crazy. Still sitting pretty at the summit. Fulfills it in the final back at stage one against Tex in second. Umut into third. Wow. Exactly. Since Umut is the PS4 champion, again, a ton of points going to him. And again, he is looking very good at third to make it to the E World Cup. So this is a job well done for him. I know that maybe he didn't win the bonus cash, but still mission accomplished. And I think he's going to have a good season. Uh, that's going to see him in the World Cup. Yeah, Tom jumps to eighth as well. Great climb for him. And the second, Ali, 11th now. Swedish brothers, both within that top 16, which is crucial. Hashtag Harry up to five. Paolo Neto dropping to six. Hey, guys, guess where stage four is going? We're going to the city alone. Ooh. Two single boys, huh? On tour. Oh, yeah. I mean, you don't, wanna, <laughs> you don't have me and Michael Bell out. Let me just say, Paris, get ready. <laughs> Double trouble coming your way. It's a few weeks away, Chance. We're on our travels. Uh, I mean, oh, oh there we go. Oh. <laughs> oh. Total next champagne. 
I feel left out. I'm not gonna you lie. should, because you didn't bring a out. turtleneck. You should. Oh, <laughs> come on. Oh, I jinxed oh, that. Big Lepasco they gave me the there. ultimate dad bod in this as well. Is this oh, at the airport lounge, goodness. Mike? Where was that photo taken? Honest I, I don't know. Can we can we ask E League? <laughs> <laughs> they oh, yeah. oh man, Mike, you know I've what? I've had better days. Thanks for oh, being such a good on. sport over the weekend. You know, was, where, um, did the, where did the muscles go from? I mean, from Saturday to Sunday. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's bulking rate. season. Oh, this is bulk. That, that's what bulking looks like. Potentially, man, that's bulking, man. I don't want to bulk. Let's just say, guys. What a pleasure. It's been all weekend long. Next to you guys, working with such a classy crew at Ely. Congratulations to Oli Lito and all the fantastic competitors here this weekend. It has been a thrill and a half, that's for sure. The lad from Sweden takes it in the end. Huge congrats. Many thanks to you for tuning in from all over the world for Stage 3 here in Atlanta. For all our brilliant team, say goodnight. All the best. No more dance moves. Bye-bye. <laughs>